Zizu Samazulu, Bamtatage Baze, Bayum Fage Kaya, Ukonage, and Nabadala, Bagabtelezi, Sat says Ugutu, Gukona is in Tosgo, Sigo, Ezotizenzu, Massebe Figaka, Mchampege, Yeni, Ebizo Gonzaga, Namchanjik Seni, Napambu, Ugutu, Umzimba, Umdana, Wagapendangene, Ukishwakai. And being a letter by Bugele Makai and being a little now in Roman, say you listen to Carlo Cool, Locus is open and Swanen, but to Sbabon. Sbonilla Gizola Mabuto, Epumile, and of Ningi Bao, Nomparaton, Kupumile, Besanga Beze, Umbel and Dumzi Bagamtuan, Bautat and Yakabanti, Roman Capelli, Luguti, Nepum, and Obumzo, or Telis, Upe, and Pumalang, Beg Punyan, and Lily Sang, and Belling up of Pindang and the two. Go to Mass and Genoa, while we are was on Genoa and Sang Elingaza, Elinga Trail, Elinga Trail again. Local. Tinina, Ulandela, E. Sigo, Mogwe Sigo, E. Sango, Lumuz, the Glissus and Snap, Bamta Tileg, Bangena, Nayagela, Panabam, Lumuz, Saint Liniak, Mabet, Liniak, Basabim Tatabemus, Aguaco, Emzin, Gagababok, Gam Yaman, La Pafig, Bambega Corner, Usugu Bok, Okalewa by Lenkons, or Ebe Corner, Yape Lenkons, or Umzibawak, Ursula, Panapezu, Jena Magic, Sendings of Gonzaga Nigger, Goodness into a Fanele Bazen, Zomdin, La Pekisha Corner, Bonka Band, Besege Abad. Dala ba wapteles, ngoba noma na yem dala una ba ba dala nengo si wapteles. Bese bebiga uti enje ngamaje na singa ne yenu isi apuma iya hab. Ma be kwenza ge loko ba bese bekaza guguti. Jenga loko bese nbige le ngoba ngapambili ni zonge sto ibigi. Sia zuguti ukashugeleka ya umto na wapinda ngene yenzi wa yoki tu numasina fumelegi lugu kufesa gok koto age ba bigi le izo lugu tige na ba mche lugu tige sheng na apa ba fundi sba kusebe kona na tikembula kuseli kona na kumde na kusu kona jenga maji ge bazo pinda food bese bese guye beti ge sheng sekfiga la pa kona jenga maji sektata sigusa la pa ekfanele uyo wenzela kona inkonzo ya ku abanda ba kona ge maji sheng abe fundi sba kuba kona uhulume na kuba Busa benza nae, bebe kiri luguti ba kiri kushoni pa ngobaba ya kule luguti uyezo, futu ya bon, bebe kiri le kushoni pa eso wenza gemaje shenge, sizo nigeza bifundis. Ma be figure be fundisi, Bazo be sebe atandas and showman, and Mabe to Tandas are be fundisi, Bacona Jalabomdin, Aba, Abalita, Yonkit Ole, Massabe Bandigas, Labe fundis, Bazo be sebe bizo about Abomdin, Bessebe Huba, Ihubo, the Wabtila Washeng, a lady who boge, a bonage, a mabi, Mabila, Mahube, Bob, Bazo, Huba Lilota, Bazo, Bevil Kati, Luguti, Lil, Mobas Yaz, Gutum to be stronger, Kule Mahube, Bessa Guti, Abab Telis. Telis, Bessel be bamboos in Bawaka, be Pumela now on a pantry, Gwen, Sabe Figala, Pasabesha, and Yella Namabuto, Abafund is Bandigas, Legia, Oya Bongoba Bona, Bahambala Panga Pampi, O Pum Oxura Lap, and Oba Umma Boshon, Oshon, Oshon Pegile, Uko Nor of Telis on Dala, Olibe Kulumanai, Bazo Timasa Bebes, Sashang and Yelena Mabuto, Jean Obubonumuzu Pumu Pegas, as a Jen, Nadin, a pantry, a corner, Umbuto as of paper, a we wanna we all petal and goes or yok. Gala Possebiam Chen Guti Sheng, says Figala Pasig Begala Pagan Amanje, a Uhulumenu Yakata, Sigusa, a Mugutis who says on twin and consuin, Lapezo with Zola Conayoke in Consoyak, Bazo Besabem Niges, Lemaso Chen Nigelapo, go to a neighbor to Kona, Guna Luguna, the Sabes of Niges Elan, who's what he marked Fiwa Lapa for the state yard, who called Nor of Telez, also Pindam Chen Guti Sheng, says Figi Legelapa. Ozo begelwa kona njenga manje Uzo kubega nabo Bazo ngena na ya abomje nige la pengi Abangu guti ii ngola ngazi Noma zizo ngena noma zizo Goto besebe mtata futa abomje nengi Abangu guti joba nje kishelo ganje na yiba Bazo besebe mbega la pa Gusuga la poge jomane na bala leli Sebe ya sesha bonke Basa la pansi Segi nigeze lwa njenga manje uhulumeni Ngoba umnwabo umnwa hulumeni Segi tatu mpatu wa shelo Isi yo kubega njalo Kushe makumante amba ama food you open the ways of Stephen and Aleon Shoman Gamka. That is um, Kaya Ndwando, a cultural expert. In fact, uh, Simpiwe, there are really some interesting uh, uh, explanation uh, in terms of what is, hap uh, what is going to happen uh, from the homestead that Kaya has uh, taken us through, educating us in terms of what is going to be happening at the uh, family um, home. And he's saying that uh, amongst the, uh, chief, the mourners, there's the chief mourner being Mdwana, uh, uh, Prince Zuzifa, who is um, Prince Mangosucho his eldest son, together with the regent of the Butelezi uh, clan in Kosumbi. Um, and throughout this journey from yesterday when they collected the body at the mortuary and took him home, there's somebody in the family that continuously speaks to him. 
um, decisions that they believe that he is, he can hear, even though he is now passed, but the, the traditional beliefs is that he can hear, so that they speak to him until they get to the family home. And yesterday when we saw the body entering the home, there was rituals that were performed. The house um, that he was uh, placed in overnight um, was his uh, mother's um, house. His father, Nkosi Matole Butelezi, and his mother, Princess um, Makoko, and they, uh, the body was placed in that house of, um, um, overnight. So Kaya just taking us through the rituals that, of course, uh, it, it, it's going to be working hand in hand with Amabuto, members of the uh, Abutelezi clan. And again, the same rituals will take place as they bring his body here uh, to the stadium. Simpiwa? All right, Ayanda, thank you so much uh, for your time. Ayanda there, Ayanda Mklongo, uh, was in conversation with cultural expert uh, Kaya Ndwandwe, who offered very, very significant and key insights into, you know, the cultural practices around the burial of uh, uh, Prince Mangosutu Buteleze. Let's now take a quick break, and we'll continue our special broadcast of uh, Prince Mangosutu Buteleze's funeral. <laughs> for a colleague uh, to learn about just to give our viewers an idea of what um, is happening happening here at the inside the stadium we've already seen uh, members of the clergy various religious denominations they have started uh, to arrive we just saw a large group of members of the um, IFP women's brigade um, enter uh, the uh, stadium and of course other uh, dignitaries um, as well representatives of the KZN uh, legislature. We were saying earlier on that we are expecting quite a number of high profile dignitaries of course led by country president uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. We also have three former heads of state former president Tabum Begi, uh, Jacob Zuma and Khalema Mutlande will also uh, be part of the dignitaries that are going to attend this uh, funeral. Um, outside of the country as well some international national uh, dignitaries are also expected to attend and uh, from Nigeria, namely the former president of Nigeria, uh, Pres um, Olusigan Obasanjo, who was a close friend of Prince Mangosu Tumbutelez. And just to run our viewers through the program, my colleagues, they were saying that it is expected to get underway um, around 10 a.m. this uh, morning. Um, and we are going to, according to the program, uh, there will be tributes that will be delivered um, by the Prince Mangosutu uh, Foundation. There will also be a tribute on behalf of Amakosi, very importantly, and that will be delivered by the uh, um, uh, chairperson of the House of Traditional Leaders province of Kwasunatal in Kosushinga. There will also be a message that will be delivered by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosifiwa Mapisa Ngagula. And earlier on this week, we saw members of, of Parliament, chief whips of the political parties, as well as the Speaker and um, uh, from the National Assembly, as well as the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, also visited the uh, Butelezi um, family to pay homage to uh, the uh, late Prince Mangosutub Telezi. There will also be a tribute from the grandchildren as well as uh, Prince Mangosutub Telezi's son on behalf of the family, and that is Prince Zuzi Fabu Telezi. And of course, as we're saying, that uh, the eulogy will be delivered by President uh, Cyril, uh, Rama, um, Cyril Ramaphosa. So inside the stadium, more and more people are continuing uh, to um, arrive. We also just see on the stands the uh, supporters of the um, IFP um, are starting to come in in the large numbers. The capacity of the stadium is 15,000. There is an overflow just adjacent to the stadium of uh, 10,000. Officials uh, saying that they hope it will be enough to accommodate the thousands and thousands of people that are expected to um, attend this uh, funeral. We've also seen a large uh, presence of uh, security. We've seen during this week, of course, we had the Minister of Police accompanied by police at Brass, the National Commissioner of Police, the KZN um, a Commissioner of Police, they have been here on the ground ensuring that uh, all the mourners um, and the dignitaries that will be coming here uh, today, that 
that they are safe. Of course, we've got police uh, helicopters uh, hovering um, in the sky, ensuring that uh, people are safe. Message from the police um, um, as well is they, uh, because of the numbers of people that are expected to uh, come uh, through here, uh, and the police, of course, are asking the public to please uh, work with them. They indeed do have their hands full, as we're seeing, as we're making a uh, uh, way into the state. Uh, also, of course, there was an issue of concern around Mabutin. We know that they carry uh, certain traditional weapons and spear. The police, spear, the police saying that they will be permitted in um, their gear, their uh, spears and the traditional weapons that they uh, um, do carry. They don't envisage any problem. Um, um, Mabutin has been in consultation. Uh, is headsmen uh, and those that are leading um, Amabutu. So the stadium is uh, slowly uh, filling up, and we're at just 10 past 8 uh, now, some pure. So, I mean, come 10 o'clock, I don't know, I think come 10 o'clock, the stadium will indeed be at capacity. And I think with you. Uh, speaking uh, for the start of the funeral service, and as we've heard earlier on, uh, trickling in, understand owners up in, 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 in droves, you know, to attend the funeral service. And earlier on, we've uh, in uh, at a bus stand the road from the stadium where the service will be heard. And uh, we've uh, she, she was just in conversation with some of the members of the community who were just uh, sharing with us what Prince Magosuto Butelezi meant for them and the kind of benefits that they have enjoyed under his rule. And earlier on, we've, uh, we've been in conversation with Simpio Makanya, who is at the home of uh, the late Prince Magosuto Butelezi, and uh, as we've seen, uh, the body of uh, Prince Magosuto Butelezi will leave for the very, very last time his home any minute from now. So make sure that you tune in to Morning Live. We'll give you wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage of uh, the funeral service of the late prince. But for now, let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back. It is going to be mostly sunny and warm to hot for northeastern South Africa, but cool for the Cape provinces. We talk about that in a moment. Let's start off with uh, looking at the weather around Ulundi uh, this Saturday. We are expecting a bit of cloud this morning and temperatures around 18 degrees. Then in the afternoon, we will see more and more clouds creeping into the town with uh, temperatures peaking at around 27 degrees. Light to moderate rain is expected later on tonight with average temperatures of around 16 degrees. So if you are heading down to Ulundi for the burial of uh, Prince Mangosut Telezi, that's the weather you can expect. Now, the wet weather is because of this cold front which is heading towards Kwasili Natal, already pushing in some rain-bearing clouds into the province. We still have quite a bit of cloud as well for the Southern Cape areas and high-level clouds streaming over the Northern, uh, Northern Cape and the Free State. It is going to be mostly sunny this afternoon for Central and Northeastern South Africa with fresh to strong winds in most areas. The winds get, get stronger as we go towards the south coast where the winds could gust to between 70 and 80 kilometers per hour in places. In terms of rainfall, a 30 to 60 percent chance of rain is forecast for KwaZulu Natal and also for the coastal areas. Similar chances of rain for the western and southern parts of the country, but it will become drier as we head towards the evening hours for much of the Western Cape. We have a warning for big damaging waves along the west and the south coast, big storm surges as well for that south coast, strong damaging winds for the Eastern Cape coastal areas. I can hear myself on IFB. What? All the way to the stadium where the uh, official funeral is going to be held. I'm going to step out of the shot, Simpi, just for a little while and ask my colleague Raymond Mbele to give our viewers a sense of just what is happening now at the Kwapindangene uh, residence. Of course, as I had indicated earlier on, that uh, family members were also, you know, finalizing their preparations, you know, uh, to uh, actually uh, disembark and start the journey of, uh, you know, transporting the uh, body of uh, Prince Mangosu to uh, Butelezi to the stadium for that uh, official uh, funeral category one, which uh, he has been accorded, you know, by the uh, uh, president of uh, South Africa, His Excellency uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. What you are seeing there in your visuals is uh, Inyo, the poet of the uh, Amazulu King, Misuzulu Kazulitin, uh, who has also come here to uh, pay uh, his respect uh, for Prince Mangosutu, Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi. Throughout the week, we've heard voices from Amabuto, you know, South Africans who have been, you know, sending their words of condolences uh, to Prince Mangosu to tell his family after, you know, he uh, passed away this uh, past weekend. And of course, uh, what we can tell you from where we are now, Simpio, is that all indications are that, you know, the um, body may be leaving Prince uh, Mangosu to tell his home any minute from now. But of course, uh, I'm not alone in this particular uh, production of God. Also, uh, my colleagues uh, on the ground who are monitoring uh, the situation from other parts of uh, the uh, area of Ulundi, and that is uh, Natasha Piri. Natasha, what is happening on your side? Well, thank you so much, uh, Simpiwe. We're currently at a makeshift uh, depot here, a bus depot, where various buses uh, across the country um, have actually come here just, um, you know, um, up the road uh, from the stadium where the service uh, will commence, the funeral service of the late Prince Mangosutu Putelezi will commence at 10 a.m. And of course, uh, behind me, I'm joined by various mourners who come all the way from Mlazi, others from Hammersdale, and of course, they've come uh, to pay their last respects to Prince uh, Mangosu to Putelezi. But let me just actually take the conversation uh, to them right now. Masia Bonga, I understand good to Uvela, Mlazi, and Namklanje, who's Ufika, the late Prince Mangosu to Putelezi. Yebonga Bonga, Ustali, Lehostela, Sabarai, Tishem, Sebenzelile, Isoakona, Ting, Rai, Tishem, Baba, Hambega, Siberit. Mama, when you see Zaranja and Namtanja, you will feel the late Prince Mangus Putelez. Okay, Minangis, we have a steady lapel for who at nine. No, just Kupsung, Shemas Fungash, Sungus, La Segele, 
Holy, Ogany Prince Mangosu Tellez and Ninga Cool is in the Snai Balas and the Lezona, election late or so, Silla Segel and Jaga Cool, a Sazdo Plumus Nablungisangan, got to a guest to Lunculunculla Mupinjalent. Yom Kumbula and Jan Yom Kumbula and Jaga Cool, Lungazo Zonkis in Tonga Sekaya, Gune Logishi, Dalon de Mokamuga, Mozongan and the Hamba Stelung and Elagloni Logishi, Eli Con and Jane Gayake. Zininga cool is in Tesna, the Hamba Stale, Sinom Kalkomuse, Gengaya, Kessine Scole, Emma Kuluini, Primary School, Gengaya, Kenon, Jesham Silla Segel, Silla Segel, Stolamazula Mugeli, Atoli Kawe, Hambagas, and Dana Pindangan, Hambagas, Sogalis, and Gangeli, Hambagas, Shame. But I'm coming from Edamaz now. Mokulu, we told by Ninja Bulo. Gingati Mango Kalanginji, who is colors as Metambo, who is colors as a colors, and Satan Neva Balega Matimoni. We call a good tea, Tinus Seven, the Lega Kulu, Sagwazi, or Mandatina Sisala, La Pemzinum Kulu, seventeen. La Poxala Conatina, Intelesi Pila Cona, Imnandiga Kulu, and the Sikando, and Gutis Bumba, Neusangani Simden, Mingi, Lego Friet, Lego Topo, Lego Eastern Cape, Oba Sangan Santa, Onya Bantana Basangan, Bafige Bazuan. But the old mother, I mean, I tell you, sis. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I Nayla <laughs> So Kuma now is shortly. Uh, various mourners coming out here and just paying uh, respect and salutation and uh, praise uh, to the late Prince Mangosuthu Botelezi. But let me just actually toss over to Ayanda, who's at the stadium. Ayanda, what is happening on your side? Good morning to you, Natasha. Well, from outside the stadium to inside the Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi Stadium, of course, uh, the funeral service for the uh, late founder of the IFP, uh, President Emeritus Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, will be taking place. We are seeing uh, mourners continue uh, to um, enter into the stadium. Let me step out of shot for our colleague, uh, Tulani Ngobo, just for us. Our role as Ikebole too, from now, we are taking the body with the family to the stadium where we'll hand over to the SANDF. From there, the, um, the whole service will be conducted. From then, we'll come back to Pindangene at the cemetery, at the family cemetery, where we will take over again and be responsible for the burial. Thank you so much for your time. Amen. That is uh, Ms. Nompundo Mkoi Zondo, who is the founder and the CEO of Itrebole to Funeral. Let me step out of the shot once again, Lebo and Simpiwe, and allow our viewers to see uh, what is currently happening at the Kwapindange residence. You see there. Um, uh, senior family members of uh, the Butelezi family have now uh, uh, are now getting ready rather to uh, 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 take part in that journey which will accompany Prince Mangosu to Butelezi's body to the stadium for the official commencement of uh, his uh, funeral. As I indicated earlier on that uh, it's been a somewhat busy week uh, for many of the, you know, people who have been coming here, you know, witnessing what, you know, has been done in the lead up to the uh, funeral. And now uh, it pro it's uh, from where I'm uh, from where I am and rather from what people have been telling us, those who are uh, a part of the family and those who have been organizing the family, uh, it's all systems go. Uh, Prince Zuzi Fabutelezi is now entering the vehicle which is uh, going to be carrying uh, some a few family members to the stadium where the official funeral is going to be held. Simpiwe and Yule Boch, back to you in studio. All right, Simpiwe.
Insyaallah. Mula-mula. Looking at the numbers of people that we are seeing, this, the capacity of this stadium is uh, 15,000. It is an overflow of about um, uh, 10,000, but it really does look like the numbers of people that are going to come through here today, the mourners who have come to bid their final farewells uh, to uh, are going to far exceed the capacity um, of the stadium and the um leaders of political parties that have started to arrive let me once again quickly just step out of shot just so that um, our viewers can get an idea of what um, is happening here at the uh, stadium um, just in the far distance we see the uh, clergy um, representing de different religious uh, denominations um, they um, have also uh, in fact I think that's the, that uh, marquee there in the far end is already uh, filling up you also have um, the the IFP Women's Brigade. We saw a large number of members of the IFP Women's Brigade come through. The stands just behind these marquees are coming accommodating the supporters of the IFP, the uh, members of the public that have come from afar and near and again, large parts of the stands are also filling up quite uh, uh, quickly. So as we continue to get um, uh, uh, from people um, who are here and we continue to speak to some of the dignitaries that are here, let me now have the honor of uh, bringing the uh, former chairperson of the House of Traditional Leaders in the province of Kwasna Talim Kosa if you can come through. Take our viewers, um, uh, you know, through the relationship that the two of you had. Yes, uh, indeed, Ayanda, uh, a great uh, legend has fallen <coughs> and lost the institution of tradition leadership. Prince Mangosu Tubtelezi is the one uh, who fought tirelessly for the institution of traditional leadership, even the issue of land. That's why up to the 95-year-old uh, being a member of the uh, national parliament, because uh, he believed that 
he must be part and parcel until uh, the roles, functions uh, of traditional leadership are met. So we, as we can uh, confirm, the, the, the whole world is weeping. Since uh, uh, Saturday, uh, the tribute uh, are pouring from uh, abroad. We, we, we have lost the legend, and the, we, we say condolences to the family, uh, to the Butelezi clan, uh, to the continent, because uh, His Royal Highness Prince Butelezi was not in cause of, of Butelezi clan, but uh, he was the leader of the continent. We know the relationship he had with the former president of Nigeria, the, 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 the former president of Zambia, and even the former ANC, uh, Oliver Tambo. So that alone tells you the kind of a man he is. A lot of people were saying the void, and as you're speaking about traditional leadership and the role that he played, not only in strengthening um, the Amazon whale household, but how he transformed um, traditional leadership. Um, we were speaking to is in Duna um, in the uh, in Emakabatini, uh, and they were saying, for example, I mean, you would know back in the days that uh, a woman were not allowed to have were not allowed to have land. A woman uh, could not attend tribal meetings, uh, for example. And he came in and he, and he changed um, the thinking of those that were running traditional structures um, at the time. To say that women also need to have um, to have to have a voice um, in the structures of traditional leadership. And I see today a number of your colleagues, Amakosi, are today now females, and they have the same respect as their male counterparts. Yes, yes indeed, he was a champion uh, of transformation in the institution. We have. Uh, well, Women traditional leadership, even a, a, a woman a headman in our areas who, who lead the, the traditional world. That is one of uh, his work. He, he believes in transformation to transform the institution of traditional leadership. A void has certainly been left, and I know towards um, the latter days of, of his life, there was the issue of the real family and how he was navigating that. He brought you on very closely to advise him. In fact, you were part of a meeting um, where he uh, was speaking to um, I mean, Isindun and Amakosi just to update them on the current situation going on within the royal family. We do understand that it is a, a complex issue, but he brought you in. Um, where do you see, particularly um, in the position of the traditional prime minister um, and the current um, uh, divisions that uh, existed within the uh, royal family in the void that he now leaves? We have a, a serious hope. Uh, in fact, if you can see, uh, his Royalness, uh, uh, Prince Mangosu Tuptelezi, as I said, he was a pillar of the institution. Above that, he was a clue, a, a unifier. As you can see, all political parties are saying one and the same voice. Even uh, the royal household, if you can see, they put aside their differences. Uh, and come and, uh, 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 and, and respect uh, uh, His Royal Highness. That alone uh, tells us that there will be a solution because uh, an African problem would believe it needed an African solution. Moving forward, his legacy, traditional leadership, how do you aim to take it forward? We, 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 we really respect uh, His Royal Highness and we will make sure that we, 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 we respect his legacy and we do our best. First of all, there is a peace, there is harmony, there is unity in the province. If there is peace in the province of KwaZulu Natal, really sure the South Africa will be at peace. Thank you so much. That was it. Um, of course, what you see is Kaliza there, um, who was the former chairperson of the House of Traditional Leaders here in KwaZulu Natal. Of course, he had a very close relationship with uh, Prince Mangosu Tumutelezi. Uh, Prince Mangosu Tuptelezi would consult with him on a number of issues, particularly with the challenges that uh, he was dealing with.
52 times. Mm. Um, and then mm. uh, the, he's also survived by, you know, eight children. Um, uh, survived by two daughters and a son. His wife of almost 67 years died in March 2019. Her name was Irene. Um, and she died in March 2019. Which earned a place in the Guinness Book of Records for delivering the longest ever political speech. I remember a 400 that. page <laughs> that spent that. five days. Five days. <laughs> five days. He spoke <laughs> longest speech. And, and I don't think someone else has break, broken that record, eh? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so, I've eh? ever heard of anybody breaking <laughs> uh, that record. He led Inkata Freedom Party for 44 years since its formation in 1975 and was served and was given the title of President Emeritus. That was back in uh, 2019. Some of his uh, quotes, uh, 1985 says, I believe the interdependence of black and white in the economy is a soft underbelly. It is very important for black people to make the economy even more dependent on blacks that it is now. Only then can we use the strategy of using consumer power and our worker power to force whites to the conference table. And this was, uh, you know, when you but denied reports that he was gravely ill. All right, so that, those are the live visuals coming out of Ulundi. All right, and uh, we're going to cross back to Simpiwe Makanya, who is uh, at Tegwa Pindangene, uh, where the body of uh, Prince Mangusudu will leave his home for the very, very last time. Simpiwe, if you can hear me, just to give us an update of what's currently happening now. Well, as you can see there in your visuals, uh, Simpiwa, that uh, family members are now, you know, taking their vehicles, which will be accompanying the body of uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi to the stadium. Uh, earlier on, of course, we saw Pr Prince Izuzifa Dutugo Butelezi leaving the uh, Guapindangen residence, being accompanied, of course, by some of the uh, family members, senior family members who have gathered here since uh, this uh, morning. And of course, Simpiwa, as you were reflecting on the some of the things uh, that uh, uh, Prince Mangosu Tumtelezi is known for, uh, one cannot uh, omit the fact that uh, he had an unbelievable sense of humor. You know, those who have interacted with him can attest to that. And I myself had an interview with him about three months ago where we were talking about the issues that, affect, that were affecting him as well as the Amazulu uh, king, Mr. Zulu Gazulitini. And uh, after the interviews in Piwe, uh, I, uh, I said to him, hey, but Shenge, uh, God has kept you for so long. I mean, you are uh, almost 95 years old now. And he said, hey, Mr. Makanya, I hope God has not kept me this long to punish me for my sins. <laughs> so, so that's the type of man uh, that many of the people in this uh, uh, particular home know him for. I mean, he, he loved his music, according to his son. He was a simple man. He loved going to church, and uh, he loved being around uh, ordinary people. Uh, that's the, you know, view, views of the family uh, that we have been, you know, speaking uh, to, I mean, since the beginning of this week when we are re reflecting really on the life of uh, Prince Mangosu Tukutilis, who, by the way, was not only the traditional prime minister of the Amazulu nation, but he was also uh, Inkosi, an Inkosi of uh, the Butelezi clan. In your visuals there, we are seeing some members of the Butelezi family who have uh, converged here. Of course, they're going to be accompanying that body uh, to the stadium for the official funeral of uh, Prince uh, Mangosu to Butelezi. Uh, from where I am, uh, Simpiwe and Lebo, uh, I can safely say that uh, any minute from now, you know, these uh, vehicles can be making their way uh, to the stadium, and then uh, there's going to be that uh, motorcade uh, uh,
necessary. But of course, uh, guns will not be permitted, and the police are saying that they will uh, be clamping down on any illegal, you know, activity uh, in the vicinity of uh, the stadium. As we of course anticipate the family to leave uh, the Guapindangen uh, residence, making its way to the uh, stadium where the official funeral is uh, going to be uh, taking place. In your visuals there is uh, Reverend Monsa Zondi, who uh, was a former uh, Secretary General of uh, the Inca Freedom party was a close ally of uh, uh, Prince Mangosu to Butelis in his days as a politician but of course he is here as uh, uh, or rather in his capacity as uh, Reverend Musa Zondi today and to see as you can see there in your visuals as in Piwa and Lebo, uh, we continue to wait for the body of uh, Prince Mangosu to Butelis to be you know um, put into uh, the house that has been brought here, which will then uh, take him to uh, the stadium in Olundi, Simpio and Lebo. Well, Simpio, thank you so much uh, for that. Um, yeah, Simpio Makanya is out at the uh, at Kwapindangene, and uh, as we heard, uh, the cortege is now standing by to transport the body of uh, Prince Mangosutu Ptelezi into the Prince Mangosutu Ptelezi Stadium, where the main service will be. And uh, just looking at some of the visuals, I saw uh, Manja Mandela, who is mm -hmm. the grandson of uh, Nelson Mandela. And quite interestingly, the Nelson Mandela Foundation issued a statement, you know, just paying tribute to Prince Mangosutu Ptelezi, saying that his legacy was a very very imposing one and a very complex one and mm. quite it's quite interesting how they're very diplomatic considering the kind of relationship that uh, Nelson Mandela and uh, Prince Mangosutu had you know they came together to embody mm. the spirit of reconciliation uh, you know which is uh, shortly after the tension that erupted there in KwaZulu Natal and as well as uh, in Gauteng where thousands of people died but uh, both leaders came together and brought about a cloud of peace uh, mm. for for those communities and and he's also been credited with, you know, his uh, negotiating uh, skills yes. and his authority on bringing peace in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, so we are bringing you wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the funeral service of Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi. Uh, let's uh, take you now to, uh, that's in fact in Ulundi, that's the home of the Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, where Simpio Makanya is stationed. Uh, he is going to take us through that as the cottage is expected to leave the home and then there on the corner of your screen there i think that is the uh at the stadium in fact where ayan Mthongo is stationed we also saw um uh, prince nongonyan also there along with Mandela. and uh, yeah the speaker of parliament nocivio mapisangakula uh, said that um, a quote, as we bid farewell to this remarkable leader, we remember him as a trailblazer who left an indelible mark on our journey to democracy and his commitment to serving our country remains unparalleled and his legacy will inspire generations to come. And, uh, you know, he, he was arguably South Africa's longest serving Minister of Home Affairs and Parliament commended his ability to sort of, you know, navigate the complexities of governance during the presidencies of Nelson Mandela and Thabo Mbeki, earning the role of acting president of on numerous occasions, as Lebo said earlier on, he served as acting president uh, for a record 22 times. Mm. All right, let's take you through what is expected to happen today at around uh, 10 past um, uh, 10. We expect uh, the Archbishop Tom Makoba uh, to also speak at around uh, half past 11 if everything goes according to plan. Nomusa Dube, Premier of KZN, Nomusa Dube Ngube. Uh, there'll also be a tribute on behalf of the Prince Mangosutu Butelezi Foundation. And then a little later, Ngosi R.S. Shinga. There's also be a musical tribute. Speaking of the Speaker of uh, the National Assembly, Nosivio Mapisa Nakula, also expected to speak just after 12 o'clock. And then the grandchildren as well. And I think also Ayanda Mklongo, our reporter, also mentioned this, that, uh, the, you know, on behalf of the family, Prince uh, Zuzifa Butelezi, Tillis is also expected to speak. And then just around one o'clock, hopefully, uh, the president of the country, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, was expected to deliver uh, that eulogy there in uh, that funeral. And then a ceremonial element by the chaplain general. And then it also heads to uh, the cemetery. That's all happening between now and, of course, uh, half past one to about two o'clock. So maybe everything should be coming uh, to an end at around three o'clock, half past two uh, this afternoon.
Yeah, all hands on deck uh, security-wise. As you've seen, Police Minister there, uh, Peggy Kele, yesterday just uh, overseeing the preparations for uh, the final, well, the main service today. And, uh, you know, just into the week, like early days of the week, we've, there's been some consternations and uh, concerns that uh, Police Minister was... Uh, trying to undo some of the plans that have been laid by the family. But uh, he did say that uh, all those issues have been threshed out in terms of the kind of roles that uh, each party will play and the kind of role that Amabuto will play, um, you know, because uh, there had to be a distinction between what should be happening, what should uh, Amar Am Amabuto be doing, mm -hmm. and what should the uh, police detail be doing yeah. in, as an extension of the Category 1 funeral. But uh, it seems that all that is in order in terms of a synergy between all those parties. Mm -hmm. Those are the live visuals uh, coming to you live from uh, KwaZulu Natal. We're giving to you wall to wall coverage of the funeral service of uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelez, who died last week, uh, Saturday, in the early hours of Saturday morning. He hadn't been well, uh, so the mm. announcement came in, I think, in the early hours of uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Yeah. And yesterday we uh, spoke to, Ayanda spoke to one of the. Um, historians who spoke about the role of Amabuto and yes. what, you know, they had to do in terms of taking, you know, the body to uh, his home. You could, if you see uh, in the visuals as well that we showed you last night, um, mm -hmm. you know, the Archbishop was also there to to welcome yes, the body yes. of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. Yeah. All right, uh, for now, let's take a quick, quick ad break. We're back after this. We'll be right Stay back. with Morning Life. Don't go away. Uh, funeral. We are also at the home. That's where Simpio Makanya is at. Also at the stadium with Ayanda Mthongo. Also at Pukwa Pindangene is Natasha Piri. And remember, the uh, pr Prime Minister is also uh, being afforded the uh, Category 1 Special Official fun uh, Funeral uh, at Ulundi, KwaZulu Natal. Remember, he served as a traditional Prime Minister to the Zulu Monaka Nation and was the founder and the President Emeritus of the Inkata Freedom Party. He also served as the first Minister of Home Affairs of the Democratic South Africa. Uh, details of the uh, Category Category one is that, you know, um, according to government policy, uh, it accords a special official funerals category one to persons of extraordinary credentials specifically designated by the president of the Republic of South Africa. In this case, uh, President Sir Ramaphosa, who, by the way, we expect to deliver the eulogy day in this afternoon. Uh, the prince's funeral will entail elements of military honors. The president is also uh, directed that flags.
We've flown at half mast at flag stations across the country from this past Tuesday, which was the 12th, until the evening of the day of which the funeral will take place. So many people have, uh, you know, uh, uh, paid their tribute uh, to his legacy and. Uh, well, even his opponents refer to him uh, as the dying of South African politics. And uh, we talk about this struggle for liberation. And, you know, so many reference has been made about his utterances, beliefs and warnings to the ANC alliance. And, um, you know, in doing so, exposing the myths and challenges uh, the propaganda while forging a clearer picture of the man about whom so much has been written. Uh, he's been referred to as a very principled man when it comes to advocacy of peaceful change when it was fashionable to cry for violence and his influential role at the negotiation table, remember, at, uh, at Codessa. And reflections has been made on why his vision and commitment could not be ignored by his opponents. And um, uh, Natasha Piri spoke to a guest earlier on who talked about uh, uh, his advocacy for federalism in direct opposition to the unitary one-party state envisioned by the ANC. And, uh, yeah, and also his service in the government of national unity and the reasons why presidents Nelson Mandela and Tabombegi entrusted him with running the state more than 20 times over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. And some of the uh, interesting facts that uh, would have come out today, I know Ayanda also touched on that, that King Mrs. Zulu uh, is not going to be in attendance of the funeral, even though, you know, uh, Prince Mangosuchi Wutelezi provided the Amazulu royal family since, you know, 1955, uh, and he's, been, he's played a critical role in that appointment of the king, but, um, you know, he's also, uh, he also missed the funeral. and uh, another set of rituals has been made, has been conducted rather, as the body will leave the home for the very last time into the stadium and we've heard the director and CEO of The Undertaker saying that uh, they will then hand over to the South African National Defence Force as an extension of the Category 1 funeral uh, which has been you know, afforded by President Cyril Ramaphosa and then um, after which they will then go back to the Guapindange in a family cemetery where the undertaker will resume operations again uh, in terms of uh, you know laying uh, Prince, Prince Mangosutu Telezi uh, you know, for the very, very last time. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, traditions, you know, he played a significant role in reviving, you know, important traditional events and rituals, including, you know, the commemoration of His Majesty King Shanga, King Shaka, rather, Senzanga Kona, the redone ceremony, you know, the ceremony of first fruits. You know, I mean, back in 1995, he proposed a public holiday that was brought before the South African Parliament for approval, but Shaga Day uh, was excluded from the list of proposed public parliament for approval, uh, you know, and those are some of the, you know, milestones that he would have driven. He contributed immensely to education during, uh, you know, his tenure as the Prime Minister of KwaZulu uh, government and was a visionary behind the establishment of the Mangosutu Technico, which we now know today as Mangosutu University of Technology. So some of the uh, facts that come out of uh, the uh, funeral service of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. All right, quick ad break. We're back after this. Stay with us.
truck behind us. <laughs> Guys, can we ask the truck to move, please? <laughs> but our opening shot, there's a truck behind us. at Tulundi, northern KwaZulu-Natal, where the funeral service of IFP founder is uh, currently taking place. And uh, Prince Bagmusutu died last weekend at his uh, Wapindangena home. Mm -hmm. Let's welcome our SABC One viewers on this special category, uh, official funeral category one, former presidents and uh, dignitaries from the African continent and abroad are expected to attend the funeral. And uh, President Sarah Maposa will deliver the eulogy. We now cross to our colleagues, Blaine Herman and uh, Bongiwe Zwan. A very good morning to you, Blaine and, uh, Blaine and Bongiwe. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Just give us uh, a preview of uh, what you see there. A very good morning to you, Simpiwe. And uh, we're coming to you live from Ulundi at the Prince Mamosutu Lutelezi Regional Stadium now. This is where the funeral service of uh, the late Amazon Prime Minister Blaine Asamu Morgan, as well as the founder of uh, the IFP, Prince Mamosutu Lutelezi, is going to be held. It is about the magnitude of the moment, isn't it, uh, Bungiwe? Good to be with your better mind here today, especially on a day like today. It is uh, this day in history, uh, if you will. Um, and we've seen the outpouring of lamentations. Bongi and I have been fortunate enough to be eyewitnesses to history over the past couple of years, and this moment is no different. Why? Because the Prince of Kwapindangen is being laid to rest. The lamentations, the, the passionate expression of sorrow and grief. You've heard it throughout the week, and you're bound to hear it again. Why? Because people are saying their final goodbyes and paying their last respects. And Blaine, as they have said to us a number of times since we got here, Umuti Omkulu Uwile, a great tree has fallen. And you think about, to some people here, and his family, he was simply Ushenge. He was simply, you know, Usogwalisa. And that's how they refer to him. You, you listen to Amabuto, they speak greatly of this particular man. And then you listen to the Anglican Church speaking about him being a dedicated member of the church, a very active one at that. You listen to stories coming from his foundation. They tell you what a dedicated servant he was. You listen to some of the, the children you and I were interacting with yesterday, they call him Umkul, who used to buy us sweets mm. whenever we bumped into him. So certainly a lot of faces to the man. Yeah. The sense of loss is no doubt palpable. And you can expect that, isn't it? Because people are, I guess, still trying to process what uh, Prince Butelezi meant to them and what his passing now means to them. Mm. What does it mean in terms of the trajectory of, of this nation South Africa. Um, and as you said, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's heartwarming when you hear from the children. Uh, you assume that he was well known in terms of the elders, but when the children recognize that, you know, when I used to bump into Prince Butelezi, he used to mm -hmm. give me a 10 rand, he used to give me a 20 rand, 
it's endearing and it talks to the personality of the man. And uh, Blaine, you know, one of the things that is also interesting to talk about, listening to various IFP leaders as well, is how his legacy is contested is how there are, of course, those who are saying that while there are many faces to the man, for us, it brings back painful memories. There are those who are saying, yes, leaders have mixed legacies, like you and I possibly. So how then do you begin to have a conversation about who he was? And I suppose one of the people that knows him very well is our next guest who really is, is somebody that's worked very closely with Ushenge, and that is Senzo Mfaela, that's Obab Senzo, um, who's coming to talk to us, and he's the chairperson of his foundation. And it's interesting, Baba, that we are speaking this morning, and a lot of people are talking about Ushenge in his many faces, many hats, and many recollections. I wonder what are the, you know, for, for the foundation today, what kind of recollections, uh, uh, recollections, Recollections, rather, are you having? Um, good morning to you and your listeners. Um, it's, it's, there are not sufficient words to describe um, the emotions that are running through us who have worked with him uh, in a day like this today. Um, one of the key things uh, I think I can start with is an appreciation of the response of South Africa to the man I know. Um, in all the time that I've worked with him, not once has he referred to me as a comrade or a colleague. He's always referred to me as my son. Um, and, and everything that has happened between us has happened in that context. Um, I started working with him when I was very, very young. I was hardly 20 years old. And he taught me so much about commitment, um, about um, work ethic, where you put everything you have in everything you do. Um, I remember when I started working with him, my office was a few blocks away from his. At about 10 o'clock at night, I'll be tempted to go home. Yeah. And as I lock my office, I'll see his bodyguard sitting outside his office. And I'll quickly run back to my office <laughs> um, to try to ensure that he goes home first before I did. Um, um, the man worked with absolute commitment and he gave his absolute all in everything he touched. I think that would be the common refrain that you're bound to hear today. He gave it his, his all. Yes. Um, he used a number of hats as well. I mean, he was the traditional prime minister of the, uh, the Zulu monarch as well as the nation, the first home affairs minister in democratic South Africa. He was appointed the traditional prime minister back in 54 by King Cyprian. Uh, talk to us about the theme he gave it his all, and how he worked all those those different parts. Look, when he is in a traditional function, you will see him. He is there. Um, when he deals with traditional issues, he is there with everything he has. Um, there are no political considerations. There is nothing else that exists in the world. He's dealing with that. When he's in the political world, he, 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 he is dealing with it. Um, when he's at church, um, he sings, um, he performs all the rituals. Um, I was, for instance, told a very interesting story by one of the Anglican reverends who grew up with him here, that uh, they were so embarrassed when he was young, they knew him as, a young, as their Ingos. Now, when he came to church and he had to perform a ritual of washing their feet, um, and he performed it with such ease, uh, because that's just who the man was, um, that he was a prince, 
that he was a prominent politician at, at church. Part of his duties was washing congregants' feet, and he did that with no, with no reservations. How does the, 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 the foundation then begin to comprehend the various conversations that are being had about his legacy, especially those who are saying that for them, um, you know, just his name alone invokes painful memories of the past? Look, um, it comes with the territory. You either get involved and involved fully um, and have the kind of criticism he gets, or you don't get involved fully. You wash your steps every day, every, wherever you go, and then you don't get, get criticism. He get criticized in the church. He get criticized in his traditional leadership role. He get criticized in politics. We expect that. What is difficult to live with, it's, it's, it's unreasonable insults. Because it's one thing to criticize somebody differ with somebody, but it's quite another to just wake up and insult a person. And he himself, he understood that. Um, I think it was at his 90th birthday, where he, he stood up and he said, look, in my journey, uh, if I'm called upon to walk it again, I, I, I'll do things my way, the same way, but I want to apologize to all those who got offended by my commission and my omissions. Mm. Um, and that was the measure of the man. Mm. And, 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 and we knew that it came from deep from his heart. Because he understood uh, that you can't walk the path that he was doing and not offend people. Mm. How much of his religion, the church, played a part in his outlook? on life, especially when he used to take hits in terms of criticism as well. We know that his mother was very religious as well, Princess Magogo. Uh, he used to talk about uh, the Psalms that she knew by heart, in particular Psalm 91 was a favorite. Uh, talk to us about how he married tradition and, and the church. Well, um, that is the life of his people. Um, for the majority of Zulu people, we had to learn to marry tradition and the church. Um, and, and, and he reflected that in a very big way. Um, for him, more than any other, I think there were two influences in terms of his religion. His mother and Nkosi Albert Lutul. Because whenever the two of them down, every discussion will start with a prayer. Um, and if you look at uh, what Tinkosi Alpet Lutuli did all his life, there were two themes, hope and faith. Mm, um, so, 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 so if, if, if you reflect on Tinkosi Teles's yeah. life, those two themes are central. Um, he wouldn't allow himself to lose hope. Yeah. He just wouldn't allow himself to lose faith. Yeah. Uh, at a very difficult time, and he would, he would pray and pray hard yeah. for solutions to come his way. Baba, if you can wait, uh, stick around with us. We want to continue our conversation, but uh, we have a number of our colleagues uh, out and about in this uh, Prince Mangasutu Butelezi Regional Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I do understand Ayan Damshongo is standing by as of course everybody is getting ready now Blaine um, you know in just under an hour we're expecting the service to get underway. Ayanda? Bongo and Blaine, thank you very much. And you're speaking there about the many hats um, worn or, or by Nkosu Mangosu to Teleze, of course, as a politician, as a traditional uh, a leader, um, as, a family, as a family man. But coming back to uh, traditional leadership, of course, being born um, into the royal family, he would always say that um, before everything else, he was a Zulu. So he prided himself.
himself, took a lot of pride in the fact that he was a Zulu and, 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 and the work that he did and the role that he played um, in uniting the uh, royal family. But also, I mean, the, the Amazulu are known now across the world um, as one of the most biggest, as one of the one, uh, strongest um, uh, uh, groups within uh, South, uh, South Africa. And I have my next guest now as the chairperson of the House of Traditional Leaders, uh, Inkosi Usfiso Shinga. Davizeta, thank you so much for uh, your time. Um, throughout this week we've been hearing particularly from um, your uh, uh, your peers, your colleagues, the traditional leaders, we've been hearing from the Zulu regiments, Amaboto, about the void that is now going to be left within traditional leadership um, in not only here in Kwazulu-Natal but also um, in the country um, following the passing of uh, Prince Mangoso Tuptilis. Yeah, thank you and, uh, and the viewers and it's very true that uh, we have lost a giant <coughs> of uh, traditional leadership. We don't know how, how long is it going to be in this state and who's going to fill these shoes. Kose uh, Butelezi was uh, a born leader. Uh, he has done a lot for the institution of traditional leadership throughout South Africa and abroad. And we really missed him, we really missed him a lot. I don't know what will the institution be like without him. Just speaking about his legacy and how do you take um, it forward? You are now in the hot seat to, to speak. You are now leading um, traditional leaders in the province of Kosnatal. And we do understand that uh, there is still a lot of challenges. Uh, you have been working in terms of transforming uh, traditional uh, leadership. How do you, drawing from the lessons um, uh, that uh, he, he's left, how do you then take this institution forward? We will try by all means that uh, what Mdwana has been fighting for, we take the baton from him and uh, move forward because it is his legacy. And uh, we promise that uh, we'll do our best to fight by all means, to, to, to fight with these challenges that uh, Mdwana was fighting for in the institution of traditional leaders. And specifically, I know that women as well, um, in terms of traditional leadership, yes, we are seeing um, more and more women coming into the structure. But we've also, in some areas, um, in Kosashinga, seen some resistance. And this was something that um, Prince Butele, as we know, was vehemently opposed. Um, he would say that women must be given the equal rights and equal recognition within the structures. Yes. Yes, we condemn that uh, there are still places where women are not allowed to take uh, higher positions in the traditional leadership uh, institution. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, there's no such that is happening in, 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 our, in our province. Mr. Shinga, we appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and course, this Fiso Shinga, they're the chairperson of the House of uh, Traditional leaders here in the province of Kofzatel, of course, just taking, uh, reflecting on the life of Prince Marcos Tutelezi and the legacy that he leaves and how they now, um, who are leading traditional leaders in the province of Kofzatel in this country, are going to take and continue to transform this institution, particularly uh, speaking about the role that women um, are going to play or are playing in a traditional leadership. Of course, we've been saying that as SAPC News, we have the area of Ulundi covered here in the stadium and outside um, and let's now check in with my colleague Natasha Piri. Natasha? Thank you. Thank you so much Ayanda. Well we actually inside the stadium and there are snaking queues to actually go in uh, right now. As you can see various mourners uh, are queued here outside just waiting on, to go Italia. inside the stadium and perhaps if I'll just ask my colleague Kwame Manzi uh, uh, just to follow me and we'll just probably just get uh, some reaction from the people um, out here uh, who are willing to talk to us. I see a young gentleman. Hi, sir. You're live on SABC News. Um, so you've come here, as an, I assume you're a member of the IP Youth Brigade, to come uh, pay your respects. Perhaps if you just, uh, you know, give us your perspective. What have you learned from the life of uh, the late Prince Magnusuti Puteles? Um, my name is Sabel Mpaela uh, from Dwe Dwe. Uh, what we have learned as uh, young people from Shenga is honesty, transparency and accountability. That is what we have learned as a champion of uh, democracy and a champion of freedom uh, in our lifetime. 
I mean, uh, you, you heard your president um, giving a clarion call at the memorial service saying that in the memory of the late Prince Mangosutu Putelezi, um, the IFP will grow the party further. As a young member, do you agree with these sentiments? 100% agree with the sentiments of the president. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how do you think you're actually going to grow? Do you actually think that you're going to win the province of KZN come next year in the elections? Definitely. With the vibrant branches that the IFP is creating currently, we will definitely win the, uh, the uh, KZN pre uh, province and we'll definitely grow our footprint nationally. I remember uh, last month there was a, a letter that the IFP Youth Brigade had actually released um, to uh, you know the leadership of the IFP, just basically saying that you don't you don't agree uh, with this multi-party charter uh, you know uh, coalition that the IFP has actually entered with other seven political parties, including the DA, um, Action SA, and other parties. That is with the national leadership of the IFP Brigade and the national leadership of the IFP as well, NEC. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You so much. Thank you. So, of course, we continue to bring you uh, rolling coverage and wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the funeral service of the late Prince Mangosutu Putelezi, which will actually start at 10 a.m. But as you can see, long queues uh, from the various mourners actually going inside the stadium. It's expected that 20,000 people will actually come and pay their last respects uh, to uh, you know Prince the late Prince Mangosutu Petelezi but actually let me toss to my uh, colleague Simpio Makanya. Simpio what's happening on your side? Thank you very much Natasha and uh, good morning to the viewers as well as we continue with the rolling coverage of uh, the uh, special official funeral of uh, uh, Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi. We continue to be stationed at his home here at uh, Kwapindangen residence. And uh, the wait continues in terms of uh, that body, you know, being taken by the hearse, which will then uh, carry it to the stadium. But from where I am, uh, I can safely say that more and more of the Amazon regiments, Amabuto, have now converged here at the home. They are, of course, going to play an integral part of, of the process of uh, 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 carrying this body, you know, to the stadium. I speak to you. I'm asking my colleague Raymond Mbele to just give you a pen of what is happening on the other side of the house. Unfortunately, we cannot get closer uh, to the crowd as we were instructed to be stationed here for now until the coffin has been taken out of the house, uh, then making its way to the stadium for the official funeral of uh, the late Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi, a man who wore many hats, uh, but one uh, thing that uh, family members have been uh, saying about him is that uh, he was uh, a, a lovely person. He was a kind-hearted person. He was a person who always uh, you know, wanted to see others happy. Uh, but of course, he also, you know, demanded that uh, the respect, you know, the, the respect uh, should be given to, you know, uh, to him at all, at all times. And of course, the, this is the hess that is going to be carrying the coffin of uh, Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi. The driver is already inside and the Amabuto as well as IFP supporters have been gathering on the other side where they are going to be, you know, taking his coffin from that house, uh, uh, of course, uh, putting it inside the house uh, for that particular uh, pro pro procession to begin. Uh, looking at the time now, uh, uh, all indications are that by uh, 10 o'clock, the body would have left this uh, uh, particular home of uh, Prince Mangosutu uh, Butelezi, making its way uh, to the stadium. And of course, uh, we are going to be stationed here uh, for that particular process, Simpiwa and Lebo, uh, to unfold. Uh, and if Simpi was said earlier, 
that uh, we are not allowed to get closer to where the crowd actually is because this is where you know the sacred rituals are being performed uh, for the very last time before the body is being transported well will be to the prince uh, mangosutu is a stadium and uh, yeah the, the the program will start in about uh, 40 minutes and uh, that will signal the start of the official Category 1 funeral as accorded to by uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. Mm -hmm. And we have our reporters there on the ground. Uh, Simpio Makanya is also there at the home, as explained by this Sims here. And then uh, at the stadium, we have Ayanda Mshongo, who will also give us water coverage. Our presenters there on the ground is Blaine Herman and Bongi Wezwane who have interviewed several people including uh, the uh, the representative of the Butelezi Foundation who spoke fondly of uh, the man that he uh, worked under who said at no point did he ever address him as you know um, a colleague or mm. he's always addressed him as a son, son and yeah. you know it also speaks to the kind of person uh, that everybody has been referring to uh, in uh, this uh, the entire morning we also spoke to uh, uh, Bongani Dembe who is the CEO of the KZN Philharmonic Orchestra that was at around uh, 10 past 7 this morning who spoke about the role of the uh, the mother of Prince Butelezi, Princess Makoko mm -hmm. uh, who we know and if you know South African music you'll know that you know dates back to uh, the history of South African music. She played a pivotal role in uh, South African music and uh, South African opera in general as well. I know uh, there was a, he had a, also act, had an acting stint as well, uh, Prince okay, Butelezi sure, as sure. well. Mm, there was one sure. where he played the role of um, uh, Prince Senza Ngakona that is one in one of the films. All right, uh, let's... Let's take you back to uh, Ulundi, where our reporter Simpio Makanya is standing by, where the homestead is at the moment. Simpio, over to you. Slowly here at the residence of uh, Guapinda again. A uh, short while ago, the I mean the. We saw the eldest son of uh, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, that is uh, Prince Zuzi Fantutugo uh, Butelezi, leaving the home. And of course, uh, the family members, the rest of the family members who are going to be accompanying the body are still in the uh, home as we speak. But uh, what is important to note is that a group of us uh, has arrived here at the home of uh, Prince Mangosu to Mutelezi. They are, of course, uh, going to be accompanying the body, the coffin that will be carrying uh, Prince Mangosu to Mutelezi uh, all the way to the uh, Prince Mangosu to Mutelezi sports complex uh, in the town of Olundi, which is about uh, 10 kilometers uh, from where we are. Uh, reflecting really on the life and times of uh, Prince uh, Mangosu to uh, Butelezi, uh, a man who some saw as a hero, uh, but of course uh, you do get also uh, some who don't uh, necessarily feel uh, that uh, he was a hero, but the residents of uh, this particular community have had good things to say about Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, uh, especially about his role in ensuring that uh, there is the development in this area and also there is uh, a recognition uh, of uh, and preservation of the Amazulu uh, culture as a whole. Of course, he was not only the uh, traditional prime minister of the Amazulu nation, but he was also an Ingosi of uh, the Butelezi uh, clan where we are. A man who has uh, so spent most of his life in uh, the pub, in, 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 in the service of uh, South Africa, having been, of course, uh, been appointed as the minister of the Home Affairs in 1994. Uh, that, was, uh, that appointment was made by the former and late President Nelson Mandela. From where I am now, I'm seeing um, family members carrying flowers who have just stepped out of the home that is, uh, or the house rather, that is, uh, that is keeping the body of a former or the late IFP founder, Prince Mangosu to Butelezi. There is starting to be some movement from where we are. And uh, of course, uh, those uh, group of IFP supporters and uh, Amabuto, uh, Amazulu regiments continue to be uh, stationed there. Uh, this uh, particular vehicle, which is on my right, 
is the hearse that is going to be carrying the body of uh, former or the late IFP founder Prince Mangosu to Butelezi. As of course we expect thousands and thousands of people to converge at the Prince Mangosu to Butelezi complex to pay their final respect uh, to the founder of the IFP as well as the traditional prime minister uh, to the Amazulu nation. Prince Mango Sutu Butelezi. Amabuto are now uh, starting, of course, that journey. Uh, from where I am, I can safely say that uh, there is now a beginning to be some movement. Uh, it's only that uh, uh, the house has been crowded, so it's not quite clear to see from where we are. But I can certainly tell you, our viewers, uh, that uh, uh, that particular coffin that we have been waiting for has now uh, mm -hmm. left the house and it's going to be now uh, going to the you know stadium for the commencement of the official program for the funeral Simpiwe and Lebo I I now can see the rest of the uh, family members that have uh, some of them carrying flowers uh, making their way to the vehicles uh, that are going to be transporting them as well as the body of uh, IFP. There is the coffin, uh, Simpiwa and Lebo. That's the coffin that is being carried by members of uh, the Butelezi family as well as the Amazulu regiments, Amabuto, who, who have played a really an integral part per preparing uh, for this particular, you know, send off for the uh, IFP founder and late, you know, Amazulu traditional prime minister, Prince Mabasutu. Butelezi. Of course, leading that group is uh, the son of uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi and Ibamba Kosila uh, Butelezi. That is uh, Prince uh, Zuzifa uh, Butelezi as well as Inkosi uh, Umpeyake uh, Butelezi, who was appointed as a regent. Uh, after uh, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, you know, uh, assumed many roles, the family felt that it was perhaps uh, important that uh, someone be appointed in his position, you know, to act in that capacity. Let us now try and get some natural sound as the coffin is about to enter the house. <laughs> Well, there you have it, uh, Simpiwa and Lebo, the coffin carrying the body of uh, late IFP founder Prince Mbosutu Butelezi has now been taken inside the Hess that is going to be transporting the body to the stadium here in Ulundi. The journey is about 10 kilometers. Let's continue with the natural sound as the Amabuto, Ama, the Zulu regiments continue to, you know, sing different songs in honor of uh, Prince Mbosutu Butelezi. I saw, I saw, I 
carrying the body of uh, late IFP founder Prince Mangosutu Mutulezi is now leaving the Kwapindangele residence here in Ulundi, making its way to the stadium here in Ulundi also for the official commencement of the funeral service, which is expected to get underway at around 10 o'clock this morning, of course. Prince Mangosutu Utelezi, having served in the Amazulu nation as the traditional prime minister for 69 years, and also being the founder of uh, Inkata Freedom Party since, which is a party rather that was formed in 1975. He led this party until the year 2019, where his he then took the reins and handed over to party leader now. Amabuto continued to accompany the Hess as it has been uh, the case uh, with the, even yesterday. We saw thousands, thousands of uh, uh, Amabuto as well as ordinary members of this community, you know. Uh, lining up the streets of Ulundi, bringing the town of Ulundi to a complete standstill to honor the life and times of the longest serving member of the Amazulu nation as the traditional prime minister and also the longest serving member of uh, the South African parliament, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, a man who has been hailed for a number of uh, contributions, not only here in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, but of course we also had, uh, you know, comments from uh, some of his friends who come from the rest of the continent. And one of those, of course, is the former president of Nigeria, uh, President Obasanjo, who described Prince Butelezi as a giant, as an exemplary leader. Let's continue to get that natural sound from the group of Amabuto who are accompanying the coffin of late Prince Mangosu Tuptelis. There we go, Umtanawagwa Pindange leaving his home for the very, very last time and uh, the cortege making its way to the Prince Mangosutu Stadium um, where the main service will be held. And uh, speaking of uh, the stadium, uh, as you can see in the split screen on your right is where the stadium is uh, right now. These are the live visuals from the stadium. Uh, people People uh, are, are pouring in in droves and uh, flooding flooding the stadium there. About 15,000 It's already been filled to capacity and there's an overflow of about 10,000 people outside the stadium that's been uh, catered for. 
and uh, so so many people have I mean so many dignitaries have uh, have since arrived and we've seen uh, former president Jacob Zuma arrive there and uh, chief justice Raymond Zondo arrived we've seen businessman Patrice Mutsipe uh, arriving there there's uh, M minister Lindy Zulu and uh, we've also seen Julius Malema the leader of the EFF uh, arriving there and quite interestingly uh, uh, you know Conversations are being made around the speech that the head of the EFF's political education, Dr. Mbuisen Ndlozi, uh, made, uh, saying that uh, mourners should not be shaken by ill-informed, ignorant people who are hypocrites wanting to educate the nation about its own history and leadership. Uh, remember that the EFF uh, took a very central role in defending Mbutelezi in a criticism about some of the prince's actions during the conflict leading up to the democratic breakthrough. Even though this has been seen just a, a bid to try to entice the IFP into working with the EFF uh, in a coalition partnership leading up to the elections next year. So, so much has been said about uh, the role that the EFF is playing in terms of and in so far as celebrating the legacy of Prince Amangosutu Teleze. Then on the left uh, is the live visuals of the uh, of the hearse leaving with the remains of Prince Amangosutu Buteleze signaling the start of the uh, official category one funeral service and signaling the end of an era for a baobab tree, as uh, Prince Buteles has been described by many. And uh, yeah, we've, uh, we, we, we also will hear as, um, what the President Cyril Ramaphosa in his eulogy will say about uh, Prince Mangosutu Buteles. And we have our reporters uh, stationed all over the place in Pure Makanya, as we've seen uh, at uh, Guapindangene and Natasha Piri and Ayanda Mthongo at the stadium. And we, we will also have Blaine Herman and Debongi Ezwane at the stadium and having in conversation with a variety of people there. Uh, so many people at the stadium arriving there. And uh, there is a businessman, Patrice Mutsipe, and his wife, Dr. Uh, Precious Mutsipe, um, uh, paying their tributes uh, to uh, the fallen hero of the IFP, Dr. Mangusutu Buteleze. And that looks like the uh, convoy of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, indicating that the service uh, is about uh, to start. And um, yeah, so many, so much has been said about uh, the, uh, well, that looks like the President Cyril Ramaphosa and who is arriving at the stadium. Uh, well, let's take a look at uh, who is now making his or her way into the stadium. Um, or, well, so that will mark the official uh, of, uh, okay, that looks like the queen of Amazulu. Yes, uh, King Misuzulu's wife, uh, Umama Maisela, uh, making her, her way into uh, the arena. And uh, yeah, since we've heard earlier on that the king, as per customary, is uh, not allowed to attend any funeral service, as it's actually taboo uh, in royal circles for a king to attend of uh, any kind. And uh, as a result, they they normally delegate uh, someone to attend on the behalf on behalf of the king. There is uh, President Sir Ramaphosa uh, making his way into the arena. Uh, that will signal the start of the funeral service in about 20 minutes' time. Uh, President Sir Ramaphosa he will also deliver the eulogy. And then again on the left, um, yes, the remains, of course, of uh, Prince Mangusutu Butelezi making uh, a 10-kilometer trek to the Prince Mangosutu Stadium uh, where the service uh, will start. Well, indeed, there's in Piwe. The has carrying the body of uh, late IFP founder Pre Prince Mangosu Tuptelezi is now going to be entering his uh, second home uh, before departing for the Prince Mangosu to uh, sports complex. As you would understand that uh, uh, the body was lying inside uh, Prince Mangosutu's uh, initial home here, uh, which was a house that uh, belonged to his uh, mother, Princess Makoko.
as it is uh, a traditional custom rather for the family to perform this ritual. They are now going to take the coffin uh, to the of uh, Prince uh, Mangosu Tukteleze. Before, before that, the body is taken to to the stadium. Live visuals there as we await the cortege uh, bringing the body to the Prince Mangasutu Butelezi Regional Stadium. Amazulu traditional Prime Minister Unduna Kulu, the great Unduna of the Zulus, appointed in 1954, appointed by King Cyprian Bekuzulu. And we've seen a number of hats that he has worn, Bongiwe. Um, that of the link between the king and the people, but also in the political sphere as well. And uh, Blaine, of course, this is a man known to many South Africans as Usheg, as the founder of the IFP. But you also think about, you know, one other aspect of his life, and that has been a husband to, to Princess Irene um, Mzila, who he married in 1952. And this is one of those love stories that a lot of people talk about. Um, and, and I remember even his children at some point talking about how our father used to bring flowers yes. for our madam every week. And she loved that so much. And she always smiled. And it talks about this particular love story yes. that you know spans over decades as we talk about the many faces of yes. this particular man. Something as you speak, Bongi, uh, something's jumped out and a quote that was found actually by our research department, uh, Prince Butelezi talking about Princess Irene at a funeral service in Ulundi and I just want to read what he said. It's such a touching quote. He says, and I quote, how do I say farewell to the love of my life? No man could have asked for a better wife. How then do I say farewell? The only way I can, believing not only that this is our last goodbye, but that there will be another hello spoken in the presence of our Lord. The day will surely heal the wounds that has felled me now. Yeah. How touching is that? And very touching and blame someone else who is saying farewell right now as we sit with him is Ubabu uh, Kwala, who is the IFP's national chairperson. And Bab Kwala, thank you so much for speaking to us. You're looking at what is happening right now. How do you say goodbye? Uh, my sister, no one, no one except God who ever knew that this day, the 16th of September, will be such a huge funeral for Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi, who has been in the field of leadership for more than uh, seven years. We've seen a number of dignitaries here already. We understand that uh, EFF leader Julius Malema is here, um, the former president Jacob Zuma as well. So all of those people here today, together with the thousands that you see on your screen, we understand that the stadium can take about 20,000, but we're expecting more. There's overflow areas, etc. Um, Mr. Guala, to the history of your party, um, and to a great extent, it is interlaced with Prince Butelezi's story. What is the next chapter now? How do you see the party moving on without him there? You know, while we were affected by his passing, but we are hopeful that 
the leadership that he has actually groomed, particularly from the IFP, will take uh, this work which he has done over decades uh, forward. The leadership he has built under the leadership of Velenko Senecharisa, I think, is the best leadership for now that can take the party forward. And you know that Prince Mangosu Tumtelezi was not only leading the IFP, but he was also the Prime Minister of the Zulu Nation. So it means that both these horns need to work together, one from the leadership of the IFP and also from the leadership of the Zulu Nation so that they can take it forward. I know that the leadership of the Zulu Nation rests with the Zulu Natal, but the leadership of the IFP is for the country uh, at large. And I wonder then, um, as you have then these particular conversations going forward about what becomes the IFP, how the IFP begins to chart a way forward without him, as the leadership, and I'm going to ask you personally, let's talk about some of the memories that you have of him and interactions that people would not have seen in the public domain. No, in fact, he has actually fought many battles. I can... Um, you know, think about uh, legal uh, issues. All matters that goes to court, he wins them. He wins them, actually. You come to the IFP, then you'll understand that there are too many players in the field. So there was a lot of frustrations that he received, particularly not from the opposition, but from the government itself. He served in the government of national unity, and he was a, a minister of home affairs, but he was frustrated. But today, everybody now yeah. is talking about uh, uh, people, people who are not authorized to be inside the country. But that was the reason why he was chased away, because he was accused of not accepting those people who are coming inside the country. Mm, mm. So that is those that are the things that you can... But there are many yeah. to have been to mention. How do you think his role changed post-1994? I mean, he's been described as the, the elder statesman in Parliament, in, in, in Parliament, seen as the voice of reason when parliamentarians are bickering inside, are fighting. How would you describe his role being changed post-94? No, indeed, he is a, a, you know, a, a, a man of humanity. He can actually, even at home, because it, it is not the IFP that actually made me to work with him. There are uh, blood relations uh, uh, between us. So 1975 was just an addition but I know him as a, he was a prince, who was a deposit of the Telezi clan, but all what he has done in the past, not a single one, that a single item that I can say here, then he, he didn't, you know, play it correctly. He, he, he used to play his cards very well. And of course, uh, we are still coming to live from the Prince Mangosu to Regional uh, Stadium. And this, of course, is as dignitaries are arriving. And I do understand, uh, spotted a little earlier on, was uh, DA leader John Stenhazen. There's also the EFF uh, leader, Julius Malema, here as well. And that speaks to the unity yeah. that it has been spoken about over time in Parliament. But, Bob Kuala, there's something I want to understand, especially where the IFP is concerned. There is that multi-party charter, which we also saw the youth brigade coming out very much against that particular issue. At some point, uh, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi was talking about that reconciliation with the ANC. But the charter is saying keep the ANC out at all costs and the EFF. How do you reconcile the two as you talk about his legacy and now being part of a charter 
that talks about something that he want, a party he wanted to reconcile with? No, you know, um, I, I can only uh, say that when there are too many uh, cooks, then sometimes the other hand cannot understand what the other was, was doing. So what the youth brigade was saying or doing, actually it's only, it was just a, a matter of a, a misunderstanding. That's why when the party had a discussion with the youth, no one was charged because they did not understand uh, something of which the leadership understood it well. Yeah. So I, I think the, the problem was, was just a communication yeah. issue. We had rather than a, div a division. We had Bilkasin Itlabisa on the program the other day, uh, and I put to him with regards to the wish of Prince Butelezi in terms of this reconciliation with the ANC. And Mr. Slavisa said there was no progress that was made with regards to that. But he's committed the leadership of the IFP to pursue the reconciliation agenda. But the reconciliation agenda doesn't mean a joining of forces with the ANC, rather healing of the wounds. Is that how you understand it? Yes. Yes, I think that there is also a misinterpretation of reconciliation. The IFP is talking of reconciliation that the IFP and the ANC must put the past behind us. But some from the ANC, they are talking of the merger. That is a two different, you know, things to, to debate about, of which the IFP is not against if they put it on the table and discuss it. The only challenge that we used to um, encounter as the IFP is that when this matter is discussed, then it goes to the media and then so it, it becomes an issue that is debated by the media rather than be debated by the two parties. I think that's where the problem, you know, begins. I know that there is a stack of documents that has been sent by the late Prince Mamosu Tubutelezi to the president of the ANC and the president of the country. So all what we are waiting now is for a response. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Are you able to share what's in the document? No, I cannot share it because as I have indicated that we do not in the IFP. It is in, in nature. If we, we send documents to the head of state, so I cannot disclose it unless the head of state decide to disclose it, those documents. So very unfortunate that when these documents went to the president and we are waiting, and somebody from the ANC in the province, and now begins to say, we are visiting the Prince Mangosu uh, Tukchelezi and want to talk about the reconciliation. Then we said, whoa, 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 wait a bit. Because the matter now is in the hands of the head of state and the, also the president of the ANC. Let's wait for the president of the ANC to say something before we even entertain what you are doing. But indeed, I have been approached by the provincial chairperson uh, of, the ANC, of the ANC, uh, MEC Duma, discussing about the same issue. And then I took everything that he was said to uh, Prince Mangosu to Buteles. Then once those things are ironed out, then we'll be able to allow the president of the country, who is the president of the ANC, and President Labisa, I mean, to attend to the issue. Mm. And, you know, I, I'm sure you can see um, these particular visuals. Let's talk about where Nabakwan. What's going through your mind right now? What's going through your mind is what, what, yes, what's going through your mind as you are seeing these visuals. He's coming to the stadium since his passing. Let's talk about what's going through your mind right now as Wapkwal. You know, when I spoke at the um, memorial service, I indicated that um, it's his mid midnight call because you know, the life which I have experienced over years is that I do not close my cell phone. 
yeah. before I receive a call from him, because I know there will be something that he wants to discuss with me, what is going to happen. So I will miss that, uh, that call. But I have never, ever, as I said earlier with this interview, that, that uh, on this day, it will be funeral mm. of Prince Mangosut Kutele. It has never clicked yeah. in my mind. And even now, I don't believe it. When was the last time you got that call? It was just before he went to, to the hospital. In fact, I had a, 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 a dinner with him. I think it was two days before he was taken to hospital. I was with him at home. And I shared, we discussed many things, but I didn't know that he was saying to me goodbye. Yeah. And um, we know him also to be a man of humor. Uh, sometimes yes. in Parliament we see those moments. Yes. And I wonder if for you, you have some. No, there are too, too many because, you know, we share, but sometimes then you can just say, I don't want this thing to happen. Then you know, it's your father, and then you take it as it is. Mm -hmm. I always say, when I joke with uh, uh, my colleagues that as, as national chairperson, when we chair meetings like national council, I, I sit next to him. So I just get a, a number of uh, uh, hits just from a hammer, you know. But I was able, you know, to take it as if nothing happened yeah. because I don't want to frustrate, to frustrate the, the people that I'm leading. But I get a number of hits, but. Uh, to me, I will just laugh at yes. that. I said, hey, my head is... <laughs> 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 he had a real zest for life, didn't yeah. he? And a, a willingness to live on. And we were, we had also uh, Princess Pumzila the other day on the program talking about uh, his 95th birthday when they took cake to hospital um, and they brought it towards him and he raised his hand and he just says, thank yes. you, God. Yes. Um, he was anxious to leave hospital. Uh, and get on with business um, and he was she was telling us that she you know he was reading messages on the iPad um, and also on another breath planning the funeral as well he was speaking about the hymns that needs to be sung here he was speaking about the verses that needs to be read so he you know he, he kind of maybe foresaw something um, but people weren't ready to let him go is that your experience? No, I remember that at one point, because you, you always, when you, you have to discuss issues, as we have said, that was a humble man. Yes. That, but when you go there, you must expect two things. Mm. It's either you check whether the weather is, is, is right or right. not, and then when the weather is, is right, and then you take some advantages and ask questions, yes. you know, so that you benefit from him. I remember Remember that at some stage when he talk about death, mm. you know, it, it takes as if death is nothing. So I ask him, why you take it so simple? Then he just re mm. responded to me by saying, you know, there is, you can dodge many things on earth except death. Mm. So that's why he was so, you know, he is expecting at any time. So I hope that the number of people that are gathered here, it will take some years yeah. or decades to have a similar uh, kind of uh, a funeral with a multitude of uh, people who are attending. And Bapwala, there's a lot of force that, um, that that comes into into being. And as we are talking, Blaine Amabuto, we're seeing. Um, you know, quite a, a number of people. It's, it's a nice point where mm. we are because we get to see yeah. everybody come in. This is where they all uh, come through and you can see that the, just they, for them, this is their moment of how they pay homage to him. But Babkwala, which then brings us back to this conversation that there's still a lot that is being said about his legacy. And we had this conversation with the CEO of the foundation earlier on to say, the many people who are still talking, there are many who are talking about him being good, his contribution, his leadership, but there are others who are saying, do not forget the painful past and still looking at the black on black violence, for example. A lot of it, they're placing the blame on him. And I wonder how 
the IFP is beginning to have these conversations and receiving some of what is being said around his mixed yes, legacy. Yes, no, I, I agree with uh, what you are saying at the level of the, of the media. But, you know, the issue of uh, uh, violence and black on black violence, we still stand by the fact that it was not manufactured by the IFP. Then we need so that we can tell the world, even if he has departed, so that his legacy remains, is that we need to discuss it if there is a need be. The only challenge that we are faced with is that people take as if the, ANC, the IFP was the one who was to blame for violence, and the people of the IFP who were killed committed suicide. You know, UTF was the one who actually killed the IFP people. And if, if, if I, I invade your house, you can't fold your house, fold your arms and wait for the police to come. You will defend yourself. The IFP was defending themselves from the people who went to the east and trade for war. They called it it's a people's war before they even arrive in the country. You know, you know I, I just wonder how we can do better. Um, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, I remember the stories. Um, and we've heard the stories reiterated over the past week or so since the death of Prince Butelezi. Um, how do we process the complex legacy? And, and let's be clear, for some it's complex, for others clear-cut, whereby they say, I mean, he was a man of the people, he did good for the communities, etc. But some, it's complicated for a lot of others. I wonder how do we get to a better place where we can heal wounds moving forward? No, I think if, if we want to heal the, the wounds, it's a, it's a simple thing. Firstly, is that the ANC is in charge of the country. But the ANC can't tell you that the IFP refused to come to, to, the, to the negotiating table because we are ready to be called. That is the only, only thing that I can, I can actually say right now, that the IFP over years, we have been waiting for the ANC to call us on the table so that, that we are able uh, to talk about this thing so that we can put it behind ourselves. But if it continues like this, because sometimes the ANC come at the, last, at the 11th hour when we are going towards the election, you can't discuss uh, issues of reconciliation, issues of peace while you are going to the, to, to the election. We need to, to discuss this issue when uh, the task, the task for elections are actually settled. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kwala, uh, for okay. that and uh, giving us uh, your own reflections. And uh, do, of course, uh, you know, stay tuned to the SABC as we're going to be bringing you more of these particular conversations. And spotted a little earlier on is in Koso Pategile Olomisa. Yeah. Uh, there's been a number of dignitaries that have arrived, Glenn. It is indeed a special official funeral category one. It is accorded to people with the extraordinary credentials. What does that mean? Well, credentials meaning the abilities and experiences of such a person as designated by the President of the Republic of South Africa. Uh, you, allow, you are bound to see a lot of elements of church, but also of military honors as well, military honors that is part of a special funeral. Uh, we will take it back to studio um, and we will be keeping a close eye on proceedings. Should be starting any minute from now, uh, but we'll take it back to Griselda Lewis live for us in studio. Griselda? Well, Bongi and Blaine, live to us. So thank you very much indeed as we continue to bring you live coverage of the funeral service of the IFP founder Ngosi Mangosutu Butelezi. Those live pictures uh, right there. Thousands of mourners have gathered this morning. Some 30 minutes ago, his body left the uh, Kwapindangene residence 
for that uh, special official uh, funeral category one. You see those visuals also on your screen as the cortege makes its way that category of a funeral, of course, accorded to persons of extraordinary credentials specifically designated by the President of the Republic. President Cyril Ramaphosa will deliver the eulogy there today. Prince Mangosuchi Butelezi, also the traditional Prime Minister of the Zulu Nation as well as a member of Parliament. As you saw there, my colleagues Blaine Herman as well as Bongi Wezwane are at the stadium. SABC News reporters have been giving you live coverage since this morning, stationed at the stadium and elsewhere as we give you this coverage of the funeral of the late Inkosi Mangosutu Butelezi. If you've just joined us, I'm Chris Alda Lewis. Uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi being laid to rest today as thousands of mourners have gathered at that stadium. You see there the President of the Republic who will deliver the eulogy, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, together with uh, the Secretary General of uh, the ANC, that is uh, Figile Mbalula, just some of the dignitaries that have uh, gathered at that uh, stadium. And uh, certainly uh, thousands of people would descend there. Yesterday we saw the remains of uh, Inkosi Mangosutu Butelezi arrive at his home, Kwapindangene, that is in Ulundi, in KwaZulu-Natal. And you saw hundreds of people that had been lining the streets of that town to watch the body being transported from the mortuary uh, to his residence. Now, that cortege has already made its way from the residence. And of course, a church service had been conducted yesterday. Uh, specific rituals as well, in line with the uh, Zulu culture, uh, were also uh, being uh, had basically been performed yesterday. IFP officials, dignitaries, as well as community members had been singing very much of what you're seeing there today, a celebration of the political life of this man, also the person that they had come to know in that area, incredibly respected, as you would see by the attendance at that stadium there this morning. So we're going to be crisscrossing in between the studio here in Johannesburg as well as to my colleague Bongi Wezwane and Blaine Herman who are at the stadium as well. Let's go live there once again as the cortege makes its way from the Kwapidangene residence in Ulundi. Blaine and Bongi Wezwane. All right, as that cortege makes its way, we'll go back to Blaine and Bongiwe very shortly. But of course, in terms of royal heritage, and that is what we have seen over the past uh, couple of days since uh, the announcement of the passing of the late IFP founder, President Nkosi Mangosutu Butelezi. He's a family man. Those are some of the sentiments that had been shared. And while his parents had been in a polygamous marriage, Nkosi Butelezi was also a staunch Christian and only married one wife. Uh, that was uh, Princess Irene Mzila uh, Butelezi. And, um, you know, the nature of his um, uh, family, um, the way he stood in terms of family is something that we've heard from the children as well, who spoke about, uh, you know, his staunch values, what he believed in. He was unflinching in what he believed in. And of course, his parents, uh, Chief Matole Butelezi, as well as Princess Makoko Katingizulu, the sister of uh, King Solomon Katingizulu. And of course, that then would mean a direct descendant of uh, King Shaga, uh, the founder of the Zulu nation through his mother, his uh, great-grandfather on the father's side, of course, was Chief uh, Nyamana Butelezi, the Prime Minister uh, to King Chwaya. Uh, Just a bit of history in terms of why you're seeing the pictures that you are on the screen here today. Thousands of mourners at that stadium there who have gone to pay their condolences to Ingosi Mangosutu Telezi. And you'll see a lot in terms of the regalia also, um, IFP supporters coming out in their numbers. You would recall, of course, at some point, you know, 
some notable events perhaps that we could uh, bring to you as you see those corners in celebration of the life of uh, certainly and uh, unarguably a towering political figure um, in South Africa. Certainly that cannot be denied. And um, one of the aspects you know, that had been spoken about was his passion for education. At some point, I think it was between 1979 and 2001, he was Chancellor of uh, the University of um, uh, Zululand. And those are some of uh, the aspects, if you look at the political life, when the liberation movements were unbanned, he turned Ingata into a political party, the IFP, and was elected as its first president. It seems like uh, the program, uh, just hearing some of what is taking place, let's uh, take a look also on our screen there as the cortege makes its way also you have um, dignitaries who are also arriving there in particular uh, from the IFP just going to try and stretch my member of uh, the uh, National Assembly of South Africa, uh, Naren Singh, is one of the individuals who's arriving there. I think, yeah, former president, um, Thabo Mbeki, also arriving at the stadium at this uh, particular time. Remember, it was indicated amongst the former heads of state that were going to attend the funeral today included former president Thabo Mbeki, who has just arrived at this moment, we're also expecting um, former President Jacob Zuma uh, to also be in attendance, former President Halima Motlante uh, to also be in attendance at the funeral there this morning. So what we're going to see is uh, many of those who have also made that commitment to pay their last respects expected to arrive there today in case you've joined us uh, since very early this morning uh, live coverage of uh, the funeral service of um, Inkosi Mangosutu Butelezi. Let's uh, go live now to the stadium where we join my colleague Blaine Herman as well as Bongiwe Zwane. to the what would ultimately of course then be the final resting day for Inkosi Mangosutu Telezi he was um, the chief of the Mutelezi clan from 1953 and although this was only recognized by government to see there uh, former President Jacob Zuma, also in attendance there, UDM leader Bandu Holomisa, also amongst the dignitaries there. You also have former President uh, Khalima Mutante, who's also in attendance. Just at the back there, the leadership of uh, the EFF, uh, Julius Malema, uh, seated next to Floyd Chivambu, as well as um, other members of uh, the economic freedom fighters so uh, various political parties this is also what we have seen over the past uh, couple of days a uh, tribute pouring in from different quarters as well as um, the different political parties let's go live now to the stadium where my colleagues uh, Bongi Waswane 
and Blaine Herman Arm. Blaine and Bongwe. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris Selda. Certainly, what a moment. And we yeah. talked about this moment with our guest just off air, talking about how big of a moment this is. And Mbuso Koza Blaine is a cultural practitioner, someone who has been to the road mm -hmm. with uh, Mutelezi, and someone who has. And, and for you, Mr. Koza. Let's talk about, you're watching these visuals right now. You knew, um, you know, Prince Mangoso Tugutelezi very well. Let's talk about that relationship. Uh, our relationship with Prince Mangoso uh, starts uh, when, during the times of King Shaga, when Mungangelele was a mastermind behind the Zulu Kingdom uh, around the battlefield, who is a father to Mnyaman, Mnyaman who is a father to uh, Mkandumba, Mkandumba is a father to Machole, Machole is a father to Prince Mangosut. So some of my forefathers fought battles with him, especially in Mahole during the Battle of Isandrana. But beyond that, his mother, uh, Princess Makoko, was a sister to Ukusapeta, a daughter of King Dinizulu, who got married to Ingo Sumeshwana at home. So from there we got so connected and especially when I was growing up, uh, I used to attend all these ceremonies, King Shaka ceremony, Ingo Sumeshwana. So I was absorbing this knowledge until we got a, a moment to sit down and I became like a son to him. Mr. Koza, if you will, put into context what we saw yesterday and what we see today in terms of the rituals that was, were performed. Bongi and I were at uh, Prince Butulesi's home yesterday and we saw the cortege coming into the home and the Anglican Archbishop uh, Taba Mohoba yes. uh, of Cape Town ushering in the uh, cortege and the Our Father. Yes. How did Prince Butelezi balance that of tradition as well as religion? Hey, it's, it's, it's so interesting because he was like full on a Zulu Prime Minister and who loved his culture and his mother, Princess Makoko, was this, you know, prolific singer, a Ludia who plays a string bow. And on the other hand, it's interesting that in 1879, the Zulus were fighting with the Anglicans because those were, that, that was English, you know. But it's amazing how he made peace with that and also, you know, irrationality in understanding the message of Jesus and his love of, you know, of his culture. I think he was a very, very intellectual man and a very spiritual man. Interesting, you talk about this, Mako, the fact yes. that she also used to read the Bible. Mm. She finished it twice. Twice, cover to cover. Yeah. And, and, and she and never went to school. Do you think that's where he also got a bit of the influence to have that aspect of his life? Definitely, because Princess Makoko used to attend uh, the Adventist, uh, uh, Seventh day Adventist. This is why you would hear a song. He cry when, when Mdona was listening to that. So I think you are right when you're saying the influence uh, of Princess Makoko in Prince Mangosuchu's life is really huge. Simply because, you know, I, I once had a moment with him in 2017. He said, I used to sleep on my mother's voice singing and wake up to my mother's voice singing and princess makoko was a very spiritual woman they say he was a praise singer so when others ululating they say he would wait she would wait for all of them to start but as soon as he starts she, she, will, she will be the last man standing on, on that stage and there was even an opera written about her, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kumalo's opera. She taught herself mm. out the vamp on organ. Okay, yes. And then in a piano, she would she listen, listen. She, she would play what a mouth harp. Yeah. It's Tolotolo. I mean, I, I, where's my Tolotolo? I was going to show you now. You know, so <laughs> she was a very powerful woman. And another there thing. There you go. Oh, oh there you go. if you can hold this for Bring me. Bring it, I'll hold it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is an instrument. Oh, 
fortune. Oh, 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 so, so this is the kind of new music. I feel like saying continue. <laughs> just, just a bit more. Continue just a bit yeah. more because these, the, the, these are, the, are, the, are the sounds playing that, you know, a lot of us grew up listening to. Uh, and, Even and You yes. know, we, we, we grew up with, with that. And, and, and it speaks also to that part that you were talking about, that he also, you know, was fully the Amazon traditional prime yes. minister, fully the leader of the IP, fully uh, a member of the church, fully a father in all of them. It speaks to a man who did not do things with half measures. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing when you look at him even his understanding of the of uh, the rituals. There are things that Mdwana would not do because he understood the culture from I mean, back to back. And uh, I remember when we were sitting down uh, telling me that there are people that you are working with, cause of, but we, we, we don't see them. And he laughed. It was last year, uh, I think in November. And, and what happened? He said, can you and I go to Ulundi and unveil uh, I mean, a memorial stone for Myanmar and Malele and Uchimwayo? Oh, the sound. It speaks to the live coverage. It does. Expect <laughs> anything at any moment. Yes, yes, yes. As we keep a close eye on the cortege, it's not that far now from entering the stadium. We're told that the coffin has just arrived. We've got eyes on it as well. A number of dignitaries already in place. Thousands of people are here. And we've seen it, Bongiwe, from yesterday. Those lining the streets to say their final uh, goodbyes. And it is both of sorrow as well as gratitude. That's the sentiment I got. And, and to listen to some of them, um, you know, talk about the man they knew very closely. Whether we knew him as an IFP leader, as whatever hat he would have worn at the time, they call him a community leader. They call him somebody that they could go to and, and, and address some of their concerns. Earlier on, we were hearing of conversations of him receiving calls about cattle being stolen, mm. whether Guanongoma or wherever, and he dispatches his team immediately to go and deal with that particular crisis. So what an interesting um, you know, recollection of, 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 of history. And, and Mr. Koza, you know, one of the things that you talk about is the, the, the importance of culture and, and where he would then fit himself. But I wonder with what is happening right now when it comes to the Amazon nation, yes. what then becomes the way forward? Uh, I think the king will have to make a decision, uh, I think, after following all the cultural processes and then from there we shall hear from what the kingdom has in store for us. Yeah, that with the challenges that uh, the Zulu kingdom is, all, I mean all the kingdoms, with the modernity, I'm interested in seeing how the Zulu nation is going to move now with regards to these modernity mm. uh, and nuances, because life is no longer like before. And he's been traditional prime minister since 54, and he was, you know, he said he told King Goodall Zulatini that, look, you have a you have a right to choose your own prime minister, but King Goodall Zulatini decided to keep him on. How do you think he performed in that role? I think he, I mean he excelled, and uh, I need to understand why he became a prime minister. Nengelele was a mastermind in the battlefield behind uh, the, the, the King Shaga era. Uh, Umyaman was a prime minister during the Battle of Isandrana, during the King Kajang reign. And his uh, grandfather, Umkandum, who is a father to his father, Matol, was also a, a warrior fighting at the Battle of Isandrana. So him becoming a Zulu prime minister is also prophetic because he, he, King Solomon, they say, she, he had a meeting with his sister, Princess Makoko, saying, do you remember the relationship we have with the Butelis clan? You need to get married to uh, Inko Sumachole so that we mend that relationship. And Princess Makoko used to say, you know, so he, he was, she was lamenting on her, I mean, on her boyfriend because now, exactly like when you hear about the history of Queen of Athena and Zeus, where you have to snatch wisdom, you know, on the sun that you're gonna I mean, give birth to. This is what this is what exactly happened because 
uh, in course, um, had um, so many wives. But as soon as Princess Makoko got married, they said in Sizulu, mm. And he lost his father at a very young age, yes. at 14 years old, yes. in Kosi Matole. How did that shape his upbringing? I think that's, that's when now uh, his relationship with the Princess Makoko grew stronger. You remember when he was doing uh, his uh, articles I mean, on law at the University of Natal, today UKZN. They say the Princess Makoko had overheard that Inkosi Mdonawapindangan is no longer interested in becoming Inkosi. So he had, she had to sell cows and Inkosi Albert Chul also influenced No, 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 you need to take uh, over your throne. So it's been an amazing journey watching uh, Umdona Gopindanga in his life. And, and I wonder then for you as someone who has worked with him closely as well in some yes. aspects, how do you remember him? How, how, how will you remember him? I will remember him as a man who did a bad man, as a good man who did a bad man's job. <laughs> he was supposed to be a musician for me, <laughs> not a politician. <laughs> because when you sit down with him, such a beautiful soul, overbearing, you know. Sometimes he would just send me an emoji on WhatsApp, smiling, you know. So he was a very. Uh, I remember we went, we, we, we invited him uh, uh, together with Playhouse uh, in uh, December the 9th. So we were uh, cornering Princess Makoko. That was a project by e Playhouse. Yeah. And then an electricity went off and all the generators were not working. Yeah. Then he was asked to, you know, vacate me in Ilokuzan in theater. And then he said, this is my child on stage, I'm not leaving. Mm. That is on video. Yeah. Mr. Kosa, stand by for us. We want to just, uh, we've got eyes on the cortege entering the stadium here at the uh, Mangasutu Butelezi Regional Stadium, Prince Mangasutu Butelezi Regional Stadium. We have a number of reporters fanned out across the stadium with good vantage points and good perspectives as well. One of them is Natasha Piri. Natasha? that were made by Dr. Mbui sending was that uh, we should seek peace amongst the institutions of African people. But this is despite um, the IFP joining the multi-party charter um, coalition and of course they've declared uh, the EFF and the ANC as enemy number one. Look, anything can happen in politics. Uh, their participation in the Moon Pact or multi-party coalition for change or something in South Africa is not something that's stagnant. Uh, Politics are ever evolving. A lot can happen in a short space of time. A lot can happen before the elections in 2024. So those uh, conversations are going to continue, but definitely we have been engaging with the leadership of the IFP during the preparations for the passing, the burial rather, 
and and uh, those conversations are going to continue and hopefully foster good relations as we once held with them. Some have said that the late Prince Mangosuthu Patele has had a controversial, uh, you know, past on history. Uh, we heard also there the EFF are uh, saying on Wednesday that you know they shouldn't tell um, history otherwise. Some you team, have said that he was a man of peace. Team. Look, he was a man in terms of the fact that peace is not pursued amongst friends. Uh, peace is pursued amongst people who have antagonisms amongst each other, people who have contradictions and challenges and they uh, are disagreeing. So to say he was pursuing peace is not incorrect. Uh, peace is achieved difficultly and uh, thankfully it was achieved in South Africa post-1994 and Umdor uh, Wapinangene was part and parcel of ensuring that terms of stability. And in terms of the life of the EFF in particular, he was part of ensuring that we were able to campaign freely in our formative stages here in KZN. So a man of peace is someone who pursues peace with his enemies. You don't pursue peace with your friends. So uh, we're here and uh, we're going to pay our respects. Lastly, he was the oldest serving member of parliament. I mean, your parliament yourself. And times, sometimes you'd actually scold the EFF in parliament. Just share with us some of those, some of those light-hearted moments. But also, what have you learned from him? Look, he was an elder. He was I didn't like conflict. Uh, one of the most heartfelt moments was when uh, Dr. Mbuisen and Josie warned him that uh, you'll have to move aside when we're going to be beaten up by those thugs of the white shirts. And he reported that to the Speaker of the House that uh, I'm being told to move in anticipation of some sort of altercation. So he was an elder, he was a leader, he was a statesman, someone with vast experience in resolving conflicts in South African society. And we learned that from him. We learned from him how to be able to maintain an institution of uh, importance in Africa and the Zulu nation. And we hope that stability that he was working for for almost seven decades, that stability and peace he worked for within the Zulu kingdom, which is so important in the, the history of Africa and the history of South Africa as well, will be maintained and that we'll all draw those lessons of how to keep the unity amongst our people. Mr. Tambo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, of course, Blaine and Bongi, when we continue to bring you Distinctions uh, from uh, the various political party leaders here. Of course, you can see that actually behind the tents, uh, you've all got, uh, you know, uh, various dignitaries coming, uh, not only from South Africa, but of course uh, from, uh, you know, uh, Africa and from the world. Uh, we know that former president of Nigeria, Mr. Obasanjo, is also uh, here in attendance. Remember, he was a long standing friend of. Uh, you need um, uh, Prince Mangosuthu Putelez. And of course, uh, it's interesting sights I've been seeing throughout the stadium. If I'll just ask Aguazi to quickly pan before I toss to you guys in our studio. You can see the Amabu Uto uh, just trekking the field. We've also got beautiful Zulu May as well. And of course, this is all in anticipation of, uh, you know, uh, the mortal remains of uh, the Prince uh, coming into the stadium. Of course, shortly uh, the program will start. And uh, with that, I toss back to you in our studio, Bongiwe and Blaine. When in Rome, it's when Lundi, I think, uh, more is joining us in this discussion. And Zwai, you know, Natasha ends off on a very interesting note there, and that is a note that touches on his friendship <laughs> with President Olusegun Obasanjo. Mm. And, and that was a friendship that also became a critical part and also forms part of who, um, you know, Umduanaga Pindangene was. Oh yes, a uh, very good uh, morning to the viewers. As much as he was a traditional leader, he was a politician, he was a religious man, he was a family man, he was also a politician with an outlook uh, globally. I mean, who can forget his friendship with people like uh, Margaret Thatcher, his friendship with the former US president, the late Ronald Reagan. So all those people, um, Helmand Koch, of Germany, so he was, those were the he was friends with. In fact, when I look at um, uh, President Opas, Obasanjo, you recall, just before the elections, um, the international mediation uh, that he had ne that, that, that he needed uh, to get done, um, I mean, for a peace process of South Africa, there were also people from outside. And you know who brokered that? One of the friends in Kenya. 
Mm. And you think about, um, you know, President Reagan, for example, in, in, in 83, and, and there he is, Prince Mangosu Tubutel is welcomed for prayer, you know, and thanksgiving at the White House. These are some of, the, you know, the... by the fact that he was from a, 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 a royal house, so to speak, um, and then that attachment so did and then give them that elevation. So he so was, he was able, able to use all of, all of those um, to then engage, engage with a number, with of, number of, uh, of from uh, outside. outside. I mean, um, um, he yeah, went for hair, met, met with people like, like um, uh, Robert Mugabe, so, so he was so very good friends with the, the late Kenneth Kawanda. So you can, you can see. Um, Yes, he was uh, a man from Ulundi, South Africa, Africa, but also internationally he played a very crucial role, uh, particularly to those organizations which were more aligned to what the IFP would represent going forward. Yeah. Well, the history is important, isn't it? Context is always important. The, the starting of the cultural, what was termed the cultural organization, Yenkuroleko uh, Yesizwe, and how it transformed in the 70s to the 90s into Nkata Freedom Party. Um, talk to us of, of, as political editor of the SABC, your interactions with him, the man, the politician. What were, what, what were some of the standouts? Well, it, it, it was very interesting. Um, if, obviously, I were to speak about uh, myself, my personal experience, I, I interacted with him at a much later stage uh, in his political life. Um, so I may not have witnessed mm. some of the issues that were very key. You're not that old, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> some of the very key issues that defined him, particularly when people talk about the 80s and the 90s. Obviously, we were not there, but obviously you, uh, as a student, would learn about this. Uh, you would interact, and then you would inter interrogate some of those things. Mm. So my interaction, in fact, one of the memorable ones that I remember when the IFP was launching its um, election in 2019. So I, I, I came to cover that uh, event. So he had invited, uh, talking about what we were speaking about, his uh, global friends, the king of Kong. Um, and then he called me and then he said, um, because of the nature of the job you do, uh, of covering you know, the presidents all over, he said, this is your king because time and again you are in Congo, so this is the king. So that is the lighter side to him. But of course, um, very, very sharp-witted, very knowledgeable. So one thing that you needed to do if you were to have an interview with him, that subject matter you needed to do your thorough research because he had, um, he had memory, they say memory of an elephant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you speak about something that you are not sure about, he'll just take you back yeah. and then you'll be thrown completely off. Your line of questioning. So that's, that's, that's one thing I learned from him. Yeah. It, it takes me back to a story, a funny story that he was gracious as well. Uh, I remember, I think it was back in 2014 where we had an interview with him. And it was a hard interview, um, talking about the violence in the 80s and 90s. So it was no sweetheart questions that I had to pose to him. Uh, the interview lasted about half an hour technician then runs in and says you know what we didn't record he looks at me and that's he says, a journalist was more right I, I wish the you know the earth would split and then they you know i fall in um and then i look at him and i said uh prince would you be so gracious as to do it again i know you know we did it for half an hour now and he says let's do it so it just showed you you know the interview was difficult but he, he was completely gracious and completely humble enough to sit with me for another half an hour and do it all again. It talks to his personality.
It really does, Blaine. And also just watching those visuals, uh, Naren Singh. Yes. Um, with uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa as well. And, and, and Mzwai, listening to what you and Blaine are sharing, and, and, and of course I would have interviewed him a number of times when you know the IFP would be campaigning for elections. Mm. Earlier on we had a conversation with um, uh, 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 Blessed Kuala, mm. Mr. Blessed Kuala. And he was saying, for him, this also becomes a difficult part for the party, but at the same time, as they look ahead to the 2024 elections, they need to make sure that they get everything right. Yeah. It is a big opportunity for them, um, a defining moment in fact. Um, I was in speaking to a number of them. I actually said, um, All right, so I, I think, so I, let's just listen. We're seeing um, Amabuto are coming in. We can also hear in your so let's listen in. Oh, what's that? 
and someone who was not far from them. And maybe Kuluma, Bakuluma ngayu mtu wanaka pinda ngele, besho nje lukulu ngayu. Absolutely, ebongewe. 
njoba besishini ukuthi nakuba um udoctor Ptelis e usuzo politik e politician kutoa ke ube ngundu na kuluga zulu futi ke ebe inkose ya Ptelis inga koke ubona kukona amabuto ubona ezi nyosi okusho kona ukuthi babuela emumba la asuka kona ega kuluga zulu Odabeni lugoti mubani, mwa pela, amasiko uyaz lisisi zoge si akubega na, kutoa njobu sushi lo, agutrine la po mugoti ebe mundo hule abantu benda bogo kupela, he is a politician, that's why you see a number of political parties, I mean we have seen leader of the DA, the leader of the EFF, the leader of CO. Uh, of course, IFP, they are the main ones. And then, of course, I saw also, also the Secretary General of the ANC, Figile Mbalola, representing the ANC. Remember, the President is here as head of state, as he had declared this funeral, special uh, official funeral category one. So that, that, that tells you. So it is multifaceted. So it's got so many elements, political elements, religious elements, and of course, um, is into the scene to Jobas Bona, Amaboto, uh, Nabantu Bekumbisa, Ukjabula, Iga Kurazi, Numparat, a community, like a Kulelegu. Yeah. Multifaceted, like his legacy as well, isn't it? Uh, freedom, as they say, is not free. It takes blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, realism is important. Context is important. It allows us to process what was and what is. Uh, we've heard Prince Butelezi speaking on his legacy, saying that he wanted to be remembered as serving the whole country, all races. But I guess it'll be up to people who are watching here, the people in the stadium as well, to decide for themselves what his passing means for them, for their families, for their communities. Um, how, what, what sort of sentiment are you hearing on the ground, Mzwai, when yeah. you go through, throughout the country, uh, hearing about the legacy of that office? Prince Butelezi. We will answer that in a short while. Let's just listen in. As we take in the sights and sounds of a special official funeral category one, Mzombele Mbeche is our political editor at the ASABC. Just talking to him about the sentiment he was uh, hearing uh, for the past week or so with regards to the legacy of Prince Lesi. You know, Blaine, um, obviously from these um, areas, from where we are, from those who have always followed him, who have always supported him, um, from his political party, so they speak of a man who they are, they have looked up to. And then you take it a step further to his political opponents, those he has barred over with for so many times. They speak of a man who sticks to his principles, but of course of a man who perhaps uh, could have done things much differently because uh, if you jot your history back, so there will be so many other issues that uh, will not, that people will not agree on. And then you speak of someone who was a traditional leader. Because of his busy schedule, he was not even uh, in that in, in, in that 
space. Yeah. So he appointed a regent to focus on his other work. So it really depends uh, in terms of uh, the people you interact with and, and the facets of life that he journeyed through. That's where you'll get um, uh, 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 your answers. So from the political perspective, Blaine, it's very contested. In fact, even, even in politics, what you can do in his later years, he was an elder statesman. In the 80s and 90s, very controversial part. In the beginning, very, very part and aligned to what the governing party is. And I want us to talk about the choice of songs in just a moment that we also have been hearing here as some of the people have been coming through. But of course, as you know, Blaine said a little earlier on, we've got reporters deployed to various parts of this particular stadium. And one of them is Natasha Piri, who is standing by with the guest, Natasha. Thank you so much, uh, Bongi. We are now joined by uh, the National Secretary of the IFP's Youth Brigade, uh, Mr. Uh, so And of course, he's also uh, a counselor in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, Mr. Mabaso, thank you so much uh, for joining us on SABC News. I mean, as a young person, as, as a National Secretary of the IFP's Youth Brigade, what values have you learned uh, from Umtana Dangen? Well, uh, let me first appreciate the nation uh, for how they have responded. Uh, what you see here is a reflection of his uh, hard work. Uh, people are here to pay their last respect because of the kind of a leader he was. And that's one of the things we learned from Umtuana, that he was leading people. He was not away from the people. He was with the people. He was on the ground with the people. I mean, he never moved out of Matabatine, and that's why we are at Ulundi, you know, at a regional stadium, because that's the kind of the man he was and we really appreciate you know all the services that he, uh, you know he provided for the people of this country we appreciate you know the hard work uh, you know that he did for the people of this country and we we have learned you know that when you are a leader and when you are elected uh, you know to lead people you know you must you must you must be with them on the ground you must you must stay with them and you must understand the, the you know the challenges that they face on daily basis so that you are able to respond directly to the issues that people are facing. His passing comes at a critical time for the party. Um, the party is gearing up uh, for next year's elections. We heard uh, your president giving a clarion call at the memorial service saying that, uh, you know, the party needs to grow in his memory. How will you ensure that you, you fulfill his wishes? Well, we need to carry his legacy forward. Uh, I mean, we need to consolidate these numbers that you see. We need, we need to consolidate them because we, we cannot fail. Um, I mean, he worked hard to establish this organization. You know uh, how he vilified uh, for this organization. You know how he was attacked for this organization. So we need to make sure that we protect this organization, we grow this organization, we consolidate these numbers, you know, we expand, you know, even to other provinces where we are non-existent so that his organization grow beyond to what it is right now. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Mabal, so uh, the National Secretary of the IFP's Youth Brigade. Uh, we now know that uh, mortal remains. Fulano, 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 Fulano,
Mabise, Savono Bianconza, Sesto Tabatu, Yemu Babi Clena, Jemoto, Yon Pila, Yemek, Umem Shula, Obeshan Yati, Yemara Sondaba, Shan Shan Sonalisa. The service booklet we have with us, the service starts on page three of our service booklets. Therefore, we will request that we all take our seats so that we allow the service to begin, which is led by the Archbishop of Cape Town, the Most Reverend Dr. Tabo Mahoba. If we can take our seats, please. Can the media please give us space as we begin the service? On page three of our service books, hymn 184, Sheshani Neza Ninabagwan.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Kulunkulu Somanja, Baba was a Zulini, Sivuma, Sizesola, Guba, Sgonile, Senegala, Logutabana, no Kuluma, no Gwenza, no Kuta, Sitatele de Bonke, Ule. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and give you, keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ died and rose again for our salvation. We entrust to you the soul of your servant Mangosutu Gacha, praying that he and all the faithful departed be revealed as your children when Christ shall come again, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who then is against us? He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give everything else? Who will bring any charge against God, God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn, it is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, yes, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ, will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed for all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.
of the white church community, church community in South Africa also. However, However a moment, moment such as this in the life of a nation, nation, the definition of family cast a very wide net, net including, including the royal family of Amazon, so faithfully served by Udonu Kapitan, his colleagues, his political party, and great members of his supporters across the country. To all of you, our deepest condolences. I count it a privilege to have been asked to preach today. That is firstly because it speaks to the long relationship between the Zulu nation and the Anglican Church His daughters who defended the Zulu monarchy in the face of British aggression and the harassment of their majesties and Tenizulu Secondly, it is a privilege because Prince Mutelezi reigns alongside O. Tambo and Alan Payton as one, one of the most, most prominent lay Anglicans of the last century. century. A devout member of the Church Order of Samuel Oxarini and a confidant of bishops since the time of Archbishop Joseph de Blanc 60 years ago. The Requiem Mass we are holding today, the hymns he chose and a form of service similar to that of his beloved wife, Irene, reflects specific wishes conveyed during pastoral visit I made to him in the last years and months of his life. At the time of someone's death, the church's, church's task is to provide comfort, to accompany those in mourning, and to remind ourselves of the truth of the resurrection life. There is an ancient prayer that seems to speak into this moment, which says, May the sweet light of change shine in the darkness. May the first breath of each morning begin life again. May the memories and full as a prayer of life, may the love continue to fill the silence. When I heard of Dr. Hanna's death, 
I could not help but think of those poignant words of Shakespeare in his play, Hamlet. As Horatio gazed on the body of the dying Prince of Denmark, he uttered that magnificent final benediction. Good night, good friends, and the lights of angels sing to you your rest. It came to me, no doubt, because the play and the life we commemorate today are both stories of princes, public figures in whose hands the destiny of many lay. But I thought of those words also for us in a curious way. Shakespeare also knew well the story of fame that belongs to that last moment of life. A story of grace and the abiding fact that by the end of the day, all of us, whether we are saved or sinner, prince or pauper, surrender ourselves into the hands of God. And all of us, the song of faith will carry us to our earth. In such a moment, it is the churches of our ministry to carry out one of the great works of and that it is to bury the dead. Much has been said about our prison over the last few years. Much more remains to be said, and this is a great contrast in some things and parts. For those who are the leaders of the church, those judgments will, will be bodies, harsh, as well as instrumentally. But, but there will, will also, also be, be a, 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 a testimony of one who was not a baby in me, and not and too timid to love. Yeah. Preaching at the funeral of his majesty in the world of the new God I said that he was truly a sequential way, and that as a result, the whole of the new monarchy on our collective imagination is as strong as ever was. This is the most of our to the efforts of bringing the legend, who like the Hanayah in the Old Testament, work to rebuild the walls of the old Zulu kingdom. In that way, I hope that the royal family can overcome current differences in such a way as to retain the respect which it held. In the end, I and our church are among those who have believed that the 1990s, Umbrahma decided that we saw his future and the future of our world as the part of the wide world of the nation. When I visited here in Moscow two weeks ago, I expressed our appreciation for a role he has played in other elements in recent years. I told him that at the time when some of our politicians were We can, through dialogue and debate, inculcate the values of our collective life that peace is better than war, that ultimately, no matter the suffering of the past, we have to learn to live together, and that our wounds will thus heal. Let me return to 
the story of Lazarus that we heard in today's reading from John's Gospel. A story that helped bring comfort to those who grieve, particularly the Bucheleti family. There is something wonderful about Jesus coming to Lazarus' family and entering into his sister's grief. Not when he is first called, but at the time he knows to be best for them. When he knows their pain is deeper. Even when we feel that Jesus has not heard our cry, even when we fear that he might never come into the village of our heartbreak, the deep truth is that Jesus will come. He will walk the rest of the journey with us. And amazingly, this Jesus who comes to the Son, who feeds the multitude, and heals the lemon will also cry with us. For the story says very powerfully, Jesus wept. We will never, never grieve, nor watch, nor weep alone. It is interesting, and we must draw comfort from this, that Jesus goes to the tomb Indeed, we can say more accurately, Jesus confronts the tomb. Jesus will not allow a place that he is incapable of sustaining life any chance to have the last way. He will not allow places that short circuit potential, that inhibit possibilities or that diminish peace to overcome. The tomb, despite its reputation for finality, cannot hold us captive or those we love. Life is changed at the tomb. It is never ended. And so Schengen, we, and so Schengen will not be dead in the greater sense. He will continue to live every time we confront tombs that diminish peace or possibilities or potential. Every time we stand up against hunger and corruption and theft from the poor. Every time we dare to hope for a better world and a more just country then we will have rolled the soul away. Every time we stand resolutely against the scourge of violence against women and children and the reign of gangsterism in so many townships, we will have rolled the soul away and allowed hope to feel the air, allowed dreams to be realized and the dead to be honored. We will remember the best, we will honor him most sincerely if we roll stones away, if we give time to reflect on how his life challenges us to be more humane. Ours is a very difficult time in South Africa and beyond. So much in our public life is toxic, our better selves seem to be hidden in some tombs. We need a new generation of women and men who will hear the call of Jesus to roll stones away and unbind that which destroys life. We need people who will put up their hands and say, thus far and no further to the multiple cultures of death. We need people who will ensure that they do not succumb to either fear or resignation in an hour that so cries out for courage. When we take all of this together, St. Paul was quite right when he said, we do not mourn like those who have no hope. 
It is a little wonder that Madiba had this to say of people who embrace life and serve others. He said, death is something inevitable. When a person has done what they consider their duty to their people and their country, they can rest in peace. So we give Schengen leave to go, to enter his rest, and for eternity to hold us close to his heart. We hear the words of Revelation, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of glory. May the prince's death inspire a generation who will usher a true African renaissance. Then indeed, he will be able to rest in peace to rest where Lazarus is poor no more, in that holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May Schengen's soul rest in peace and rise in glory. And to his family, we say condolences. Amen.
O Cristo, o Encosse, se fizava a Zaluane, o Zogalisa, o Tandului, o Guine, o Jangobani, o Gaganje, o Nashama, o Estanda, o Gutigon, o Gutisguenzaio, Gutwa ngenga yesikati bazalwane Kuya utuma gulunga lapa emsam Asizu kwa zugu sonde la zonke Jenguba ninga ganji bazalwane Gutwa kuyo sonde la umdini Gashenge Ebese kusonde la nabifundisi Ebe se simala poba fwe tu abanga tulanga namshange ukona na se inkonzwe ni kusa sa uguze linkonzo yeti hambiga ate ninga chuguteli siya mugeli sageba zalwane o soba baba ya ugu mugeli sa umdeli besuga la pa beholwa. Umfunde so innocent mbata Oya uba kumbisa la pabea kona Ebe seguti nga pa nga kubefunde sabagile ili atende Sia ukela ubabu ashtigin usulu Eno baba upegzenzo mkwanazi Basiza neba sondele nga liana No baba u ashtigin kaba Basonde lena ye nga setende ni esizana No letu andu andu No ba no ashtigini no cha 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 bini Esizana no bo no no Bo mani mshongo No ashtigini Andreas Mazibogo Esizana no baba umdaweni Bo ngela mbaba le Bless the you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in him. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin to death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now we give you thanks because within the royal priesthood of your church, you ordain ministers to proclaim the word of God, to care for your people, to equip them for the work of ministry, and to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant. 
with all creation we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, us and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Ngakoke sekumbula ufa nukvuga wake. Sinigela pamwa kule sisingwa na le sisicha. Sikbonga ngoba usenze safani le gukuma pamwa kuo sikonze. Siyabunge ngoba utumelu moya kongwe le pezwa lom nigelwe banzala kuo elngwele. Baslanga nse babe munye bonga baslanga nyela kulemfisa Ukeni se ukolo luabo ekensweni. Uguze se kutumi se se kazi muli se ngendegu yako u Jesu Christu. Lungo kwa kwa utumi kwa nukushonyi shwa yi se nondotanyi. Ukanya no moyo wi ngwele. Ebanda ni lakwe li ngwele. Manje nangana pagate to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Thailand with the show. Let us pray. Give rest to Christ, your servant, with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator of all. And we are mortal from of the earth, and to death we shall return. As you ordained when you created us, say, Dust you are, to dust you shall return. We all go down to the dust, and weeping at the grave, we make our song. Alleluia, Alleluia. Mango Sutu Gacha. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you have eternal rest.
thanks to the Lord for the Lord is gracious. So go into the world in peace, be of good courage, fight the good fight of faith that you may finish your course with joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and reign with you always. Amen. Archbishop was a Cape Town Ngogusolela in Konzo Si Kubega Nothelo Olfishane Luin Kulumo Umsonishwa Mengameli Wezwe Umsonishwa Uramaposa Umsonishwa Oeng Mengameli Umsonishwa Utabum Begi Umsonishwa Oeng Omeli Umsonishwa Motlante Umsoneshwa yangu mungameli, umsoneshwa uJacob Zuma, abantu ana abasenzi mkulu, abasoneshwa bonge abakona, amakosi asenzi mkulu, mungameli weke mbole IFP, umsoneshwa usabesa, na bahuli bonge abakona, uleli tuba sitela inkosi asema shaizeni. Inkosi pepe biela ugobe ibe na mazwi e kameni la makos nda bezita. Ya togoza shenga mpati wa selo. Oso kaya wa se zulu lendi. Shenga. Uso baba umpishopi oz patele lo mtimbi Uashpisho wanyina bobonka banye abapishopi Abezu lenkosi abakona bonke Mshonishwa mengameli wezwe Abashonishwa ebebe u mengameli Bonke abakona pagati wetu Amalungu e kapineti gazwe lonke Mshoni shwa undu nangulu esfundazwe ni kapineti yake Mtuwana untutuwe yezwe na bubonka bantuwana baga pindangene Bantuwana basi njungulu, njungulu wa mazinyane silo Amakosi ya wazulu Na uonga makosa akona Amalume palamende Ligazwe lonke na weifundazwe Ome na makanze lava kona Iba mkosi le sizwe sagabtelezi Ne sizwe sonke sagabtelezi Zikule kamga enda wene za shugene Mshoni isho ubula wayo umengamelu eke mbulenka ata yengulego Nubholi beke mbulenka ata na Na malu ngalo na mabuto isizwe no mpagati Shenge mpato oselo Kukona bantu oguti no masebe kule ngogwa nele Ogutimabe zule mshabe ni benzi mkwa mge luguti Bahambe nge skate sifane leyo Loko kutalo aguti msebe nza basu webe tuwaliswe yona Ingezi ya linga niswe ni abanye Ngugu njalo Nobushaka nbabo obusu webu ingezi vele Mtu anoga pindange nungo mwenye walolo nshobo la bantu Obelu hive la ganane Sizombe ga enzi ni akio kina na msanje Asika vina hazi impendu lozo guti Ihibe ezi kolo zelene no mbuso mkosi mga zulu No mshaba uesizwe Ziyoso njululu wa ubani 
umtwana bene khona lokwenza izinto ube wenza ngokuwinikela nabo bunono nokuqoda umsebenzi wakhe umtwana usifundise ukusebenza ngokwethembeka ukuzimela nangokuzethemba ube nesibindi futhi ekumela lokha kholelwa kukho engenandaba noma ngabe maye kusho ubani okumthinta kabhlungu ube khuluma umqondo wakhe elimele iqiniso ngaso sonke isikhathi noma ngabe kukuphi lapho ekhuluma khona ube mnene umntwana kodwa futhi nola kalukho na uma kukho nokungayi ngandlela ube ngezwani nenkohlakalo ungakho nje nangesikhathi sekoqwa imbuso leyayikhona yama homelands kwaba uye kuphela owakwazi ukudlulisela kuhulumeni wentandweni amafa esizwe neimali zesizwe njengoba nomengameli owayekhona ngaleso sikhathi wakusho kangabhloni ukuthi uye kuphela okwaze ukuba aphathe imali zabantu namafa esizwe benga namahloni futhi engazenye zingokuba umzulu ozalwe waphila ezweni kazi lase Afrika siyesibezwa abanye bethi hayi ukuqamisa ubuzwe ma uzisho ukuthi ngi umzulu silanje na sihlanga ezahlukeneyo akufanele ukuba sibe namahloni ngokuthi singubani umkhosi bebusenhlizweni yakho umntwana kungaleso zathu ezisebenzele ngokuyikhandla elwela ukuba mshoni pheke buthuthukiswe buvikelwe nangokomthetho sekelo ngeke ngisho ukuthi kwenze kanye ngoba isikhathi sifishane kodwa imsebenzi yomntwana ihlala ikhulunywa washo naye wathi imsebenzi yakhe iyo eyosala izikhulumela thina nje amakhosi mina nje ngenkosi ngange nesikhundla ezokuqozi bahle emahla ezweni one 1978 ngangisebenzela phansi kwesihlahla esasebenzela uba bamkhulu inkosi manyala kamthiyaqo Uyo wakala ukuba akhe inkantolo zamakhosi ukuze akwazi ukusebenzela endaweni ehlonphekileyo sasinganakiwe uhulumeni wangaliso sikhathi Igodlo lezinza komkhulu uye ozakhile wazakha wayithuthukisa ngoba indlunkulu kuye ibise enhle yeni yakhe njengengane yakhona esilo lesi sethu ese 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 esihambile ngange nami nebkhosini seyu paramount chief washa umthetho ukuhulumeni wakwaZulu wathi asinatho asinabo dino bkhosi obama paramount chief zinobkhosi bokhing isilo sethu sahambi ukhini njoba nezana mhlanje siukhini kungenxa yakhe ngena mina esikhundleni ngiuchief kodwa wathi lokhu akuyikho uhloni pheka kwamakhosi washa umthetho kuthi amakhosi la ngoba angaphansi kwenkosi yamakhosi ongangezwe la amaguke sizwe siyazi ukuthi ube wamele wakhonze kanga kanani umhlaba nobukhosi ube bukhonzile besebenzela ingwavuma nje lena yayi sithathwa uhulumeni wabelungu eisa eswazini 
ngoba echezisel ukuthi wenqabe indiphethe kwimelegeqe na nengxenye yasempumalanga okwakuyigangwane iholwa umuntu umzana inosimabuza wayememeza yedwa umntwana bekhona baholi abangaphakathi kwezwe nangaphandle akekho wakho wathi hayi noma besihlukene ngokwepolitiki sesi yafake manje ngoba kuthathwa lomhlabe siwulwelayo waye ehlenyuka namakhosi ehlenyuka neqembu lakhe ehlenyuka nalabo abantu ababe ibona imisebenzi yakhe eyisebenzelisizwe sasiqiqe ngwavuma siqiqale kangwane e e enikeze uholo nakhona ngobe ethi lelizwe naseningizimu Afrika akunakudayiswa ngalo esaphila waze wanqoba ebhlumfantini ngila kwakuyinkantolo enkulu khona ngakho ke kuningi umtabe ngakusho ngomntwana izakhiwo omathala bank ezemvet izakhiwo ezayiqasha abantu sithi esilweni sethu asilale ngenxeba sekufanele ukuba naso manje sibuke umthwalo usuthwele ungakanani siyakhuleka kwaba sedinkulu ukuthi abasikhulekele konga ngezwe lakhe sikwazi ukusondela esilweni ukuze senze umsebenzi nendlunkulu sengathi ngakhona ukusondelana kuphele lokho kuyizialuyalu ukuze nathi njengeyinsika zezwe siwenze umsebenzi wethu ngokukhululeka emakhosini awame ngandawonye umntwana usifundise ilindlela nesilo sashiyana umlayo ezothi hlangana mhlathu waza nayo sasikhumbuza ukuthi zizalo ubani ebulawayo noholo na iqembu lomntwana lingumqando wokuhamba wakhe mhlabe liphenduke libe inkomo yokumganda nalo lifhe nikhona sithi mbini wakwashene siyabonga umntwana untuthuko nenganzo umntwana ukuziphathela kahle umntwana noma undlunkulu esehambile akabonakalanga ngombali ukuthi undlunkulu sehambile au uzula kase kuphinda fane lala kahle esihlenge siyokukhumbula mntwana enkulu sithokoza kakhulu ekosini yasemahlayizeni sibe sicela umengameli we IFP umhloneshwa uVF hlabisa indodana yendoda ongayethemba indodana imbabazane maqa eyadoda zokwathi ngabulele ukuthonga khuluma bulawayo ingane zomntwana zilalele bulawayo long live spirit of mtwana kaphinda ngene long live long live the spirit of ushenge long live mpathi wohlelo his excellency the president of the republic of south africa the honorable mr cyril ramaphosa his majesty the king lesuzulu singobile kanzwilthini the king of the zulu nation in absentia members of the butelezi family and the zulu royal family the most reverend dr tabo mahoba the Archbishop of Cape Town, their majesties, the visiting kings and queens of various nations, heads of state and former heads of state, members of the Butelezi clan, Amakosi, Izinduna, ministers, deputy ministers, leaders of government at all level the leadership of Inkata freedom party the leaders of all political organizations present today members of the royal welsh regiment 
members of the diplomatic corps and international guests, members of the Zulu nation, and all who are grieving with us in spirit. Today is a sad day as we bow our heads and say fare thee well to Shenge. The task of conveying the IFP's gratitude and love for Umtuanoga Pindangene as he is laid to rest is quite overwhelming. There are no words to express what is in our hearts as IFP leaders, members, and supporters. There is tremendous pain and an ocean of sorrow for we have lost our father, our master, our hero, our mentor, our leader, and the giant of Africa. But beyond all our grief is the quiet foundation of strength that he gave to us. In this terrible moment, we stand on that strength yet again, so that we will be able to do what is required of us. Our duty today, despite our pain, is to bid farewell to Umtuanoga Pindangene in a manner befitting what he meant to us. On behalf of the IFP, the party that the Prince of Wapindangene founded and served for 48 years, express our condolences to the Honorable Princess Pumzile Nupiwa, His Royal Highness Prince Ntutuwe Zuzifa, the Honorable Princess Angela Smuiselwe and the entire Butelezi family. I also offer our deepest sympathy to His Majesty the King and to the royal family, to the Butelezi clan, Amakosi of the Zulu nation and the entire nation of South Africa. We recognize that Umtwana belonged to you. It only seemed that he belonged to everyone, for he saved this country that he loved so much with a spirit of humanity and common touch. He was a genuine friend to anyone who sought his friendship and a rare quality in a politician. He never asked what, asked what is in it for me, but he always asked, what can I do for you? It is not surprising then that so many feel they have a claim on Prince Butelezi for he touched lives in a very unique way. The IFP undoubtedly laid the greatest claim. We demanded the lion's share of Umtwana even when he was serving as a South Africa's Minister of Home Affairs, even when he was acting President of the Republic, even when he was fulfilling his duty as a traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarch and nation, and when he was serving the Butelezi clan, and when he was engaged in the work of conservation, education, and community empowerment. To us, he was still, first and foremost, the IFP's greatest treasure our most formidable weapon and our guiding light. We were enormously proud of the work he did 
and more so of the quality of his character, his integrity, and immovable principles blessed us with a sense of stability. We always knew that Umtwana will do the right thing and would lead us to the right path. We safely trusted his judgment and it never failed. My personal story of being mentored by this remarkable leader is likely similar to the stories of many. Prince Vitalism was able to look into the soul of ordinary people and call forth the greatness within. He treated us as the leaders he believed we could be and walked with us until we became those leaders. No wonder so many people from such diverse backgrounds abandoned their own paths and hitched their way on to the star of Prince Butelezi. When he founded Inka Tenkulewe Sizwe on the 21st, March of, 21st of March 1975, Prince Butelezi was acting on the advice of President Kenneth Kaunda and the leaders of the frontline states with the approval of Mr. Oliver Tambo. Inkata was intended to reignite political mobilization towards liberation upon our own soil. Despite being closely watched and often harassed by the apartheid regime, Prince Mutelezi was never afraid to declare that Inkata sought South Africa's freedom from political oppression and social injustice. He instilled in Inkata the values of integrity, discipline, and servant leadership. He taught us the importance of self-help and self-reliance. He showed us how to empower the vulnerable, how to honor women, and how to treat everyone with dignity. Inkata was a democratic organization from the start for the Prince of Kwapindangene believed in collective wisdom and seeking consensus. He believed in inclusive participation and giving everyone a stake in the outcome. Throughout Inkata, he brought real change to the lives of our people who were not only oppressed, but neglected and living in poverty. Through his leadership, he built more than 6,000 classrooms. He built clinics. He built townships. A practical example, Ulundi Township, which was a forest before he ascended to the throne. He built hospitals. He built many training colleges, including the Mangosutu University of Technology, which he built with the assistance of the Oppenheimer family and the Anglo-American. He established Itala Bank to champion the local economic development. He built factories and industries, creating jobs, which he protected when he refused to support this investment. Under his leadership, families could put food on the table. Children were educated and got jobs after graduation, unlike what we see today. The youth were trained with vocational skills, and women were honored as the backbone of our society. 
at all this he accomplished for our people under the iron fist of the apartheid. We have never needed a champion more than in the chapter of our country's history and Prince Tezi became our champion. We in Inkata learned a great deal from his leadership. The greatest lesson was perhaps the hardest, the lesson to forgive. I've never met a man with such an enormous capacity to forgive, and I doubt I will ever meet another one. He was simply extraordinary. He faced the immense pain of being unjustly vilified by the very leaders whose mandate he was acting, yet he refused to abandon the mandate. He forgave again and again, trusting in the Lord's guidance and constant protection. When the black-on-black -black violence of our people occurred and claimed innocent lives, he kept a level head and constantly urged him against retaliation. I remember him saying, I quote, I was opposed to the armed struggle, not because I did not experience the burning pent up frustration, but because I knew it would only reduce our country to a human wasteland. Close quote. The loss of life on all sides struck a deep wound in his heart. And long after liberation, he still worried about the many other wounded hearts in our nation. He sought reconciliation with the ANC right to the end of his days. He made his pleas again again that the issue of reconciliation be finalized. As the president of the IFP, I want to place on record that we will strive to ensure that the IFP remains a strong force to be reckoned with to rebuild our country as we move forward as the nation of South Africa. From a political point of view, it will be amiss of me not to thank the President of the Republic accordingly Honorable Ramaphosa for according Prince Mangosu to level one special state funeral. Though I want to thank you, Honorable President Ramaphosa, for not using your political spectacles, but honored accordingly the great son of Africa. I also want to thank the excellencies, Honorable Mpegi, Honorable Mushante, Honorable Zuma, and Honorable Obasanjo. You know the journey you traveled with the Prince of Wapindangene. Your presence to honor him speaks volumes. I also offer the profound gratitude on behalf of the IFP to leaders Honorable Malema, Honorable Stian Eisen, General Holomisa, Honorable Musmaimane, and your delegation for the time you take to come and honor Umtoano Wapindangene. Sempeta Mpatu Oshelo, Namshanje Sonke, Sikebisa Amakanda A2, Ushnipa, Ugujula Mshabeni, Gomtuano Wapindangene, Sonke, Sishonga Zulinye, Ugut Uile, Umutum Kulu, Iwile, 
insizwa yase Afrika egameni lequmbu lenkatha enkululeko ngikhalela isilo samabandla isizwe sakwabuthelezi umndeni wakwabuthelezi neningizimu ne Afrika yonke mangikhalela isilo samabandla silo esikhulu insika yakho nodondolo obudondolozele ngalo namhla lwephukile noma sishayekile sikhala izinyembezi inhli ziyo zethu zifana nezophayo siyabonga kumdali ngokuseboleka isidalwa sakhe esingumntwana waphinda ngene ebe sineyiphiwo eyimangalisayo hamba kahle shenge hamba kahle ndoda ayethemba hamba kahle mabhanga walingani nabofokazana hamba kahle indigidi hamba kahle khawe lamaqhawe khawe lase Africa uyibekile induke ebandla imsebenzi yakho iyosala ikufakazela lala ngokuthula uphumule sondiya ngiyabonga mphathi wohlelo viva afp viva viva afp viva iya pindlo iya pindlo iyo kwenzani uye kwenzani Ushe ngusi hole kwaze kwabala Ushe ngusi hole Tina si mete Ushe ngusi hole Ushe ngusi hole Ushe abantu isiphe umuntu owodwa abazukulu beseza ngaphambili ukuze sikwazi ukonga isikhathi over to you kwasiza abantu
To say I can't believe I'm standing here in front of you to say goodbye to my first love is an extreme understatement. Somehow it all still feels like a dream. To many he was Umduan, but to me he was my grandfather who never forgot to give me a double cheek kiss and a little hug. Umduana was the epitome of respect, love, loyalty, kindness, and Ubuuntu, while always choosing to see the best in people, no matter the circumstances. My grandfather taught me selflessness and how to think about others before myself and to always stand for the truth, even if it makes you unpopular. I would not be the young woman I am today without him and his influence. I have never known a world without him and his void will never be filled in my heart and my soul. To my mom, aka Nana Gamasoso, thank you for loving my grandfather as much as you did. You looked after him, cared for him, protected him with everything you had. Thank you for keeping your promise to Edom Kool that you would look after him and make sure he never lacked or needed for anything at any time. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 says, Honor your mother and father so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And you taught me that repeatedly through your actions and love for Umduan. I know you've lost both your best friends I can, and I can never take away the pain of losing both your parents, but I promise you to be your shield, your shoulder to cry on, your strength, your hope, and most importantly, your daughter. You and I and our family will continue Umdana's legacy through the strength of our faith in God. And now, it is time for me to say my final goodbye to my hero.
system. And you found the Lagum Twana in Clonipo, Bezela, Nengonzo, Tetelel, Mutan Ube Sonipang show Ingan in man, even Natabaz Wool, Ube Sonip, Nishasim Cosamela, Uzo, Nessie, Sheng, Sheng, Nomasamba, Umutia, Messina, Ati Sheng, Salalan. Mtuana was like any other people that we know. We know. He, was, he, was, he, was he was one, one of the kind. kind. Ube no tando, no zuelo. Always man on his side. Mtuana, ube se tanda, na ti se tanda. Ngisho, ema tasa anga gana nge nga msebenzi. Kutu mtuana ube seze o shi skat so guzi. Azo sala na ti se nge mde nwake, nge nga bazu bulu. So Kumbula Leo Hakileo, no Mamesses Kabula La Pesha Tini, and sometimes the singer was the one with the Skulume, Messes Pretility, in Jabea can be Sabaganja, and then we we'll laugh. My grandfather, Ubene Kuniso, and Stella Futi Kunis, Elimela Ekunis Mutuan. Regardless of the situation that he was in, obeying to Odonga hit him. Sheng, Sogalis, Niatogos and Ogufundis, Ogwesaba, Ogunukulu, Nogus Sundays are good chase through your faith. Sheng, Siatogos and Gendela Oskulisengayo, Siatogos, Nakogongo, Wusha sends a lecon. Iloku, Ikolo, Makoan, Keloko, Sense, Lecon, Git Buis Bonelesi, Schenge, So Kumbula, Songe, So Kumbula Futi, So Says the Sibutanda, Obusu, Obusu, Esibuza, and Jamom Dane, Abkaze Inez, Abkaze. Jangom Den Wako. It is just a camp. Zipsungu, Kota, and Gangs and Kosa Ubonga, Ukunkulu, Gesipo, Asipeso, Nangobus, Busses, and Yagam Gaga Unat. Kubazal Betu, Mgan Pumzil, Mgan Mapigale, Mgan Sana, Gitty Pepisa, Nagin Bok, Bam, Nosis Bam, Gitty Pepisa, Nagwoka, and your Umun to Um, Um Tintilum Tana, Gempilo, Boka Bebeti Baba Guy. Nesizwa sonke no zulu wonke. Ogbanleki nje amanje singu mde nukuti sibamba ne sonke sipege kukunukuru sitebu chesu nga koko wonke ngoba uyena wonke one trebo nge impilo zetu. Shem! I stand before you today the member of a family in grief and a country in mourning we are all united not only in our desire to pay our respects to His Excellency, but, in, but rather in our need to do so. For such was His extraordinary appeal that the thousands of people taking part in this service via television, radio, and some who've never actually met him feel that they too lost someone close to them in the early hours of Saturday morning. It is a more remarkable tribute to Umduana that I can ever hope, hope, ever hope to offer him today. Prince Butelezi was the very essence of compassion, of spirituality, of style, of dedication. All over the world, he was a symbol of selfless humanity, a guardian of liberty, a very Zulu man who transcended nationality, someone with a natural nobility, who was classless and who proved over the years that he needed no royal title to continue to generate his particular kind of magic. Today is our chance to say thank you for the way you brightened our lives. Even though I spent the longest time with you, regardless of however long the time was spent with you, we will always feel cheated that you were taken. And yet we must learn to be grateful that you came along at all. We will always, only now that you're gone, do we truly appreciate what we are now without you. And we can only hope that
the line with Archer will be very difficult. We are called to spare our lives from the past week, and only the strength of the message you gave us through your years of giving has allowed us to continue to move forward. There is a temptation. There is a temptation to rush to immortalize your memory. There is no need to do so. You stand tall enough as a human of human qualities, not needing to be seen as a saint. I appreciated the call of your being, your wonderful sense of humor, with the laugh that bent you double. Your joyful life transmitted wherever you took your smile and the sparkle in your unforgettable eyes, your boundless energy which you could barely contain. But your greatest gift was your intuition. It was a gift you used wisely. This is what underpinned all your wonder, all your other wonderful attributes. And now we've come to another truth about you. For all the status, the fame, the applause, Umtona Rapindanga and it remained throughout a very insecure person at heart, almost childlike in his desire to do good for others. The world sensed this part of his character and cherished him for his vulnerability whilst admiring for him for his honesty. Shang. 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 Sogalisa. Sonborn and Nongkenya Bingalela. In memory of my dear grandfather, a prominent politician, a Zulu leader, a father, a grandfather, a great grandfather, I want to acknowledge the relationship we shared. As a young child, he provided for my needs and served as a significant influence on my knowledge of my culture and becoming the artist I am today, rapping in Zulu. I remember him singing with me in the car and also encouraging me on my path after I had established myself as a musician. He would say I had the gift of music and foresight like his mom, Princess Makoko. After I lost my mother and father, he and my grandmother played an important role in filling the void. Singing for Billy, mind you. But perhaps because I have experienced it first, I'll know how to be the family who now I let you hear what it feels like to be an orphan. Though time brought its share of differences, I appreciate the pivotal role he played in my life and the Zulu community at large. People, just like our bonds, are multifaceted and connections can be equally complex. I acknowledge the pain and hurt members of our community experienced during the turbulent years of the 80s, a period marked by violence and tragedy, my hope is that we can reflect on his legacy with a sense of nuance and understanding, acknowledging both the positive and challenging aspects of his life's work. I feel proud of the work he's done together with Nelson Mandela to liberate South Africa, bringing birth to a multicultural nation. Had their differences not been reconciled, we'd still be living in apartheid South Africa. In honoring his memory, I've committed to continuing my artistic journey, drawing inspiration from my Zulu heritage, while striving to create a positive impact in my own way. To my aunts and uncles, may you be blessed with the gift of unity. Unity is the only thing that will hold this family together. When I asked Mdwana as a young girl, what would you like to be written on your epitaph? He said to me, a man who lived by his convictions. Looking back now, I see why he said that. When a man is known to have no unsettled convictions of his own, he cannot convict other people. Ending this, I'd like to recite this poem. Don't stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I did not sleep. I am the thousand winds that blow. I am the glistening spark in the snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I'm the sunlight on ripened grain. When you awaken in the morning hush, I am that swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds 
in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. So don't stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Shang. Shang. So Galisa. His Excellency the President and all distinguished guests. Many of you will be familiar with the great entomologist and historian David Rattray. He was held in high regard the world over as he told the stories of the Anglo-Zulu War and our triumphs at Isandlwana with such beauty, dignity and respect. He was loved by our grandfather for his contribution to Zulu culture and its preservation. When Mr. Rattray, with Mr. Rattray's passing in 2007, our grandfather said, a spear had fallen in the Zulu nation. Umtuana always had a way with words. 16 years later, we echo them. A great tree has fallen in this proud Zulu nation. Umtuana loved his grandchildren beyond measure, and we loved him dearly too. He was a pillar not only of our family, but of the democratic dispensation we are all a part of today. Umtuana was a giver. That was his love language. He had an eye for gifts and was amazingly attuned to the taste of his loved ones. His grandchildren, in turn, were faced with the annual headache at Christmas time. What gift do you get for the man who has every possible thing? We soon learned, however, that more than any material thing, Umtuana valued time with his family. Nothing made him happier than to be with us, and of course to pass down his wisdom and knowledge at any given moment. We learned so much about the value of listening, patience, and respect, particularly for our elders and traditional customs, among other things. Renowned for his esteemed roles in so many different spaces, of equal renown was his sense of humor. In my teen years, when I would visit Kwapinangen, he would often say, over there, you are being rude with this height of yours, grandson. That became the running joke every time I came home. In the past few days, it has been fitting that the prevailing memory I've had is of Mtwana laughing. Anyone close to him knows that boisterous, unmistakable laugh. You know when someone is laughing from the pit of their stomach with such joy. And there are many enduring images of him laughing this way, further proof of his love and warmth. That is a side of many of us were privileged to enjoy. And it is how most South Africans will remember him. I do not care to explore the all too together different image that a few people have cultivated about our grandfather. Enough has been said this past week to discredit their lives. Umtuana more than made his mark on our country and in politics through his tireless work in the public domain. As my father told the media this week, you can either perpetuate or destroy his legacy. But the truth remains, his legacy is the impact he had on people's lives. No attempt to discredit his work ever deterred him from his goal, which he pursued in tandem with other politicians, many of whom who are here today. The goal was always a free, fairly run, democratic South Africa. We as a family choose to remember him this way. As a fearless political leader who was never afraid to go against the grain for the sake of serving millions of black South Africans at a time when hope was at an all-time low. As our regal prime minister of the Zulu nation, Kosi of the Butelezi clan, and last but not least, as our grandfather, father, and anchor of the family. Shenge, we salute you, we will always love you, and we will continue to keep your legacy enduring forever. May your soul rest in eternal peace. Shang! 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 Thank you very much to that moving tribute by the grandchildren. And as they walk down, we agree with the American playwright Thornton Wilder that the highest tribute to the departed is not grief, but gratitude. And we are all here summoned by grief but our hearts are full of gratitude. May I also acknowledge the family friends who are here, but most importantly, the King Mpezeni of Zambia. 
His Majesty who is here amongst us, the Mabonya family, the Oppenheimer family, and the Motsepe family. And at this point, may I invite His Excellency, the former President of Nigeria, Nesegun Obasanjo, to share his tribute in a few minutes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, <clears throat> the President of the Republic of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, other heads of government here present, my colleagues, former presidents, government officials, my lord, the archbishop, and my lord, spiritual. The family of Prince Butelesi. Let me take this moment to share a few words from the long tribute that I've written and sent the family. Soon after the creation of in Casa Freedom Party. Prince Butelesi was invited to Nigeria for us to have direct account of why and how. And he came and he briefed us. Well, what he said on that occasion still continues to ring in our minds. Today, we have lying in front of us a hero, a victor, a conqueror in the struggle and fight against human inhumanity against human. We are here not to mourn or to sorrow, but to celebrate a life dedicated to making other people's lives better and to, um, to making the place he found himself better than what that place was as he departs from the place. In 1986, as a member of the Commonwealth Eminent Persons Group, I visited South Africa and had the opportunity to meet with some of the key stakeholders 
in the struggle against apartheid. I visited President Mandela Bosma prison and I had a long discussion with him. We discussed many things, but one of the things I did ask about was Prince Butelezi. I said to Madiba, and I quote, when you leave prison, your problem will not be resolution of race differences alone, but also resolution of ethnic differences. And Nelson Mandela understood me perfectly. And he responded, and I quote, you are referring to Comrade Butelezi. He is a freedom fighter in his own right. The means are different, but the objectives are the same. End of quote. Despite the narrative surrounding Prince Butelezi at the time, Nelson Mandela knew who Prince Butelezi was and knew that at his core, when one looks at Prince Butelezi, one sees a committed fighter for greater freedom in South Africa. I learned a good lesson from that position of Madiba, and I reported it to Prince Butelezi. During the period that the IFP and ANC had their issues, Mandela never questioned the genuineness and the, and the authenticity of Butelezi as a committed freedom fighter. The fact that South Africa did not descend into a full-scale civil war during the 1990s is one of the true miracles of our time. Prince Butelezi must be commended for his resistance to escalating tensions with the ANC. Not only did Prince Butelezi balk at the thought of civil war, but he was more than ready to sit around the table and offer his wisdom for the establishment of a new South Africa. While being able to sit across the table, Prince Butelezi also exhibited a position of principles during the negotiations, which some might say were disruptive to the negotiations, while others will see it for what it was, a man dedicated to the people he, say he served. I talk, of course, of the prince's insistence on Isilo, the Zulu monarch, being part of the negotiation. During the negotiation, Prince Butelezi exhibited a capacity for compromise such as accepting that South Africa will not be a federal state, a federal state system in which provinces will hold greater power. However, on the issue of traditional leadership, Prince Butelezi took a principal stance. During the visit of Commonwealth Eminent Persons Group, to South Africa in 1986, I asked Prince Butelezi what was goading him on. Without hesitation, he replied, interest of all people of South Africa. I said, we are all with you. Taking a trip down memory lane was also his gracious acceptance to attend my 82nd birthday on March 5th, 2019 in Abeokuta, in Ogun State of Nigeria. 
On that occasion, he gave an inspiring lecture, which was laden with memorable narrations of how South Africa rose to freedom from apartheid and the roles of different actors in the emerging scenes, the reality of the blessing wondrously manifested when on March 5th, I saw him 90 years plus globally revered Zulu Prince standing by the podium with a farm gate and magisterial penetrating voice and the awe on the faces of the audience attentively listening to the hitherto unheard stories of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. I had my eyes glued to him throughout the lecture, my mind walking with him along the historical journeys he traced with excitement in my eyes and sprinkled of smiles for supporting the effort, especially of the Inkata Freedom Party, which he led, and the AMC in the struggle against apartheid. It was one of the best lectures I've ever listened to. And from the feedback from the audience, one of the most memorable. When I honored his invitation to deliver the keynote address at the occasion of the inaugural public lecture on the key aspects of Prince Butelese's legacy on, 4th, 20, on March 21, 2023, in Durban here, I did not know that that would be our last meeting. But I am delighted I spent good time with him on that occasion. Indeed, the death of a leader of Prince Butelese's stature is a big loss, not only to his immediate family and country, but to the whole of Africa, or if I may add, the whole of black race. He lives to work for dignity of unity, but particularly dignity of the black man. History will record his vital contribution to the realization of the dream of regional unity in Southern Africa. To learn more about his life is to learn more about strong moral leadership, commitment to principles, dedication to the people he served and led, and what it truly means to possess the traits of courage and bravery. Prince Butelese had the misfortune of being born during trying times, but the fortune to walk among giants and the ability to become one great giant himself. In this context, the Zulu nation, South Africa, and indeed the African continent as a whole must continue to honor and hold him in high regard despite the fact that he is, he is no more with us here on earth, but his legacy remains with us. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Iya Pindlov, Iya Pindlov, 
Iyo gwenta. Ya ta tinkata ya ta. Ya ta tinkata ya ta. Ya ta tinkata ya ta. Baku kabanye baku. Baku kabanye baku. Wa tinkata utago ini. Wa tinkata utago ini. Ube tago ini. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, President Obasanjo. As we welcome the families of our liberation giants, the Mandela family and the Lutuli family who are here to pay their last respects to this giant of Africa, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. Siotela Gegulele Kopelo, Engagasondele, Umtanenkosi, Umtuanuma Pigelela, Ugobastele, Umtuana Wa Fishing Wind. Umtuanu Filimon Gachelendo, Tagatim Zulu, Ugobe Abenem Zuzu, MB Le, Eka Menilin Zungulu, Ugote Abega Mazui, Dabezita. Hello. Oh, thank you. Ah, eh, niabonga shenge mpacho she. Aba party base lengos, aba pishopi. Ega tibe spati le umseve zangulungu. Kube woman o president was a South African. Number one, the woman got married. A big Baba Kona and Papa me. Never in the long time, Nga Hulme no mku. Angse zube loko unsuani sa iska sambi. Unduna kulo wesfunda zwe sagit. Number one, the cabinet yak. This is the Sawab Teles. Numdeni Umtuana. Ognabatuana Bake. Umtuana Mapigelela. Numtuana Pumzil. Numtuana Usbuise. Numdeni Wokenje Wawab Teles. Kube Umdeni was in Lukul. La Paz, Zalwa Kona, Mtoa. Eh. Bayaspa Zamisa Laba. Bayaspa Zamisa. Aganeshe Gele Zulu. Yila Malokshoni Palele. Niamazi umholi wenu Ugo tube holelo Bekholelo Elton Pei 
Estoni pafuti isizwe. Makuwele lusu. Mshonpeni. Mshonpeni umholiwe. Eh. Kalele umdeni wasenjukulu. Umtuanele ubezalwa enjungu. Ikembu lake. Alisung lake. Ikembulengat. Numholi ungocha. Nalolonke ibanja. Ebe lisebenzela umtuanu. Ogu. Zime. Ama kansel. Bonke laba. Ya bakale la wakul. Nkaleli sizwe sonke. Selem. Ngoba zulu. Ni atanda ngube lelu kumembaba. Siwelwe nsiga. Siwelwe nsiga yonkos. Ah. Nga kulunyi swanje kubushungu mza wa amilo. Ebe nchanda ukulu mangenga yukushungu benchizi. Ogu nye kukuzo saa. Nikale zonki nchaga abe sebenza nga zumtua. Lomholi ube nechoni ipo. Kalela ukosu bawazu. Ogwati unkulu unkulu wa hambela. E insigeni. E zaipetu ukosu. Ukosu nga kibushushwa nga mangisi. Amangisi afiga. Akujula zonki kulu. Agwabe kusaba ononga. Suga soli. Ogwati alama sebusa inkosi umkwalachu. Kwa tumakulumano wa salayo. Seiku jugile zonki kulu. Batibega tatile welung. Bayo mfise nyon. Ngobabe tika bafun babuse. Numkwalachu. Ngobuzo menza ikandilikuni. Jenge wii ite uinzu. Wahamba wa enyuru. La sale wa ela wazulu. Selena sena ye undu na kuru. Ogwati nko solomon. Wabona uguti. Ukosuba wazulu. Sebu menge nyingela. Abu wazuguma. Enge kundu na kuru. Wasanisa. Isabelo. So kosu. Wakuluma mwaguba abube hundu na kuhu. Kwa atuma ese kulmile wakaeta. Wabuyele eskotwe ni ngapavati. Eskotwe ni omba kachuhai. Lapava bafiga. Batika. Awazu po. Ukosi bupeto kwa mtelis. Malezo ezikati, umnyamane waise kujugile nai. Aba wabituwele zibema sae enjuku. Boto wa isikoto, safi ya isati solomon, agai wabituwele zi. Mwubuko sepeto wabituwele zi. Nempea wae watumela wamlandu mato. Nese fikilu matoto. Wafige wapata ngushara. Owenzu makulmane maese buyenyo. Efika ubukosi. Bupetwe nge slota. Bupetwe nge toni ipo. Waese kuluma nguhuti. Kutala nga shupe. Behamba bengshi. Bataran pile lava. Eshaba wabitele. Tati sopo. Usinigezu mato. 
Eshintombi yengo Uguzuna nkulu Oya uzalwa Abe ngozalwa la pendi Eta megelela intaka ibon Yuti kulu za kuzuk Etu funo za uzalwa la pendi Ona egu kubushi ubu No masa uja Lomhole ni mbona yo Wakelo aloko Joba ni mbona nje Ebu lwelu mkosi Kwa kutika Osu ini Ahamba ngali mshabi Umoli wenu wezusuru Ngiatani kubani mazu Guti umolo wakiwa Ukutagabe ngwasen lukul No manga tole nto Emtasula yongoguja No manga emembo kisai Kota wango wazu gubishi ukos Ngobu zalwa kona ekos Ekosi Nitanika zelesu Ube ikawe Umkulu wake ujotofu Umamonga walwa Kakulu zulu Esekisha kati wangizi Walwa wazo wama sekitine Wafelu mkosi Wazo wafela Ama fela mkosi Mwaba wabo shwa wabo shwele Upa mbata kama ngeza Aba nga aba Aga seyo nikuti Nga peshe ya otuwe Aba tumbe shoja Bakwe nga aba opa mbata Mfoka mangizi Bakwe nga abo skananda Mfoka zufa Aza ati nko kutuwechwa Watiwe wa hamba au mwajwa Go skananda Nitanda zulu Ugunchela ngalumhul Unifundi sile Nkalela makos Awashiyeyo Enkuleni ya ukokoba Nguba ngamakos Inkose ya wabigela Amangisi Esefike katata Amakosa wamba cheli sizu Yona makosa cheli wa izizwe zao Ukuta ngege Inyoni ga ipumuli Ipume Ia uhamba pezu wa Ya pume mpia sese swanjwa Ikisho nga makosa Nina enshiwe enkujeni Yogulela Izwe Nukulwe Ukosi Ama kosi Ntela aibambe Lapa shiwe kona Mpa Asamane Nenjuku Jengoba nenjukulu Inga mile Base na zuguti Aimile base ngukumba Sikalibu yele nda Onyi samane na makosi Kupatu izwe Ela nigezu wa Nkulu nkulu sizwe za mazu Izwe la mazu nule Okwa tuwa kari kwe Usha Ngele ngele tesu Kotwa Lapinti yami Ipokopele Ukubang nichele Kufanele nichele Malomu holo hambe na mshu Ubele choni ipo, eno cha. Ewa choni ipa amakos. Em choni ipa uhulumen. Nyam kalela kakulu uhulumen. Ngobabe mbona go TV. Sebe tonzana e parlament. Ubeti mesuguma. Asoni ishwe Yonka makembu Abe msoni pa umtwa Nale yonjela 
ni awabonga ni abonga umengameli ni bonga kakhulu okugcina sengiphangisa usize matamele kukhona into enzwa kumeni akhongolo kodwa waqalwa ngamakhosi akwazulu neyifundiswa sakwazulu kodwa uthema isemisi umthetho wokubekwa kwamakhosi akazaye ngonyameni wami isunyango akwakhona ingonyama njengombane uhambe ekhala ngendaba yombango wamakhosi Ngoba ma kuhamba inkosi umnyanga uye endle unkulu emzini wenkosi uhamba uye kwaba bangayo ubukhosi bonke buhleli nje bunaba bangayo kodwa manje uhulumene akabuyaye abese ihamba nalabe bebe bangisa ubukhosi siyacela Bonk abawazu abawule John abai kumbu luguti yaka luanga makosi eleli ingundeze ingundeze lugu kuabu igubula la umteto ababe busa ngao kuto mangisi awaza ngapi tupko sabshi yangu sisi tinzul wakubere boga mankos awaza mbe kumba ogu ingingu gutu hulumeni sangu abamnyam umbang nukula wa kukamu ge kunesa valeri dabeze ita. Si chokoza kakulu kwa wesilo Umtu ana wakwa fiti ngindi Na mazwi avela ekchuleni kwe kliziyo Ebonga ikumbula umza wake o wesilo Usandulele Si otela kegulu mzuzu ukubasonke sisugume Sikele umtwana umapigelela kama ngosutu Uguba asondele, esa sondela Sonke si utula si titu Si kone pesi lalele ihubo Lomtwana umkulu lisandala Dabezita
siyathokoza ngokuhlona ipa umntwana omkhulu and please see, you may you may sit down thank you very much thank you thank you thank you shenge umphathi wohlelo for this opportunity of the family just to stand up at this moment and thank you. His Excellency, Mr. Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa. His Majesty King Mesuzulu Snobile Gazwilitini, King of the Zulu Nation in absentia. Members of the Utelese family and of the Mozilla family, as well as of the Zulu Real family, Onjunkulu Kona, Onjunkulu Mazungu, Umtuana Wafishimindi, Amazinyane Esilo, Aparatuguetu, the Most Reverend Dr. Tabo Mahoba, Archbishop of Cape Town, and Metropolitan of the Church of the Province of Southern Africa. They are, they are Majesties, the visiting kings and queens of various nations head of states and former heads of state to name them president your excellency zuma your excellency motlante and your excellency mbegi as well as of course your excellency obasanjo who was a, a dear friend to my father members of the butelezi clan the leadership of the free, of the free, of the Inkata Freedom Party, Amakosi and Izinduna, ministers, deputy ministers, leaders of government, Honorable Nomsa Dube Nube, Premier of the Province of Zulu Natal, members of the Royal Welsh Regiment, members of the diplomatic corps, and international guests, members of the Zulu Nation and all who grieve in this sad moment throughout our country and throughout the world. For as long as I can remember, my father, Umtuana Wakwa Pindangene, would call my siblings and I together in the, and I together in the evenings to spend time with him and our mother in prayer. It became a daily ritual in gaining in us as his family the centrality of faith in Christ. As we lay Umdwan to rest, the refrain from his favorite hymn continually plays in my mind. I hear his voice even now singing these words. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, my righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but really lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. As you can imagine, it is difficult to express the depth of our pain as Umdwana's family. The, depth, the pain that we feel at the strange absence of our father. He was an anchor of our family. For his children, his great grandchildren and grandchildren, there's never been a life without Umduan. Now we are set adrift. But when our grief subsides, I know that we will find ourselves still on solid ground. Because Umduana taught us well, he taught us to trust in God Almighty and to lean, as he did, entirely Christ. Umduana, I think a lot of what we learned, maybe before I pro proceed with my prepared text, Umduana, what we learned from him mostly was through observing him. Because you know, as they say, you can beat up the child and shout at the child, but the child just watches what you do and mimic you. So Umduana, a lot of what we learned was through observing how he, how he conducted his life. Because really, you can never be anything great outside 
if you are not great in your family. You can be the greatest leader in the world, but if to your children and your wife, or to your, I mean, as a, or to your husband and your children, you are, don't rate you high, I think you will never cut it to them. So I think also personally, I've lived a very beautiful life. I just, I'm just mentioning this because for many, many hour, months, I've spent a lot of time next to my father and just standing by observing him. So when I say a beautiful life, is, I also am not talking about trappings of luxury. I've just simply spent a beautiful life of everyday learning. That to me, gives the measure of the man, and that is his faith, by the way, because I, I had lived a bit there. For a man can be the greatest orator, I think this instills what I was saying, that a man can be the greatest orator, a renowned leader, and the finest ch champion of the people. But if he fails as a father and a husband, his life amounts to nothing. By, the, by that measure alone, Umtuana Wapindangene was a giant amongst men. To know that he is united with our mother, his beloved wife, Princess Irene Tanegile, and with our grandmother, Princess Magogo Katinuzulu, who shaped his faith, deeply comforted. Mapugustiwagonke, he is, sorry, sorry, he is with our sisters, Princess Mandi Sisbugagonke. Princess Mapugu, Sniwagonke, and Princess Letuklo Lobengitini. He is with our brothers, Prince Nelisus Zulu Benedict and Prince Puma Pesheya, Gregory, grandson Kosinati. He is with his father and with our kings and ancestors with whom he served you, the nation. He is with countless friends who preceded him into eternity. Most precious of all, he is with the Savior, with his Savior. What a joyous celebration it must be. Our father was first and foremost a Christian. Second, he was a husband and father. Third, he was a patriot, which I believe so many of you are here, most of you are here today because of that last one, that he was a patriot of this nation and beyond. I remember him saying, God made me a Zulu. I speak Zulu, I have a Zulu culture, and I'm proud of that. I will never apologize to anyone for that. But I also live in a country called South Africa, which makes me a South African. The legacy by which Umduana will be remembered is a legacy of service to the Zulu nation and to South Africa. The vehicle he chose was politics, which to him always meant service. That path shaped his life. It also shaped our family. We are very much aware that uh, the longest mile of his life was in the political space. But as they say, if you, you ever make a mistake of looking at our father only through the tinted political glasses, you have missed the measure of the man. When he was appointed as traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarch and nation by King Cyprian Begu Zulu Nyanga Solomon in 1954, the esteemed Jordan Kush Ngubane wrote the following. When you emerge, I quote, when you emerged as the second most important man in the Zulu community, we felt that at long last we had risen up to uphold that position in our life, which I have always felt belongs to a young man of your gifts. It's now that you manage affairs, I realize that one of our noblest dreams is coming through." Close quote. Ngubane also wrote, quite prophetically, I'm afraid, I know you are going to make enemies. You will be misunderstood, and you might even find yourself disgraced. That is a lot of those who build the new Africa. Close quote. Knowing that our father, what our father endured for the sake of his principles, we as the family can only thank God Almighty
for preserving his life and for giving us so many years with him. We also thank the IFP which he founded and through which he served the community with integrity, distinction and pride. We thank the Butelezi clan for lending him to South Africa. We thank the royal family for heeding his guidance and honoring his wisdom. We thank His Majesty King Cyprian, His Majesty King Goodwill Zweliti Negapegozulu, and His Majesty King Mesuzulu Gazweliti for recognizing in our Father a custodian of the Zulu nation's strength and unity. We are also deeply humbled by the presence here today of Brigadier Ian Scholten and Brigadier Russell Wardle of the Royal Welsh Regiment of the United Kingdom, who have come to honor the great grandson of King Zechuayo, whose warriors faced the Royal Welsh at Joanna in 1879. Inko was Mnyama Nagangele Leptilis, Umduana's paternal great grandfather was commander in chief of all the king's regiments in the Anglo Zulu War. It is fitting that the Royal Welsh honor our father this one last this one last time. We are truly grateful. We are humbled too by the presence of Lieutenant Colonel Connor O'Hara of the Royal Marines. He is the British military's representative of South Africa and is here on behalf of the British High Commission. I know that their presence is deeply meaningful, not only to our family, but to the Zulu royal family. It is the most significant, perhaps, to the, Amako, to, to the Amakosi and Amamuto present, for these are real descendants of the men who fought to protect the Zulu kingdom, laying down their lives on the battlefield. It would have meant the world to our father, for, the, for he gave so much of his life to preserve Zulu Kingdom, the institution of the monarchy, and the institution of traditional leadership. For that, we salute him. Over the past few days, as we try to come to terms with the loss of Umdwana, Pindangen, we have had the opportunity to express our appreciation to the many people who walked the journey of the service alongside him. On the point, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of um, how overwhelmed we are uh, with so many people who came, who came to our doors since Umtuana passed away um, last, last week. It has just been so overwhelming, we could not cope. I remember one day when there were about 17 delegations in one day to come see our father. What we see, what we saw in people who came there, we saw that it, it, it actually uh, signified what he stood for because it was political parties against the divide. It was very, very important people. It was ordinary people who came to send their lives respect. We take comfort in knowing that they know in their own hearts how much they meant to Mdwana. The special relationship they had with him will forever be a blessing. May they experience God's peace that passes all understanding. It is necessary though that we as the family give special thanks to Umduana's protectors who faithfully stayed at his side day and night for, for going time with their own families to ensure that Umduana was always safely returned to his home. We thank his staff we th we, who, who worked so closely with him and who considered him their father. And we thank his grandson, Prince Zamogu Sheh, who was such a blessing to Mtwana in his later years. I find myself saying again and again that the greatest tribute we can pay to Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi would be to find our own way to serve. That is what he always asked us to do. Walk in your, in your calling make your contribution and leave this world a better place because you were in it. When I consider the presence of his, of his Excellency, former President Obasanjo, knowing the friendship that he had with our father, when I consider the words that have been spoken and the tributes 
paid by leaders throughout the world. When I see the honor bestowed by our own country's president, and when I consider the vast library of achievements in my father's life, I am simply in awe. What can one say to properly honor a lifetime of distinction? He was honored many times by many people in many unique ways. Beyond the honorary degrees and the international awards, he was profoundly touched by the beautiful gestures towards him and no one even knew about it. I think, for instance, of a visit to Scandinavia that he undertook with our mother in 1963. These are the special things which I'm sure a lot of people want to hear, not so much about his leadership, which we have had so many beautiful trib tributes today. My sister, Princess Pumzi Lenogupiwa, was 10 years old. Our youngest sister, Princess Angela Sibuyeselo, was of course just, still just a twinkle in our parents' eyes. When they came back from Scandinavia, they told Princess Pumzile and I about a wonderful thing that had been done for them. We were too young for it to matter to us that they had been invited by the first Lutheran bishop in South Africa, Bishop Fossius, to visit the Norwegian mission headquarters and the Swedish Lutheran headquarters in Uppsala. But with a vivid imagination of the children, we were delighted by the story of our parents being taken to the magnificent Uppsala. Uppsala Cathedral one night, where by the light of many candles, the organist gave a special recital of an audience of two. I've never forgotten that image. It really speaks of the remarkable life our father, our father led. The organist, Dr. Harry Women, had visited Pindangene to interview our grandmother, who you sang, you heard singing earlier, Princess Makoko, and to record her internationally acclaimed music. It was that music and her voice that underpinned our father's childhood and shaped his love for hymns. He often said that he owed his dependence on God, specifically to the influence of his mother. But of course, a lot of people know my father at work. They do not know much about our father uh, at play. Our father was really to us so much, I mean, I think if there's one thing you know about him, is his keen sense of humor. Somebody said to him, who was a friend of his, said, I can't believe that you don't even respect the decorum of parliament, and you go and make jokes there. Knowing his ecumenical spirit, I would like to read a piece from the Catholic text, Ecclesiastes chapter 44, which my father had at the funeral service of his dear friend, Ray Swart. Not having seen this text before, he asked for a copy, and I can understand why it touched his heart. It, it reads, let us know praise famous men, and, and our fathers in their generations, the Lord apportioned to them great glory, his majesty from the beginning. There were those who ruled in their kingdoms and, and were men who were known for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and proclaiming prophecies." Close quote. Maybe as I end, ladies and gentlemen, I just would like two things which I think are important I would like to say, Number, maybe three things. My father, when the Archbishop here came to visit him at the hospital, when he was really quite unwell, asked him what were the two things, a few things that he felt really disturbed his heart if he were to close his eyes. He said that the first thing, uh, which he said, by the way, I must always share with, with uh, everybody I speak to. He said the first thing that concerned him was what is happening, what go, is going on in the royal family. The second thing he said was the failure, maybe on both sides, the ANC and the IFP, of uh, reaching the reconciliation. And he said, even if this is a faint dream, but deep down he believed that it could still be achieved. Maybe then also, when I talk on, of the thanks, firstly, as we conclude, as a family, we want to thank again the people who came over to, to comfort us. I don't even know what to say about today. 
I felt so emotional. I was almost reduced to tears because it's just unbelievable to see so many people having come to pay tribute to this one man. You know, sometimes when you leave with someone in the house, you never realize what they meant until we have an experience like what we are experiencing here. There was just one story last, last night which touched me very deeply as we were busy preparing for today. A young lady, a young girl really, came to me with tears in her eyes. I didn't know her. She greeted me and I said, why are you crying? She said, um, you know, she first told me, I'm doing my master's in mechanical engineering. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And then she said, but more importantly, the seat that took me to where I am today was Umkulu. I mean, and he said, you're, you're dear dad. And then he said, also, I'm so pleased that I'm fulfilling what I promised him. I've set up an NGO, which in Johannesburg, she showed me very excitedly all the things on her phone, what she had achieved with the NGO helping street children and people like that. To me, I said, those are the things that define who my father, our father, really was. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies here, really, we can sit here until, I mean, until it's dark, talking about our father, but there is a Lord, he gave us the foundation, it's up to us. And then, of course, I said, I'm going to fi finish up with a pledge that we undertake so Alisa, what we promise to you to really uphold and defend your legacy. We know that it will make us maybe unpopular, maybe even get enemies, but our father was not a coward. So we are prepared, along with other people who are prepared to hold up his legacy. And I just hope that uh, so many of you today, or even a quarter of you today, can just propagate what his legacy stood for. Thank you, Sheng. 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 So, Alisa. Our father was a very grateful person. Siya bonga Jesu. Siya bonga Jesu. Siya bonga Jesu. Jesu. Siya tete. Siya Jesus, see among Jesus, see among Jesus, Jesus, who sits May God bless you, and may our ancestors thank you all as well, together with God, for all that you've meant to my father and what he meant to you. See among. As I bid a goodbye to my father today, I wish to read this poem by Maya Angelou, um, titled, When Great Trees Fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile, we breathe briefly, our eyes briefly see with. A hurtful clarity, our memory suddenly sharpened, examines, knows unkind words. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. They existed. They existed. 
we can be, be and be better for the existed. Nabezita. Some Zobali. Coswens all. Zonky Foundation, Salapem Contuin. When I am a house and a half of an amphorazan. When I am a two pam yam, Zosella. When I want Abazir de la Machine. When I am on morning, when I am on morning, I will be When I was pushed a call, I Um, I cannot believe that I'm standing here today, bidding to, bidding goodbye to the love of my life, to my first, to my day one to a man that I looked up to, to a man that I honored, to a man that I would have laid my life out for, to, a, to the kindest man that I've ever known. And I don't think that I'll, I'll ever, ever know or come across a man as kind as my father. He was the epitome of love. He was, he taught us love and uncon to love unconditionally. He taught us forgiveness. He taught us, he taught us forgiveness. He taught us faith. He taught us to love God. He taught us to, he taught us humility. He taught us to be humble. He taught us. He, uh, he taught us that being humble doesn't mean um, that you are perhaps I don't know a cow, less than, but humility instead. Is the, is the sign of greatness. So I hope that um, we as his children, uh, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren will take away some of those good qualities that he, he and my mom actually instilled to us and as I spoke to him last night in his casket and bidding him goodbye, that is the promise that, um, so, you know, some of the promises that I made to him, which are very private, obviously, you know, and he will be missed. We are missing, well, I'm missing him already. And, uh, yeah. Hambarate, Mapanga, Linga, and Namfosa, Hambarate, Dabezita. When I went off, when I went off, Dabezita, Shang, Shang, so Alisa. What we are going to do uh, now? See, to us, I go to the people who are going to be Wa sale wa tula slande lushenge wa sale wa tula slande lushenge o ewe na ewe na o ewe na 
one, 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 two, one, two. An acknowledgement of loss and sorrow and I guess a reflection of one's own mortality when you listen to the speeches, when you hear the sermons. Um, it is touching in various aspects. Bongiwe Zwane Mzondele Mbeche is still with me here. Um, I wonder, big takeaways for you, Mzwai, from well, the various speeches. Well, so far, um, I would uh, say the leader of the IFP um, earlier, I think he was very passionate in his speech, uh, acknowledging how um, he played a role in nurturing him and making him the leader that he is today. And of course, uh, his children, including the grandchildren. So giving that uh, other side, really, of the man uh, that some, some of us may not know. know. Remember, because of who they are, they would have an insight into the man himself. And Mzwai, uh, of course, you think about the fact that he was even talking about how even his own politics was shaped a lot by his interactions with Ushenge and even committing that the IFP going forward is going to make sure that it you know grows from where he left it off and talking interestingly even about the fact that the IFP must be a force to be reckoned with especially when you think about how the IFP has framed itself over the last couple of years saying they're reclaiming their former glory. Absolutely, absolutely and then it will also be interesting then to hear more of the government aspect because we are now moving into the state part. Remember, we've been saying this is a special official funeral, the one that is given to outstanding individuals. Okay, let's listen in. By to the position that is in front. During that movement of the coffin to the position that is in front, you will require to be seated. You are required to be seated. During the national anthem, we will require to be standing. Immediately after national anthem, you also required to be seated. Then after that, the chaplain is going to carry on with the ceremony. When the chaplain is finished with the ceremony, there will be also another national anthem. You also required to be standing. Immediately after that anthem, you will be required to be seated again. Then the coffin is going to be taken to the gun carriage. During that movement, you also required to be seated. That will be led by the movement to the grave site. The movement to the grave site is going to be as follows. The order of march, the police and the military police, they are required to lead the convoy in order to clear the route. That will be followed by the gun carriage. Immediately after the gun carriage, it will be general at the chaplain followed by the pole bearers and the bearers, followed by the senior officers, followed by the senior officers, followed by the family, then the rest of the people that are allowed to go to the graveyard. During the graveyard, take the following uh, note, there will be also a national anthem that is going to be read there, which is going to be accompanied by the gunfire. We caution the elderly people 
to take note of the gun sound. Thank you. Yes. Wagu is Toba Fortis, a Kaila Wutaban to Basale Pansi. I shall a Pansi Bamboom Teto. Mova Pella Nakum Sebens, who sends the Wangapa. Jemo Basabu Kazi, Utaban to Mabasale Pansi. Miso Suguma Masabu Tulwa in National Anthem. Siabong, a Stella Supegelum Sebensi. O Kubega Manje, Song Kesita Le Pants and Oguz Toba, Sandela Nita Le Pants Uguze, Amasota Aped, Um Sebenzi Wow, Sison Jena, Yamasa Funagani Sugum, Masakula, in National Anthem, Oguz Toba, Nokebisa Ikan, the Pants, Stella Ogutinita Le Pants. Stella Nain Duna, Ezi Hama and Mabutoa, Zuba, Agen Tele Abantu, Batu Guti Gabala Lelega, Nagulum Sebenzo, and Zagala Manje, Um Sebenzo, Kuluga, Bilo, and Zegamanje, Uzo Funa Uguti Sibene Sizota, San Tela.
confidently. And there's a party element as well to it. So I think that's why sometimes you you, you never know what's happening mm. because everyone would want to have their say. And you know, quite interesting that you mentioned the traditional aspects. Um, even at the press briefing earlier on in the week, Prince Zuzifa, for example, um, the son, being asked a question about how will you then balance some of the traditional aspects and the rituals and things that need to be done uh, versus him being the, the you know a devout uh, church member Anglican church member also at the same time being a founder of the IFP and listening to what he had to say saying that all these many faces will be accommodated yeah. and everything else will um, you know, find its place and, and, and its space. And it's also interesting, Zwei, that even earlier on when we were speaking, we were talking about E. Bongozake, for example. And E. Bongozake as something that is critical, as something that is part of who he is, even as Yagwak um, is. And you think about the fact that Bambi Zimbabazai. Yes. I won't even finish, <laughs> you know, all of it. That also speaks to the man yeah. in his many faces. Yes, and you know, Izibongo, traditionally, they are supposed to reflect who you are in reality. They, they are not supposed to whitewash anything. So when they give you Izibongo, they must give you exactly things that you did. Um, and as, as, as you were mentioning, so there are so many aspects of it, and I think uh, uh, there's some movement there as well. Um, but back to your point, so when you talk, give someone um, is bong, or you call it, um, it's, it's not really the clan names, yes, but yeah. it's a uh, it's almost as if I think I think yeah. Ibong is, is 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 almost like your one would even call it a legacy. It's it's like a legacy, but it's your legacy as sung by the poets, by the praise singers, because it depicts you. Uh, there is no fitting word, for example, in the English language that you can even call Ibong because I are the clear names and all of that. So it, it, it's 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 quite interesting as well that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you can't, we can't even find that right word for Ibongo because Ibongo become that part of you that is a, that stings even for other people. Yeah. Sometimes we have to try and improvise. What you are. As you can see in your visuals, the coffin is now draped in the South African flag. The official, special official funeral category one for persons of extraordinary credentials. When we talk about credentials, what are we talking about? Talking about the person's experiences, the person's abilities, the impact that the person has made to the nation as designated by the President of the Republic of South Africa. You're going to hear from the President in a short while. A number of glowing tributes um, and some of it stemming from Bill and Kosini Tlabisa, um, uh, the IFB president, describing Prince Putulezi as a giant in Africa um, and saying he always asked what can I do for you not what's in it for me. It was telling. Certainly, certainly and highlighting um, the role that um, uh, President Obasanjo, former president of Nigeria, played um, in also assisting the transition to democracy. Uh, because, I mean, Obasanjo was, um, um, has always been a friend of uh, Dr. Abtelezi, and he used that to give wise counsel, particularly as South Africa was facing yeah. So, when you see that the state has taken over, it basically talks to that role that he has been recognized by his government, by his state, as an, as an outstanding individual because of the special uh, official funeral category one. And you know, you stay with what um, Alisa said, uh, that the fact that, for example, he says, Isilo Eskulu, Intigayako, Nodondolo Luako, Obu. 
basically your pillar is gone to the Amazon king. And that is also yet another person Zwei, that would have provided the counsel that you're talking about. He would have provided that to him. In fact, the king uh, that we have today, I think all South Africans, because it's still fresh in our minds, we know the role he played in making sure that he gets to the throne. Who can forget uh, when one of the royal uh, family members, uh, Prince Togozane, was descending and then he stood up, he said, uh, Salapaz, Salapaz. Because there was the descending voice to the current king. Remember, they were about to read the will. But because of the authority he had, because of that intricateness, because of that pillar uh, that you're speaking about, so he was able to. As you know, the special official funeral has military elements. Let's take this moment in. Zibonge kakulu, sitoli ise uba inesal ante mibinga zwa galiga zenga apa. Ene besinga bakela nga bandu kutiba suku umefo eno kutu wage asesi dule lako. Zibonge kakulu, mwuguzi toba futi. Titela, 
ukuthi siqhubeke nomsebenzi ucela ukusho ukuthi sesifike esigabeni sesibini somsebenzi okwamanje of uh, the program and uh, the program director as we've been hearing that is Minister Lindy Vazulu and this is uh, the part of the program where we just heard the national anthem being sung and we'll now of course see all the other SANDF ceremonial by the chaplain general that are still to come and just after this particular part which is going to include the eulogy from the president as well as a tribute by the Speaker of the National Assembly, there's going to then be a moment of departure to the cemetery as well. Oh yes, um, and from here it's going to be the final part, which is uh, part three, three that you've just spoken about. But right now, uh, the man who um, granted the special official funeral, the president, will have the opportunity to speak. But before that, we'll also hear from the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, so because this is now uh, the program that is run by government and uh, with military elements to it, and then we will be able to witness all of that. Thank you so much, Program Directors, the brief family of the Mutelezi, President of the Republic, His Excellency Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, former President present, President Tabumpegi, President Kamalala, President Khalma Mshante, former President. 
of Nigeria, President of Assange, the Chief Justice of South Africa, Justice Sondo, by the Silo Samakos, Mrs. Zungobine, Lamiti Amako, Sulam Gulumiam, the Speaker of National Assembly, Mamunas, Vima Pisangagula, Ministers present, I think at this point in time, Provincial House of Chapasin, Igosu Shinga, Igosu Sis, President of the IFP, Velenko Sin Shabis, and other leaders. Leaders and representatives of other political parties present, Amabu to fellow mourners, in the interest of time, it is with deep sense of humility that I rise to welcome you to this special farewell. I must also greet the Secretary General of the ANC, Comrade President, Comrade Ntola, Fugile Mbalula. We wish to thank the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Ramaphosa, for declaring this a special official funeral category one. It is true that leaders of rare qualities are hard to come by. This declaration therefore symbolizes the greatest one of the NC government could be so bestow by a leader over our people of his last days. As we welcome you, we wish to state categorical that national provincial government that we have never experienced a loss of the Zulu traditional prime minister in, in this new dispensation. The ANC and IFP has been put to the most difficult test over the last few days. Only history will judge us and advocate about our result. However, I wish to pay tribute to his silo, Samabanda, silo Mrs. Zulin Lamid for the guidance and advancement of unity over the nation. When future generations look back to the 16th of September 2023, they will undoubtedly say something profound about this day. They will state that leaders of the governing party, the ANC at all levels, the Butelias, the family, traditional leaders, leaders of faith, based organization, and people of Kwasu Natal were instrumental in making this a befitting national farewell. Fellow mourners, when future generations look back, they will be inspired by this display that took place today. We will be judged on how we managed to sink our personal ambitions for the great aspiration of the people of Kwazul Nadal. Over these days, the Kamga and Dawale Shugan, what does Fisuti Ukrain Umdin, Sikrina Sees, the Squaz, which is Sikanga, and a song and Jenga Sees, CO seven Zella, which is Simo Sitis Kubele Pambil. Compatriots are be loud and say clear that having this democratic government is a privilege will never take for granted because many people paid with their lives for it. KZN was once a different province, ravaged by violence and smitten with hostility and bitterness, especially between ANC and IFP. It was not uncommon for political differences in Ulu, the Legislative Assembly, and in the next some respect to spill over the in the community instead of those housing reserves, but the situation has suddenly changed because of the effort of these leaders. We must pay tribute to of both parties who had bilateral meetings and calmed down a lot of conflict and brought sanity. Through various peace initiatives and bilateral meetings between ANC and IFP, the atmosphere of political intolerance was transformed to create a new spirit of open but peaceful competition and cooperation. When we realize through dialectical understanding, through a difference are propelled by the system. The system is here in the world, in the world, in the system is here in the world, 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 the ANC. What we system, we have to keep the whole men in the desert, always with the band of the Nyama, but the band of the Nyama, but the band of Nyama. The system is here in the world, 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 South Africa On this important day, we affirm our commitment as the governing party to ensure that spirit of peace and reconciliation blows like a fresh cool breeze. We commit to ensure that political fuel violence is replaced by robust political debates on strategies designed to lift our people of our abject poverty. Our province must enjoy a reasonable freedom of association and political tolerance which was unimaginable before 94. As Deployed by the ANC government of the day, we commit to ensure that the image of Kwazulu Natal is improved each day of the week. We offer to double our.
effort to ensure that Zulu Kingdom becomes an attractive destination for investors and leisure seekers. We want the warmth and friendly smile of our people to continue to be a brand few to compete with. Finally, we would like to thank the Butelezi family for sharing their father with the people of this province. At the end of the day, Yafisu Kota, Ingoate, Palue, King Solomon, in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ingoate, Umshumael, Uti, let us see the conclusion of the matter fear god keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of the man i thank you program direct i in the land but sibonge kakholo sengi zoqela u speaker of the national assembly u sisi unosivuye mapisa ngakula Uguti nae ati kaba kaba. Jengo basi zwile elia on gutiwa. Umtuana. Wayo umuntu. Owaye unaita. Ipalamente. No manga besi ya siya alwa siya pi. Yena waye ba ilo umuntu. Ostrela uguti sizipate. Sizipate nango guzitoba. No sivuwe mapisa ngagula. The Speaker of the National Assembly. The bonga kakulu, the bonga ku minister uzulu. Mzi wa kwa zulu natala. Mzi wa kwa zulu. Aya ikwe ota na mshanji. Ndivu meleni, ndibuli ise, ndikashele, ifemeli. Ya kwa shenge. Dinibuli sandi ni shoni pile kakulu Nenga yela kesha lilele paya Dibuli se Dikatle leo president of the Republic of South Africa And the commander in chief of the armed forces U president matamela Di acknowledge O president Bama Loba, Bama Ndulo, Kekan Choyo, U President Umbeki, U President Uhalima, no President Uzuma. Nindi Vumele Ubandi Kashele U Chief Justice Zondo Okona Pakati Kwetu. Nivu mebetuna ukokubana di kashele paya kutata ushabisa. Utata ushabisa u president We inkata freedom party Utata ushabisa Ungenez shangu inez kulu ka kulu bab Kotwa Nyakolo abantu bekembu lako Na abantu bakwa zulu bayo kutandazis Ungomkulu uwile and therefore, Lomti Ushia, a void, Ushia, a crater where this great three was firmly rooted. So for many of us who sheltered under this great three and those who nourished on its fruits and sheltered under the security of its dependable leaves, the family, the IFP, the Amazulu people, and the rest of our nation, we have now come here to pay homage to him and to pass our condolences. Of course, in the context of the history of our people, and the people's war against the oppression and the exploitation of differences have always emerged amongst abantu ngendlela esithi si understand ngayo neba si appreciate ngayo 
nezitrateji esiti sibe nazo ukuze siluisane mpofu. Siluisane nendala. Siluisa ngelini tlaisha ezo zindo they lead to a conflict. I just want to say and I want to make a plea to all of us. Udata, just like many others of our leaders was no exception. We are mona mani petindaba. Nizo kwa shuka na banye batete ngale, banye bapeye ngale. Go to Oksala, you must find a solution. And I believe in the Rokbana Utbaba, Utebe kwa shuka ne kunjalo as we all know. But Utada ultimately find a, found a way forward together with Umadiba Ukuba Kubanjiswa. And Tata's last words now were that Umwene la Okokubana, all those things, the unfinished business between the ANC and the IFP, Inga, Inga Tijezer. Ah, Ufaile Sikrete Lelebo. He sees what I say to a Sibakit. Kufanele okokubana sibambisane. Kufanele ukubakubekona umanyano. Kufanele ukubasilake ukwenzele ukuba abantu bakuti babe nekamva elise. Kwa utingemini when people write the story of South Africa, the history of our country, of course, those who will record that history properly, Ubaba Umutelezi, will be on the list of those people whose names will appear on those people on the list of names of people who made a difference in this country. Uya Baika Malake Lakupalwa. Libele linye la mama nota tabeli lizwe abate benza indogo kubana kubekona imputuko kuilizwe letu. Umtuwa na wakwa pindangene played an important role in structuring of the government of national unity. A pivotal moment in our nation's history which helped our country to design cooperation amongst big political players. Na ukungula ukukubana ubaba uteka etala paya government of national unity wabangu minister we home affairs. Dibene nyueba ke mandite tele ndom ziwalapa kwa zulu natal yukukubana ndisebe nze na ye utata noba ibi minyaka emibini. Ndoke ebe nditanda kakulu ngotata is that he was a very straightforward man, very true to himself, very honest. Uza kutela utata le ndo ufuneka onga funu iva yeyako, but uza kutela le ndo atondile. And I think that is one thing utata we must forever remember her for. Him for utata be disciplinarian. Utata would not allow you ba wenze ndo e rongo. Utata uza witeta kwa irongo. We are born again tina paye parliament ngo ban teteli parliament. Slasheke lwetun. Slasheke lwe because utata i presence yake as a guiding elder. Utata kalo kwa i veteran. Engo yenumtum kulu paye. Ebe kwa zi therefore. Ustanga shanga nisa azame ubunanda taku kona is pity pit. We will miss that wisdom yakatata. We will miss the experience yakatata. Utata, the miss utata. You you may have noted this. The miss utata because utata was utata kuti songe irrespective of poli which political parties we come from. Kandi shala kandi funa ukuti. A program director. Utate bei tandi debate and utate could be robust ka etanda. But what is important is that utate all the time was advocating for ba abantu 
sithethe izinto abantu abafuna ukuba zenziwe ebonini babo so for us those of you young politicians both within the IFP nangaphandle kwe IFP ndiyacela tokhwana that ubulumko bukatata ulwazi katata ebe inzulu which i believe he transferred to many of us who are sitting here today ezo zinto singazilibali niyabona ke nhlala ngokuthi utata ungumuntu ofundisayo ufundise wafundisa even namhlanje one of the things utata sifundise yona ehleli apho ahleli khona esibileje koko kubana amabutho i religion i military njengoba besibona apha ingcwaba utata that all those things can be merged together zange siyazi thina into bana singaba nomsebenzi wamabutho ozaba khona xa kungcwatywa umuntu nge category 1 ye military siyayibulela lonto siyayibulela lonsebenziswano nakwabo baphethe imikhosi ngikana eh kamhlabungena siyabulela tata Siabulela Shenge Siabulela Mdom Kul Tina Onga Nanga Quimelela Ke, Noba Ebengutata, Uziakele Ngokwake, but I believe many of us who corner is in Do Esizi Fundi Leo, Sitesa Nanga, Quibele, Lom to Om Kul Lala Keshenge, Lala Tata, Pum Langok, Ngoba Usebenzil. Speaker of the National Assembly, Sbakulu Lebo Shalapanzi Nabo, Sessi Figulesos Kati, La Possesses of Ella Corner, U President, We Republic of South Africa, U President Cyril Matam. Ramaphosa Segui leso skati Siga president Uguti azo wenza iyu loji Siga tela gebagiti Uguti Nimsondeze U president Asbonge Asbonge kakulu Uguti president Ube nati Ilanga longe na mshanje Asbonge Sbonge Ugutu President Uko na Sbonge Sbonge Ugutu President Uzile na ye ezoti Pepisani Bozulu Sbonge U President Sbonge Ugutu na ye utole ituba Ugutu azoti Dudu Gini nonge The President of the Republic of South Africa President Cyril Ramaphosa Babu Sheng, long live. Long live the spirit of Babu Sheng, long live. Amanda. Amanda. Mohammed Sutelo. Your Majesty King, Mrs. Zulu, Zolitin in absentia. Bantuana Ben Junkuru Gazulu Bantuana Nomdeni Wabukosi Bugabutelezi Izi Induza Bukosi Eza La Penings in Africa Zonke Amakosi Nezinduna The former presidents of our beloved country, 
President Mbeki, President Motlante, President Zuma, former President Obasanjo of Nigeria, Majesties from other parts of our country and from other countries as well, members of the judiciary as led by the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, the Speaker of our National Assembly, Umama Mapisa Ngakura, the Chair of the National Council of Provinces, Ubaba Umasondo, President of the IFP, Ubaba Shabisa, leaders of other political parties, the Secretary General of the African National Congress, the Governing Party of Figile Mbalula is here, Julius Malema, President of the EFF, is here, John Stian Hazen, leader of the DA, which is the official opposition party, U General Bantu Holomisa, the leader of the UDM, Musi Maimani. If I haven't seen other leaders of political parties, forgive me, I noticed those that I saw. Leaders of our Chapter 9 institutions, Bapati Swabonke, Aba Uhulumeni, the acting premier of KZN province, Usboniso Duma, Archbishop Tabo Mahoba, Naba Party, Naba Meli Amabandla, as in Kolo, as Konalapa, and those who have traveled from other lands to mourn with us, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the military command, business leaders, and fellow mourners. Our presence here in our thousands and in the splendor of the various beautiful colors that are displayed here today confirms the correctness of the decision I took to grant Prince Butelezi an official Category 1 funeral. This is just a wonderful celebration of a life of Prince Butelezi. Thank you all for being here today. Silapangoba kuwe umuti omkul. A mighty tree has fallen. Isizwe se tu simbete ifu elimnyam. We mourn the passing of Inkosi Yagwa Pindangene. It is not only the Butel family and the Inkata Freedom Party that are in mourning, but many, many other people in our country who respected and loved him are also mourning. The sun has set on an era and an, on a life that witnessed and had an impact on much of our country's modern history. We are here to bid farewell to a man who had a vision of a shared common future of our country. This vision was his enduring preoccupation even in the latter years of his life. On behalf of the government and the people of South Africa, we offer our deepest condolences to the royal household, the Butelezi family, and the people of our country. Our condolences also go to the leadership and the membership of the Nkata Freedom Party that 
Prince Butelezi founded in 1975 and that he led until 2019. On this sad day, we remember his words on the day he stepped down from being president of the IFP. He said, a lifetime would never be enough to serve a country, especially a country I love so much. Love of South Africa was the one overriding passion that defined Prince Butelezi because he was a man who just loved his country. It was his love for this beautiful country of ours that in many ways led him to take up a leadership role through his life, having been mentored by the giants of our struggle like the first president of the African National Congress, John Langalibale Lekube, this prepared him for leadership, was a passionate advocate for the institution of leadership and especially traditional leadership. He was also a champion for the rights of women and rural communities. Umabushenge fought for the preservation of not only Zulu custom and culture, but all indigenous cultures in South Africa. He promoted and respected all kinships in our country, not only the Zulu monarchy, Many of us have been enjoying the beautifully crafted production of the television series Shaka Ilem that chronicles the history of King Shaka and the formation of the Zulu Kingdom. Aware of the deep well of knowledge that he possessed, the producers of the show I'm told sought counsel from Ushenge and the late Isilo Samabanda of Goodwill Zeliti. His contribution to this production is one of the many cultural endowments that he leaves behind for the benefit of future generations. It is programs like these that teach our children about the heroic acts of our ancestors. It is the music of groups like Lady Smith, Black Mambazo, that taught the world about our great culture through the work of Schenge's great friend, Professor Kabim Goma. We saw European classical music fused with African music, gaining respect from music lovers from across the globe. His interests as a leader and a prince of the Butelezi clan made him realize that our destinies as South Africans are connected as Amazul, Masutu, Amakosa, Bavenda, Batsonga, Bapedi, Batswana, Amandebele, Amaswati, the Koi and San Africanas and English speakers, rural and urban dwellers, men and women, young and old. It was Sushang who said, We have our own history our own language, our own culture, but our destiny is also tied up with the destinies of other people. History has made us all South Africans. A few years ago, Prince Butelezi and I attended a beautiful cultural celebration in Toyando in Venda, in Limpopo, arranged amongst others by Chief 
Ribuane Matsira, we were both enthralled by the rich display of cultural dance and musical diversity of and from the Bavenda, Batsonga, Bapedi, Balobedu, and Mapulani. Like me, he was deeply touched and impressed with the depth of diversity and wealth in our collective cultural heritage. We both decided that we would want to have a display and celebration of all our cultures in the form of a national event or provincial event that would display these cultures and that they should be held in our provinces on a rotation basis. I do hope that we will still be able to do this. I tell this story because Umtuana Wagapindangene loved music and dance, particularly the music of Amabuto, who have been in great display and splendor today. Through these cultural expressions, he told stories that have been passed on from generations. Umduana was a voice also for the marginalized and the vulnerable. Who can forget his courage when having to deal with deeply personal matters that affected the vulnerable people in our societies? On International AIDS Day, on the 1st of December 2004, when he told the world that HIV AIDS had struck inside his own family, taking away two of his children. With this act, he helped to break the stigma around HIV AIDS, saying, my belief in the glory of the human spirit to rise again and again is stronger than ever before. Ushenge agazanga abakwa se abantu abapetwe isi fo singulas. Shenge like Ilembe was deeply connected to his mother. Just as we cannot tell the story of Ilembe without relating the story of Queen Nandi. We cannot understand what shaped Schengen's worldwide worldview without considering the influence of Princess Magogo on his life. Because of great respect for his mother, he abhorred violence against women and children. He used his prominent position to speak out against men who perpetrate heinous crimes against women and children. One of the lessons we take from the life of Ushenge was that as a leader, he was willing to collaborate across the political divide. At a political level, we did not always agree. We often found ourselves on opposing sides of one or other issue. He never shied away from a harsh word, a criticism, or form of voicing his dissent. I have always admired his commitment to finding common ground amongst political leaders and parties, particularly between the IFP and the ANC. 29 years ago, on the eve of the first elections in our country, South Africa stood on the brink of catastrophe. Despite the excitement building up to the historic the country was in turmoil, raked by a spiral of political violence
that had begun in the mid-80s. The country was also under threat from a right-wing uprising and from so-called third force elements sowing discord amongst our people. Why we sikati so bunzi ma impela? Why sikati esibutungu kakul? Many people were displaced from their homes. Many people died. Today is not a day to point fingers and cast blame. History will, in the end, be the true arbiter. There were genuine, well-founded fears that in such a climate, the transition to democracy would not happen peacefully. Through negotiations and serious engagement, we were able to step back from the brink of turmoil. And today we have two leaders who played a key role together with Ubabu Shenge, taking us away from the brink of turmoil. Former President Thabo Mbeki and former President Uzuma. They played a key role in ensuring that indeed our transition was a peaceful one. And I applaud them and we should recognize the very important role that these two leaders played at that time. All parties involved in the negotiation process participated in the historic elections that ushered our democracy. Ushenge would later say that he had agreed that the IFP should also participate in the elections not only to avoid disaster and reduce tension, but to contribute to peace. There can be no doubt that this was a turning point in the transition process and a decisive moment. All leaders understood too well that we share a common goal of a better South Africa. As ANC Secretary General and later as the Chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly, we both, together with Ubabu Sheng, shared many moments during the tumultuous transition period, as he did with the other leaders that I've also mentioned. Over the years, we had many more conversations, many engagements, and many late night talks. We also corresponded and spoke often right until his final days. He was not a man who let burning issues slide, and he was not afraid to speak truth to power. And yet, as I have said, the spirit of camaraderie, respect, empathy, and understanding of the immense difficulties we face in rebuilding this country defined all our interactions. He had respect for authority, the authority of the state, and defended the institutions of our democratic order. He was always there when we needed to consult with traditional leaders. It was President Nelson Mandela who said, it is easy to break down and destroy. The heroes are those who make peace and build. In his long and illustrious life, he served in several positions, but one of the high points in his life was serving as a minister in President Mandela's cabinet when President Mbeki was the deputy president. When he was asked by President Mandela to act as president, 
on several occasions. This demonstrated the trust and confidence that the founders of our democracy had in history. At certain points in our history, there were deep divisions between the two leaders, but they did reconcile and make peace for the sake of building our country. Prince Butelezi took time to express to me his desire to see the IFP and the ANC permanently reconciled and working together to build our country. For this, he earned my admiration. We carry the heavy weight of memories and many heartaches regarding what we have been through as a people. But difficult as it may be right now, it is important that we fulfill the wishes he had for a sustainable and durable reconciliation, not only between the IFP and the ANC, but amongst all of us as the people of South Africa. On this, Schenge and Nelson Mandela were of the same mind. The legacy they have both left us is their enduring dream for reconciliation, for peace and progress for our great nation. Umdua Anau Schenge was a defender of our constitutional order and served proudly as a member of parliament in our democratic dispensation. He was robust in his critique, but also genuine in his praise. I believe I can speak on behalf of the members of our parliament and our national speaker when I say that we will miss his legendary eloquence, the care and diligence and attention to detail with which he performed his duties as a member of parliament. As an elder statesman, he carried his duties with great dignity. Many will testify that they can still hear his voice permeating through the National Assembly, eloquently exhorting all members of parliament to uphold the principles and values of our constitution and democratic order, and to do so with discipline, with a decorum and respect that is fitting for our station and status as members of parliament in respect also to the people of South Africa. In his spoken and written words, he always expressed the essence of a deep and enduring commitment to our democratic values. Without a commitment to change, there can be no reconciliation. Without reconciliation, there can be no unity. And without unity, there can be no peace. Our road to democracy was not easy, but the future is now ours to make. It is a common future of equality, shared prosperity, justice, and a better life for all that we must build. As political parties, we have to work for unity. We have to put aside our differences, as Ushenge wished, here in KwaZulu-Natal and around the country for the sake of building our nation. We have a duty to follow in the footsteps of the great many leaders who came before that Schenge respected and admired, who found in themselves to put aside political and other rivalries for the sake of the common good. One speaks here of leaders Ushenge respected deeply 
such as John Langalebale Le Dube, Nkosi Albert Lutuli, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Pixley Kaisa Kaseme, Oliver Tambo, Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela, and many other luminaries whose ability to forge alliances across the political divide, to reconcile and to make peace added to their towering stature. When he stepped down as the IFP president in 2019, he said that his greatest sadness is that he will not be among the men and women who will cross into the promised land of social and economic justice. These solemn words should increase our resolve as government, political leaders and political parties, and as well as all of society, to realize the vision of a united South Africa. What Schengen's life has taught us is that our differences must never stand in the way of our South African nationality and our nationalism. Like many of us, Ushenge endured many trials throughout his life, yet he remained focused and steadfast. The Butelezi family have suffered an irreparable personal loss. But as they go through this valley of darkness and sorrow, it is my wish that as a family, they should hold on to the proud and enduring memories of their father and grandfather. We share in their sorrow, and I know that they would wish us to share with them the many rich remembrances that an impactful leader like Ubaba Ushenge evokes. May the my Almighty grant the family strength as they go through this difficult time. I would like them to remember the saying that those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and held so dear. To the Butelezi family, so should it be with your father, your grandfather, and your beloved Shenge. Let his forefathers and God who loved give him the crown of life he did not take easy steps in his life he showed wisdom and courage we too as a people have not taken easy steps or easy roads forging unity building bridges of tolerance and understanding and reconciling our differences for the sake of our beloved country is what we are called upon to do as leaders and the people of South Africa. Let us look to the future with faith, with hope, with tolerance, and with a focus on what unites us. Indeed, History has made us all South Africans. I would now say Hambaga Shenge, Hambaga Shemfoga Matole, to Duzegani Mantuana, Baga Pinangen, Nessis, the song is Swabutelis, Agusiena Uzu, Lugupela, Ola Shegelwe. Is a long la lapa and in Zim Africa, Lia Kal, Meti Hambagate, Ngosi, Yagob Tilis, Gabonga, Sizabuya Sibona, and Maslangana, Melinilan. Thank you.
No, it's not on. Sibonge kakhulu. Thank you. Sibonge kakhulu kumongameli u President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. Sibonge kakhulu ifemeli yakwabuthelezi. Sibonge kakhulu the Butelezi clan also. Sibonge kakhulu i royal family abantwana amazinyane silo sibonge kakhulu iinkosi zezigodi ngezigodi sibonge kakhulu wonke ama traditional leaders akhona sibonge kakhulu o president bamandulu abakhona sibonge wonke ama political party leaders akhona sibonge Nalabo ba masonto, ama leaders wa masonto. Iga kuluga zisbonge oko oko nomkulu. Sbonge bong abantu abatate ituba loguza nga panamlanje. Kulo msebenzi omkulu. Sbonge futi singa kotla nokbonga. The Guazulu Philharmonic Orchestra. Ete ya snigeza induduzo. Sipinde sbonge nekwaya. Namlange na yo es nigeze induduzo. Owa mum sebenzi upelela la. My part of what I was supposed to do ends here. Ntela ugutge. I must hand over to the South African National Defence Force ceremonial elements. Esizo. Uchaplain General. Thank you, Chaplain General. Please come through to process the next chapter. May I request that we keep silence for a moment? Silence for a moment, please. Just two legs, please. Ogukulu is Toba, and yet na umundo fnega kulume na mabuto. Amabuto ane induna zau ni atela se atelu guti. Kubeno tula, kubeno silence. Ngumsebenzo fnega wenzi we manje. Umsebenzo ofunu guti sis Toba ga kulu. Stella bonge abesha benyu ga gebe tugu maganane. Agesnigez uchaplain general ituba. Loguti aukete umsebenz. Ela indu na ngapo. Keni batuli senba misenje. Kebe mega ngane. Siabonga. The commander in chief. Honorable President Cyril. Ramaphosa, we are ready to conclude the official part of this special funeral service. I will rest on the protocol that has been mentioned and say on behalf of the Defense Force to the Wutelezi family condolences. Again, pass the condolences on behalf of all the religious groups that are represented in the Defense Force, and a special mention of the Muslim community and the Hindu community. And lastly, to say to the Butelezi family, we are with you during this difficult time. Mr. President, say, with all that has been said, my observation today is one. The best gift that you can give to people is peace. If all of us as leaders can manage to give peace to those whom we lead, the world will be a better place. Allow me then to call upon the following Paul Bras and Beras 
as we prepare to march out of this stadium. The poll bearers are as follows. Brigadier General D.M. Madie, Brigadier General J.G. Maso, Brigadier General N.G. Kredite, Brigadier General M.M. Njomo, Rear Admiral Junior Great Krill, Rear Admiral Junior Great Lamini, Brigadier General Mbiza, and Brigadier General Luke. The bearers are as follows. Master Warrant Officer Mshanzi, Master Warrant Officer Kumete, Master Warrant Officer Nchwanchwe, Master Warrant Officer Madumani, Master Warrant Officer Muren, Master Warrant Officer Mangele, Master Warrant Officer Dube, and Master Warrant Officer Mutawung. The Warrant Officer in Charge, Chief Warrant Officer Majoko. the national anthem once it's played all the songs to cease immediately And as the clouds gather and the weather changes over the Prince Mangosudu Butelezi Regional Stadium, it's almost a manifestation of what President Cyril Ramaphosa alluded to in his eulogy. The sun has set on an era and life that had an impact on the modern history of this country. <laughs> The great, the giant tree has fallen, as uh, they've been saying, Mzwai. And one of the things that obviously comes out is, you know, a lot of them talk about him as someone who spoke the truth, no matter how uncomfortable. Absolutely. As someone who is an elder, uh, you are expected to be forthright. And I that, uh, the president tried to uh, project about um, how he was and um, as we were listening to the president uh, go through the roles that he played and obviously why he granted him this uh, special official funeral he did indeed highlight some of the uh, big moments for him um, uh, in South Africa the issue of um, him coming out openly on the HIV and AIDS uh, for his children, I think that was big. He also mentioned 
how he was a champion of rights for women and not only women for rural communities as well and it talks to everything we we heard uh, in our short stay here in Uluni from the very people on the ground um, signaling him or, or, or citing him as a champion of the people. So the national anthem will be sung in a few minutes. We will pause for that.
Ulaezo, Uti, Amaboto, I have a office in the IFP. Yetemba, Nelazi office, Linga Gopi. Ulaezo, Loy. Stella Nivule in Lela, Nivule in Lela, Nazi, Mojo, Zemba, when Stella Nivule in Lela.
as the coffin makes its way outside of the Mangasudu Butelezi Regional Stadium. I was just thinking, we've been on air for about around seven hours or so. We came on air at nine o'clock and not many people have moved since. Uh, speaks to the respect that many have for the man who braved the earlier on the heat and now as the weather changes the cold a dignified send-off and as the president said he was dignity personified and listening blame to just as i got closer to the crowd one elderly woman says thank you god for preserving me that i actually saw this moment it speaks to what she had been waiting for and for her this is quite a big moment I'm sorry. as they have been saying ordinary people as we have been mingling with them they have been saying yes we've left us we hope those who are left behind will do exactly like you did and as he leaves the prince mangosu to regional stadium one can't help he's leaving it for the last time the stadium probably he would have come here to speak to the many people here one thinks you know just a moment where a number of them and even amabuto are saying shenge so walisa nyama nagangangelele pungashe sondi it is indeed uh, an end of an era so that we are witnessing because when you look at his contemporaries and then those when you listen to the president saying what is it that they did despite the political differences but they somehow managed to craft that transition that will produce the kind of South Africa that we have today. Mm. Uh, you know, speaking about Amabuto, uh, the president did, did allude to it in his speech as well of Schengen's love for music and dance and mostly you know the music from Amabuto and they've been very present in today's proceedings isn't it very very present signifying his role as a chief as a traditional leader and of course the traditional prime minister of the Zulu nation and it is that um, you know very position the, the last one uh, um, so I, of, of the prime minister of the Amazulu nation that is going to be watched by many people now to see whether or not anyone who replaces him can do even just a fraction of what a lot of people say he did for the nation and whether or not the king actually goes into the Butele clan and picks one or does he look was a completely different direction. Quite interesting because um, Butelezi took over from his father's grandfathers. They have been appointed traditional prime ministers. And more interesting again is that towards the end of his days, uh, the late Butelezi, there was no love lost between the two of them. But as we've been saying, he who crowns the king does not necessarily rule him. How do you think in his passing uh, would contribute or have any impact in terms of the issues that remain unresolved within the royal household? What sort of impact would this passing have in terms of that? It, it will have some impact. Remember, they were still waiting for an affidavit from him. It is... Um, very interesting how the courts are going to be approaching this. In terms of the nation or in terms of the Zulu nation, the issue is in inverted commas resolved. Because if you are the king, you are not just the king of yourself, you are the king of the people. They have voted with their feet, with their say, with their word that King Mrs. Zulu is their king. Now, courts which are the final arbiters still have to resolve this matter with him gone with that institutional knowledge with that wise counsel he would have provided so it is very curious to see the remaining members of the family what is it that they will do because they we know it's public knowledge that uh, there are disagreements on a number of issues there
And it's, it's interesting you mention also just the family as well because the other aspect of this, and I was listening to Umduana Uutulan who was speaking to Simpiwe, um, our colleague, just last week, saying that one of the issues is not only just the relations that appear to be fra having been fractured between the two, but also what we saw, remember when he had that four hour uh, or more longer uh, press conference where he was talking about the issues around the Gonyama Trust. And Umduana Uutulan was saying, that he actually wishes that even that particular issue, because it's something that he crafted, it's something that he held very close to his heart, should have been resolved. Exactly. I think you and I just said, Ingunyama Trust is the brainchild of the late Mutilis. Clearly, he would have wanted to see it proceed in a particular manner. You have the new king who may see differently. In fact, on the chairperson, they've already seen differently. So, and what does that mean? I guess the the maturity of the royal house, and then of course how the king approaches this, will determine the way forward. Yeah. As the coffin now leaves behind the gun carriage, uh, it will make its way towards the ceremony, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, the cemetery, uh, which is at the uh, Prince Butelezi's home, uh, immediately we understand the family and the president will be uh, present there. The removal of the national flag from the coffin by the South African National Defense Force and then the handing over of the national flag to a family representative. Then obviously Bongi uh, will hear the last post and the river sounded. I must say, what has also been interesting Glenn, to even watch here is how um, at this official funeral, it, it, it has been a marvel to see how every aspect of him is, yeah. is, is, is accommodated. Mm -hmm. From him being a grandfather, um, seeing his grandkids speaking, seeing his son, seeing um, you know the church, seeing Amabuto as well as government, as well as the IFP, um, you know, the, the national simply represented as well. So it's interesting to, to just to see that balance that had to be struck as well. Yeah. Speaking about balance, uh, as political editor of the SABC, Mzondi Limbeche, listening with a keen ear, how do you think the President of the Republic balanced his eulogy today? He said that uh, one of the lessons that we can learn from uh, Prince Butelezi as a leader, he was willing to collaborate across the political divide. What do you make of his speech? I think the president um, was very cautious um, in his uh, address, in his eulogy. He touched on the points that everyone agrees on. He basically spoke about his role. He spoke a bit extensively on his role as a traditional leader. And of course, his role in terms of a uh, service um, to, to, to the community. So those are easy. When it came to uh, issues of politics, which we know will be a big bone of contention, he again skillfully and carefully highlighted his role, where he himself, that is the, the, the late uh, Dr. Pelez and the late Nelson Mandela, uh, former President Mandela, so disagreed, but somehow found a way as they were busy crafting the new transition. So I thought it was very um, clear and careful. And of course, hammered on the issue of reconciliation. Yeah. So that told you that, yes, there are the wounds of the past. Perhaps this may not be the time to speak about those. And earlier on, we were when we were speaking to uh, Blaise Sekwala, yes. the IFP chairperson, he actually spoke about these documents that they would have handed over to the president uh, in that particular regard but he wouldn't be drawn as to say what's contained in those documents and and he was answering the question around the reconciliation yes. and all he could say was yes these are things that as soon as they find themselves in the media they get blown out of proportion there's so much that gets said but one thing that is is going to be interesting here is how does the IFP begin to 
have this conversation of reconciliation and versus the multi-party charter and versus the internal dynamics within the IFP itself as it looks ahead towards uh, 2024? I think they have um, maybe two choices um, in this regard. Um, they either use this uh, because we are months away from elections. They either use this as a rallying point to get their base and the sympathizers to go out and vote. Their wish is to reclaim this province, KZN. That is the first thing that they can do, rally behind um, using this. Or the true character and nature of human beings is likely to also come out. Many people among you and Blaine so wouldn't voice some of their disagreements because out of respect for Butelis. Yes, he's no more now. People have ambitions. By the very nature of human beings, we are selfish beings. And then there would be people who say, well, I'm almost there. The one that I respected is no more. If they do that, they are likely to drop because the differences that will play themselves out will make it very, very difficult to survive. Yeah. And on the you know, issue of reconciliation, we had Ben Kosini Klebisa on the program you know, giving us some context in terms of what it actually means. And he was saying that it's a pity that uh, Prince Butele, as he passed on before, that dream could be realized, but he's made it you know, part of the agenda of the IP to reconcile. But the definition of reconciliation that he gave was that it's not a joining of two political parties into one, rather it is a healing of wounds, of old wounds, and moving forward. As we watch now, the cortege moving to the cemetery, which is the Butulesi home, uh, it is not that far uh, from where we are in terms of the stadium. It's about five to seven kilometers, but there's, it's very hilly, uh, so it could take some time. We have a reporter there as well, Natasha Piri, uh, stationed there. She'll bring us the very latest as soon as the cortege reaches uh, near the gates there. Um, but it is, as I said, at the top of nine o'clock. It is the magnitude of the moment, uh, the history, the this day in history that we are currently experiencing. And quite significant that even at this particular moment, the weather turns, um, it changes. And interestingly, even yesterday, uh, Mzwandili, was the fact that, uh, you know, as they made their way back from the mortuary, to, to, to his home um, with Amabuto, the time at which they got to the gate and they got to get inside the yard was, was quite key because it was neither too light yeah. nor dark. It was just the perfect time. Oh yes, um, the belief systems uh, that permeate throughout uh, our societies. So that, that was significant because um, you don't want to bring bad luck, so you, you, you have to act in a particular way. So the, those, those are some of the belief systems as part of um, these communities, um, as part of South Africa, as part of our own diversity as well. Someone may think it's insignificant, but to some it matters because that's what they believe in. And it's actually very interesting um, when you see that cottage, I mean, through this, um, through this town. You know, he actually is credited for creating or rather building the township here in Olundi. As he's walking through this area, the stadium is named after him. He's walking through the township in which he helped to build. So clearly, his DNA has always been part and parcel of this place and then of course spread across to the bigger South Africa. Yeah. In fact, uh, Velen Kosini Tlabisa in his speech here today said that uh, through his leadership, Prince Butulezi built around 6,000 classrooms, among many other things in terms of 
how he wanted to uplift, especially rural communities uh, throughout the country. And a lot of reflections, I suppose, even um, on a day like this, on, on, on that legacy that we were, we've been talking about throughout the day, um, you know, just how different people remember him in different ways. And, and, and even as his family even said, at some point to say to us he was a father, and we do understand mm. just that contest, contested space of, of his legacy. But for us as a family, we remember him as our father. And it's interesting uh, that at the same time, as he heads to Kwapina again, that's where he would have spent decades, um, you know, also with his beloved Princess Irene. Over nine decades, eh? Over nine decades. Yeah. That's quite. That's quite uh, a time. And you know, when you also <coughs> look at um, the kind of going to refer back to the president. I mean, as a traditional leader, yes, he fought for the recognition of this relation. But what 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 happened in the process was that. Um, you then started to instill in others in South Africa to say, um, as South African chief, chiefdoms or kingdoms, we need to be respected. He even made an example of him a couple of years ago attending um, in, 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 in the Bobo in Venda. So that is the kind of an impact I guess uh, he would have made um, even in the kingdoms or the traditional leadership across the country, despite that he had used that which he belonged to. But in the process, others get away. Now from our vantage point, we're watching it on monitors, it looks like the cortege has stopped. Uh, we're not too sure as to why. We did see that the ceremonial guard split off to the left-hand side. Um, I can only assume, and this is only an assumption, that they want to make their way maybe quicker due to the weather, but that's not the first an assumption of my part. But we will keep and get some dead info. Maybe we can reach out to reporters on the ground and, and find out the reason why this is paused uh, at, at that point there. So I guess in terms of the political question, is what now for the IFP? Um, what sort of difference will the passing of Prince Botelezi make um, for the party's fortune? How will they navigate through that? Yes, I mean, he is, um, in terms of their last uh, resolution, they had decided that he was going to be the face of the campaign. I don't know whether he would have the courage to change that now that he's no more, but I suspect they may just use it as a rallying point. But now, I know they want perhaps to speak about this so early, but the reality of life. We know that um, a couple of weeks ago, there was some attempted challenge to the leadership of the incumbent. We know that the IFP Youth Brigade has come out very clearly to say we are not for this short pact or you call it charter now. Given that even when he was still present, they were able to speak about those things. So what will stop them from saying them now, um, even loudly? And, and you know also one wonders then... Uh Mzwai, is he vulnerable as, as you look at these particular challenges from inside? Is he in a vulnerable position? I wouldn't necessarily say he's in a vulnerable position, but I would basically say um, his position may be more challengeable than it could have been when President was still around. And... Uh Mzai, as uh, we are seated here, we're trying to grab the attention of some of the guests who were in attendance as uh, they are walking past and we're trying to just grab uh, as many of them. And here she is, um, 
we've managed to <laughs> find <laughs> one plane. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we do have with us um, I can see you're very emotional. Talk to us about what's on your mind now. What, what, what reflections do you have at this moment? Because we were listening to some people, you know, some of those who are in the community. For them, they were saying, this is such a powerful moment, but it's also emotional at the same time, to not imagine him around this community. And I can see you are clearly, clearly emotional. him. He belonged to a different party from mine, but our bond was was very strong. And I suppose he grew up in the era of the Mandelas and Susudus and all of those things. And he took it upon himself to take me he took it upon himself to take me through governance issues. Um, I've always looked up to him and I've always found in him a, a deep desire for a reunification between themselves and the ANC because that's where he traces his origins but I, I owe him a great deal of gratitude for helping me understand governance for helping me deliver some things needed to be delivered and I'm glad that he had me because he I was a daughter to him so all the things he wanted done he could say well you know you go and do them and um, yeah it's a sad end what do you think his passing means given the current state of play that the country is in what do you think his passing means in terms of the trajectory that the country is going to go to what do you think he would have passing, thought? His passing means, what sort of void does it leave in this country? Well, I think we all know we belong together. And I think all of us feel that we should have come together sooner. I think he would have left a little more relieved if we had all come together. There really was nothing dividing us. He was one of us. He grew up in the ANC um, tradition. Uh, he had taken a deliberate uh, position in relation to uh, the Zulu nation. It didn't necessarily have to divide us, but um, I think that we went through a very difficult path between the ANC and the IFP during the early stages. Afterwards, I think we all looked back and wondered why did we have to go through that? but it made our bond a little stronger because we knew by the time we found each other that we could um, work together and we did work together. And he was the more mature because he had had the experience of governance which most of us didn't have. And uh, you know, talking about relationship, um, as you say, in the early stages, there were some difficult moments. And it's also led to a lot of um, different opinions one would say about his legacy a contested space as some are calling it and for others it's a negative for others it's a positive and I wonder um, where do you stand particularly in light of what people have been saying to say that don't sanitize history for us he was someone who you know propagated for a battle but for others who are saying no he actually is a liberator. When I met him he knew exactly what he stood for. strongly about ownership of land. He felt very strongly about
about the rights of the Zulu people to land and maybe that might have been where the difference was, I'm not sure. But uh, we did allow an unfortunate situation when there was antagonism between the IFP and the ANC. And all of us look back now and wonder, why did we have to go through that? We are one people. He belonged to the ANC. That's where he grew up. That's what, that's the, that's the ideology he held dear. Uh, he thought of Madiba as his older brother. Uh, he, he loved me because of my father. Uh, and I think it was just an unfortunate uh, period of um, agitation and anger and misunderstanding and talking past each other. Ultimately, he was ANC. This is where he grew up. And um, I'm glad that we are all here to see him off. He contributed immensely to our understanding of government. He contributed immensely in Parliament to sobering all of us. And he contributed immensely to just, you know, saying we can find a way because we are one people. And as for me, I loved him because he was like a father to me and he treated me like a daughter. And I felt... Um, yeah, shattered when I when I heard he died. Consistency combined with humility and accountability. I think it's a pretty good recipe for a good leader. To what extent did he embody those attributes? To what extent did he? Did he embody those attributes? Did he embody those? He did. He was an extremely upright man. He was the kind of man who would not. Um, turn away because uh, he couldn't solve a problem. He was a man who would be upfront about, let's solve this problem. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was a man of integrity. I mean, that kind of encompasses everything. Integrity, tenacity, and uh, ability to forgive and um, put back what was in the past and put it at the back of his mind. I really had hoped that by the time he, he departs this world, he would have gone back to being a member of the ANC together with the IP because that's where he comes from. But anyway, we will have to find a way with the IFP of making sure that we all of us live up to what he would have wanted to see in us. The last thing he had ever wanted to see in us is the kind of violence that did, you know, start uh, and ended up completely out of control. But towards the end, I think that we were finding each other. And I think now, now must be the time when we have found each other. And that finding each other, that what does it look like at a practical level? Because it, it, it does seem like different people are saying different things. For you, what does it look like? What it looks like is here we are celebrating a man all of us know um, was um, what was a liberator, uh, but the way he went around um, his own notion of liberation might have differed from the ANC. But we've come full circle now. There is no, there never was any need for any differences between us. What he believed in is exactly what we believe in. Perhaps the methods changed, but we're here now and going on from here, we all came together to grieve somebody we all loved, somebody we all, um, I looked up to um, because he was a father figure. And perhaps um, there's, perhaps there's an end to all the madness we've been through when now we come to the end and bury somebody all of us loved and somebody we all respected and somebody who you know saw in each one of us yeah. um, something that he would have wanted to to leave behind so all the differences we've had behind I hope they'll be buried today 
Minister, we thank you very much indeed for your time. I know the weather is turning, so we thank don't you, want you to get caught in that. Thank Appreciate you. your thoughts. Um, you know, it, it was a befitting farewell, no doubt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. We know we stopped you as you were heading out to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to the cemetery, but thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. It. Uh, that is ANC uh, by the former minister, Dindiwe uh, Sisulu. And interestingly, as we reflect on this, you know, one thinks about blame, um, the, the, the part that unfolds right now, and also, yes, we know it's the third part of the, the program and all of that, but yeah. it'll also be interesting, um, you know, hopefully we get to speak to a cultural expert about what happens yeah. now, and even with the family, and how then do they also chart their own way forward. Yeah. So it'll, it'll actually be very interesting, but also interesting what she says, because it, it, there seems to be different views about how this process of reconciliation yeah. happens. Yes, you know, you yes, think yes. about um, when the Speaker of the National Assembly was speaking, for example, saying, yes, we must put this matter to bed. Some in the crowd were kind of disapproving. Yeah. But, for, but she says, yes, it must be done. And you listen to the leader of the IFP saying it's about healing the wounds. Mm. And then you listen to others saying, we hope he had taken up his membership yes. again so it's yes. quite interesting we will see how that unfolds and somebody that is bound to be watching that very closely in this province is one of the hardest working journalists in this province uh, ayanda mklongo joins us now live ayanda when you see uh, this cortege heading back home uh, to the cemetery for the final resting place uh, your thoughts on the week's proceedings <laughs> it certainly has been um, a long week, Blaine. You remember that um, when we heard the news, we in fact were um, on the main road on our way to the Reed Dance. And um, when we heard the news that he had passed, we obviously, there was that, that shock. We knew that um, Prince Mungo Sutuptiles had not been well. I mean, we've been reporting that he'd been in and out of hospital, and we'd continuously been monitoring um, his progress. And the ham family was hopeful. And so it was the last thing on our minds. In fact, we were just stunned. Um, immediately stopped on the side of the road, uh, checked with the family. Even when we received the statement that he had passed, it still just, it, um, it, 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 we just felt as if it, it was untrue. It was only, of course, until we got to the family home. And I think for us, it was um, when we saw the hearse come in into the family home to come and prepare and collect his body that uh, it really did sink in that okay he has now passed away and then just from that it's just it's um it's been a really really long week particularly for the family um but i think you know conversations are with them and they've been so gracious i mean i think this is what they've taken from their father they've been so humble they've opened up their home um we've attended uh, funerals of many political leaders leaders and the treatment that we have received as the members of the media from the Butlezi family um, has been you know we've never received such such treatment they've been open they've been willing to talk to us and considering what you know the amount of work that needed to go into this funeral there were so many things that the family needed to consider um, while we were waiting for the government to decide Despite all they still had the time to be able to speak to us, but also to speak uh, to South To pay homage um, from political party leaders, civil society organizations, football um, clubs, you, you name it. But I think what stood out um, during the course of the week has been the ordinary people. Uh, when we joined, when I came into journalism, we only knew Ngozi Mangoso Tupelezi as a politician. Um, and so for the years, it's always been our interviews have always been about the IFP. And so we've really never had the other side um, of him. Um, we know him a politician, we know the good and the bad, obviously considering the history of the province of Guazul Natal. But this opened our eyes to a different picture of the man that we did not know. Yes.
the humble man. And these are the stories and the anecdotes that were coming from the ordinary community members, the men in the village close to Guapindangen, the amongst the first um, to get to his home. And many of them, if you looked in, in, in their faces, just said it all. They were lost. And one old man saying, um, it's a dark day. And so he said that he had hoped that he would go first um, and because he wanted Prince Mangosu Tuktelezi to continue uh, to grow the village to develop the village and many of their conversations that they've that they had he had so many plans uh, to further develop uh, this area also from the woman as well um, he was as much as as traditional as he was he was very open to uh, a woman and to wanting to see women uh, transform yeah. and so they also spoke about that um, that aspect that in traditional leadership today you see Amakosi, um, female, uh, females who are now uh, traditional leaders and that's all through the role that uh, he played. You had widows come through saying that previously or back in the days women were not allowed to run their homesteads, women were not allowed to own land and it was through the works and the efforts of Prince Mangosu Tuptelezi that women are now able to own, to own land. And so I think it's those stories that really uh, we got to see the the side um, of, of, of this man. We got to see the other side of the statesman that we'd known for so many years, the little side, the humble side. Um, and so I think that, that that is what really stood out uh, for me personally as we reported during the course of the week. And I suppose, Ayanda, one of the things that, you know, from what you've, you've just said about him, one would then ask, looking at the funeral proceedings and what has happened so far, how much of, of um, each aspect were you able to spot of the man, particularly in his cell? Well, you, you, when you first started, um, you know, the, the broadcast today, both of you were speaking about how he wore different hats. You know, the different, uh, the, he, he was different, uh, he was uh, a different person to different people and the role that he played. And I think we've seen that and the family has done well in ensuring that, um, that nothing is left out of what he stood for we knew he was a religious very very yeah. religious and we saw from the onset even from the moment that his body was taken out of the home immediately um, reverend the reverend Musa Zondi was amongst the religious leaders that uh, um, did the prayer at home to uh, as his body was being taken uh, to the mortuary we saw the re religious leaders walking in the front immediately after them we so the traditional leaders, the regent of the Butelezi clan, he was leading and chanting the Butelezi um, uh, 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 clan songs, um, uh, 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 and with a few other of the traditional leaders and behind them were members of his family so I think just looking at that picture um, we're able to see um, Butelezi the religious leader Butelezi the traditional leader and Butelezi the family man and then after that of course was the politicians that came um, in their numbers and then we saw Butelezi the, pol the politician so uh, in every aspect um, as we've uh, during the course of this week we've really seen and the family have paid careful attention uh, to ensuring that uh, nothing is left out. Yeah. We saw the role that was played by Amabuto as well and we knew, I mean, uh, to see the numbers of the the Amazulu regiments that came out here today, of course he was their commander-in-chief, so yeah. to speak, um, uh, uh, and so to see them come out as well and also for the family to ensure that they also got given um, a space to be able to perform the rituals that na they needed to do so that they could give him a send-off as well. And then equally his second family, the IFP, um, and the role that they've played. Yesterday, seeing the thousands and thousands of IFP supporters that have come out. In fact, well, they've been at the family, a family home for the past week, but there too, even at the mortuary,
and meet with the family. Of course, there's still going to be a mourning period, which takes about three months or so, depending on what the on what the family says. But there is going to be a mourning period, and I think only after that mourning period will the 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 uh, members of or the senior members of the Butelezi clan then come together. The regent is there, so it's it's not like they've been left without a, a leader within the clan. The regent um, is there. We've seen his role throughout um, uh, this uh, uh, week. Uh, and so, so he will continue up until the clan then sits and decides um, what is going, who will then uh, take over the Butelezi clan in consultation, of course, with uh, His Majesty the King, Mrs. Zulu. As we wrap things up, you know, thinking back to earlier on with the church service, um, it's mainly an opportunity to no doubt express grief, but also give thanks to a life that has now completed its journey on this earth. It's really been one of those moments of deep reflection and I suppose the IFP, as we've been talking about it, yeah. is in fact going to be in deep reflection about the way forward as they lay him to rest because it's not only just about laying him to rest, yeah. it's also about what lies ahead for the future. No doubt, our coverage will continue. We have our reporter Natasha Piri, political reporter, SABC political reporter stationed at the home so she will be giving you updates with regards to the final part of this but that's it from us here at the Mangasutu Butelezi Regional Stadium in Ulundi. Thank you so much for keeping us company. Francis it's back to you in studio there's still quite a lot that lies ahead tonight. What we get from Abu is that they're now waiting here outside. They're going to continue uh, to sing um, um, and uh, sing and chant Muslim uh, uh, songs as, of course, they await the uh, family thereafter. The uh, senior me lead members of the Abu Talezi clan and the senior uh, headsmen are then going to accompany the family inside the uh, mortuary where rituals will then be uh, performed. They are of uh, Prince Mangus. makes his way home of course just um, looking around here and Zinga, we've also seen quite a large number of ip members that uh, have also started uh, to um, arrive here outside the mortuary let me move up here and see if we can just uh, speak to uh, some of the amazon regiments that are here today just to get a word in for them um, earlier on we were speaking to indunum thongo who was saying that this is indeed a really difficult time uh, for uh, for them having now lost one the longest serving traditional uh, prime minister of the Amazon nation and the role that uh, Prince Mangosotu Butele played in traditional leadership um, in this country. Let's now speak to Uba Mnyandeni and just to get his word um, on the 
loss of the traditional um, minister. Ms. Lantian has long ago come by his cat sack, come camp again, put on a mask. I come back when I go to the club and go to the club. Yes, it's a massacre. I'm from the city to Mele. See Kalela Umdin, your obtains, and this is our tennis, make them the IFP, and this is a song. See Kalela Ganati, Begna, you know what tennis, what a begum was seized. More women seven, the Akea INZ, the INZ, the season. As as we tell us, Kala, Banilo also was Valalis Kalas, it's a true Zakabezin Kuga pool. Born <laughs> Marriage, a a Mabutu, a Kubega, a higher issue, Ibong with a reptilian name, go Manjasagazulu, Exalaganja. Jenga Manje, Amahubo, Amabutu, Ayahuba, a Linde, Luguti, Ufige, Umdeni, a Bese Umzimba, Wengosi, Uyaki, Shala, Pusuya, Escorjin, Wa Pindange. As a figure for Tamaya Mabutu, a corner, a sentinel, Koratinas, Linde, Jabaka, and Lindwang, a who a Kufane legacy. Katagate, even is only tea. We are commander, we are in Guyamalo, or we are in Oslang and Zella Panam Sanji. As Linda Lutilama, who will die of Huayen, a Colela Guan, and a co final sequence, a looking over Musuzu to Tina Lona Nai. Next to the main entrance of the Wapindangan residence, as of course, uh, that has carrying the body of uh, Prince Mangosutu Mutelezi is also, you know, approaching the main gate of uh, his home. Uh, from here, Francis, we believe uh, that once the body has entered the residence, then there is going to be some family rituals uh, that are going to be performed by the family. This, of course, leading up to the uh, 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 funeral service uh, that is going to be held tomorrow, which uh, was declared by President Cyril Ramaphosa as uh, a special official funeral category one. In on my visuals, uh, Francis, I can see uh, uh, Prince Ndutugo Zuzifa Utelezi. Uh, of course, he's accompanying uh, the hess uh, that is carrying the uh, body, which is now about to enter the residence of um, Guapindangene. The rural town of Olundi came to a standstill, Francis, uh, throughout the, the afternoon, really, uh, uh, when we saw uh, thousands of um, residents, uh, not just uh, IP supporters, but also just residents in their no normal clothes, you know, waving out their cell phones, uh, 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 recording uh, this uh, very historic moment uh, because you would understand uh, that uh, many people in this uh, rural area of uh, Ulundi, you know, held Prince Mangosutu Butelezi in high regard. You know, when we spoke to some of them uh, earlier on in the week, they said uh, that uh, uh, he stood for, you know, the development of this particular area and he also stood for you know, the uh, 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 Amazulu royal uh, household being united. Uh, he was hailed for a number of really, you know, you know initiative in uniting the Amazulu uh, nation. As I, I, saw, I speak to you, uh, uh, Francis, I believe the main gate has now been opened for the uh, has that is carrying the body. 
of Prince Mangosu to uh, Utelezi to enter uh, the residence of uh, Kwapinda again and the hundreds of um, uh, IFP supporters as well as Amazulu regiments, Amabuto, uh, have uh, now uh, been, you know, told to stand next to the gate to allow the hess to make its way its way inside the uh, premises of uh, the uh, residence, uh, Francis. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Vamos a meter el CPS, no me que un solo. Uh, a residence. Of course, we're also racing again. 
against the time Munati as uh, having spoken to the elders we were told that they have to get home uh, to Kwapindangene before the uh, sun sets. the late uh, uh, Prince Butelezi before the sunset. We obviously understand there are other dignitaries uh, at uh, the royal palace, uh, you know, Kwa that are waiting to also, you know, uh, you know, say their few words and also leave the family at some point so that they uh, acknowledge, um, you know, those private moments uh, with uh, Prince Butelezi because I am told... I can hear. I am told that is a customary also to do. Uh, Ayanda, can you still hear me? But my colleagues are there, I am strong, of course, and uh, monitoring those uh, situations, those developments for us. Of course, uh, this is a 10-kilometer journey that started really a few minutes ago. And of course, Amabuto and uh, community members there, you know, just uh, accompanying uh, the body of uh, the late uh, Prince Mutelezi uh, back to his uh, royal uh, palace, Kwa uh, Pindangene. Of course, uh, as Ayana Mflongo said, it is a race against time, uh, having to move uh, pretty quickly to be there at a certain time, as more uh, traditional uh, rituals need to be observed the minute they get there. As you see there, uh, some IFP supporters really in a celebratory mood as they, you know, uh, accompany the, the body home, saying that uh, Prince Butelezi has done a lot for the uh, Zulu nation. And, um, of course, uh, they this is how they will pay their last respects in song and in celebration. Of course, uh, it is a life was uh, led a long uh, history behind uh, Prince Telezi's name, his legacy. Of course, uh, others describing it as a somewhat complex. There you see, of course, also the IFP leadership amongst those that, that are uh, also uh, accompanying Prince Telezi's body, walking side by side with the hearse there. And of course, just talking about the history of Prince Telezi. Uh, with Ayanda, of course, and my other colleagues, just, uh, you know, this is a man who uh, led the Inkata Freedom Party for 44 years, you know, since its formation in 1975. I'm now joined by my colleague, uh, Simpiwe Makanya, who is uh, standing by. Simpiwe, I mean, as we look at um, what some of uh, the supporters of uh, Prince Mutelezi are saying, you know, basically saying that he has served the royal family um, for uh, a, a very long time. He was an influential person within the royal family. Uh, he served the tradi as traditional prime minister to the Zulu royal family and the nation for seven decades, essentially, you know, uh, until his uh, death in uh, 2023. So just with, as we unpack, you know, some of the things that have been said to you, it just tells you, you know, the kind of person and, and legacy that he leaves behind.
as of course uh, other journalists uh, of the SABC also spread across, uh, you know, uh, KZN, just bringing us that rolling coverage um, as of course the uh, traditional, uh, Amazulu traditional Prime Minister, uh, Prince uh, Mangosutu Butelezi's uh, body is currently uh, being accompanied by the Amabutu as well as the IFP uh, members, some community members, uh, just back to his royal homestead in uh, uh, Kwa Pindangene. Uh, Ayanda, I, I'm talking about the, you know, just some of the songs that are being sung here. Uh, of course, uh, even though we're saying that um, it is somewhat celebratory, uh, a lot of people actually think that they will be a void now that Prince Butelezi has, uh, has died. They're speaking us through the development and what they say he's done uh, for uh, this uh, community. In fact, Unati, uh, very shortly we are going to be approaching the uh, town of uh, Ulundi. And uh, many of our viewers will remember during the uh, 2021 uh, civil unrest how Inkosu uh, Mangosutu Butelezi came out at 93 years old uh, in the freezing cold at night. Um, he came out uh, into the town to stop people that uh, were intending on looting. Um, and so those are some of the, uh, uh, the elements that people have shared with us, that this town today would probably be in ruins had it not uh, been for him at that age uh, to come out to speak to the people uh, that were there but also to make them understand um, what destroying the town uh, would mean uh, uh, to them. He was also very instrumental. There was looting that took place in the nearby town of Guanongoma and many of the stores there uh, were destroyed, uh, leading to uh, a situation where hundreds of people, if not thousands, uh, could have gone hungry. And we understand that he was instrumental in ensuring that trucks uh, were brought all the way from Johannesburg, uh, bringing food uh, to the area of Guanongoma. And so uh, it's, it's, it's such a, a 
um, uh, uh, things that the community are saying that they will remember um, Prince Mangosu to buy, as well as, of course, the development as we are moving through the town here. Many of the structures and the buildings that we are seeing were buildings that um, were built um, under the um, IFP leadership, under um, his leadership. So certainly he leaves a huge uh, a, a, a void. And I think it's why we've seen so many uh, community members come out, um, even those who are not IFP supporters, but uh, they are all uh, come out just at least to see a glimpse of the cottage as um, it makes uh, its way uh, through the town. In fact, if we look at this route that we are traveling on, uh, Unati, there was a more quieter route um, that has less traffic. They could have that uh, they could have chosen uh, to use, but uh, the uh, family um, and the IFP deciding to make their way right through the heart of uh, the uh, Ulundi CBD, so that the uh, people who have come out here in town will be able to at least see the funer funeral cortege um, as uh, it makes uh, its uh, as it makes its way uh, through the town. I'm sure you can see now uh, in our visual. Hundreds of uh, people have. Oh, yeah, let's Hundreds of people have uh, come out. Um, their phones are out. They are waving. They are cheering as uh, they uh, bid uh, their farewells uh, to a uh, Prince Mangosu to Buterezi. Absolutely. I mean, Ayanda. I mean, it's. Um it's also very important, um, as you say, that people get to witness this you moment, see, particularly yeah. because when we think about tomorrow and the capacity um, that uh, is allowed in terms of uh, the funeral, I mean, we already know that Prince Butelezi's family asked many people to actually observe the funeral at home via television because they are worried about, um, you know, if they will be able to accommodate everybody. I mean, if the memorial service was anything to go by, they know how many people want to witness this occasion. Right, of course, uh, as you can see, there are hundreds of Amabuto 
accompanied there by community members lining the streets, walking the long distance, accompanying the late Prince Mutelezi's body home. All roads at this moment leading to Kwa uh, Pindengani. I understand that Simpiwa is on the line with us. Simpiwa, of course, uh, we are witnessing uh, this uh, moment, of course, uh, uh, this procession cutting across Ulundi town. Uh, very significant at this point in time. I would imagine the family thought it, impo it important that everybody, you know, gets a glimpse of this, uh, you know, procession uh, as, uh, you know, all roads lead to, of course, uh, uh, Butelezi's uh, home and, of course, as a lead-up to the funeral that will be taking place tomorrow. Carrying the body of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi is now en route to you know, his home at Kwapindangen, the rural village of Emashabatini. Uh, and uh, uh, Unati, many of the people who are here, you know, are in a celebratory mood. They are, I haven't seen uh, many people crying, but what I've seen is people who are joyous, who are screaming, who are singing. Uh, taking out their cell phones to record uh, this historic moment because as, as you would imagine on that, uh, uh, almost everyone here uh, knows uh, Prince Mangosu Tubutelezi as the traditional Prime Minister having served the Amazulu nation for over uh, really seven uh, decades uh, you are seeing that in your visuals uh, hundreds and hundreds of Amabuto who are accompanying the body of uh, Prince Mangosu to uh, Butelezi, lining up the streets. I mean, really, from where I am, I can certainly tell you that uh, the rural town of Ulundi has really come to uh, stand still with thousands of people, you know, lining up the streets, witnessing, you know, uh, this uh, historic moment as uh, hundreds of Amabuto and IFP supporters gather really to, you know, uh, accompany the body of uh, Prince Mangosu to Butelezi uh, to his home at uh, Matlabatini. The journey, uh, Unati, as we have been uh, saying earlier on, is about uh, 10 kilometers from the mortuary to the home of uh, Prince uh, Mangosutu Butelezi. As I speak to you now, we are just about to exit the town and now heading to the you know, home of uh, Prince uh, Mangosutu Butelezi. Police have had their hands full trying to contain the situation, as you would imagine. You know, uh, many media houses the vehicles uh, wanting to be part of uh, this particular moment where we are seeing hundreds and thousands of people, you know, gathering, you know, along the route where Prince Mangosu took Telez's body is uh, being taken uh, to his home. This is the final journey uh, that uh, Prince Mangosu to Butelezi will be making uh, to his home before, of course, the uh, official funeral uh, uh, state, the, rather the special official funeral category one uh, that he has been, you know, accorded by President uh, Cyril uh, Ramaphosa. In your visuals, I'm not sure what you are seeing, but I'm seeing the IFP president, Velenko Sini Tabisa, leading Amabuto as uh, they are busy, you know, on that walk to uh, Kwa Pindangene as, uh, you know, they are accompanying the body of uh, Prince uh, Mango Sutu Gutelezi. Many residents, uh, Unati, that we have been uh, speaking to uh, from this uh, uh, particular area of uh, Ulundi, I mean, uh, since the news broke of uh, Prince Butelezi's demise, they have been, you know, saying that they are devastated because uh, they regarded him not only as a political leader, but as a community leader, really, you know, who was uh, able to, you know, assist uh, uh, in many areas of their lives. Uh, some of, the, of them, of course, speaking during the memorial service, uh, which was held on Wednesday, uh, saying that uh, Prince Mangosu Tobutelezi has lived many lives in one life, really, having been uh, an incursion of the uh, Butelezi clan at uh, the age of 20.
1969 and also having served the Amazulu nation as the traditional prime minister since uh, uh, I mean for, for over uh, seven decades and also of course having uh, formed the Inkata uh, Freedom Party the IFP, which is the main opposition party here in KwaZulu-Natal in 1975, and of course uh, handing over the reins to current uh, President Velenko Seni Shabisa, who is part of uh, this uh, group of Abuto uh, that is uh, uh, on this journey accompanying Prince Mangosutu Abutelezi. A lot has been said, Unati, about his legacy and uh, his contribution in, he in helping to shape you know, uh, democracy in South Africa. I mean, some of the uh, IFP leaders in the province are going as far as to say that uh, they don't think there will be anyone uh, like him uh, in the near future. I mean, uh, uh, that speaks to the caliber of uh, a man that they regard him to be. But of course, as uh, they are celebrating his life and celebrating his, his achievements, of the clashes that were there between the ANC as well as the IFP, especially in the province of KwaZulu-Natal in the early 80s as well as the late 1990s, where we saw nearly about 20,000 people losing their lives during, of course, those clashes. We have had an opportunity, you know, to interact with himself a couple of years ago and we posed these questions about the clashes and he was always you know always you know adamant that at no point did he order any
It of the person. Uh, whether the person was a minister, whether the person was, it, it goes like that. But uh, the difference between that is then gets demarcated into a policy because we utilize policy to be, that guides us to do as such. And of course he served as a minister under the Mandela administration and under the Mbeki um, administration. Just for clarity, will the president also be? President will not be here, but the president was at the service place. Um, however, obviously there is a person delegated by the president that will carry his duties at the, in, 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 in the graves. the process right now and of course he has clarified to us that it will not be uh, a 21 gun salute but of course it will be an 11 uh, gun salute. Francis we've seen um, the various family members just actually walking in. Um, I can see the police commissioners uh, just behind the cameras and of course various guests uh, will be then um, walking in. He has said that um, President Sil Ramaphosa won't uh, be attending this part of but of course, um, you know, we heard him there on the podium actually lauding the late Prince Mangosutu Putelezi for the role that he played in the country. Also, um, you know, just mentioning that he was a man of peace and, uh, you know, describing how he carried himself out in Parliament, uh, Francis, a man of discipline, so eloquent, uh, you know, in his work. Uh, Francis and also saying that this is a man that actually stood, uh, you know, for his truth. So these are just some of the sentiments that actually came out of uh, his funeral service and the various speakers that were speaking. They were also heard IFP President Velenkosi and Kabisa also just lauding and um, hailing and labeling uh, the late Prince Mangusutu Putelezi as his mentor, uh, you know, one that played a pivotal role in chapter championing the rights and putting um, the rights of Zulu people, the Zulu nation out there. I mean, one who was, uh, you know, very uh, passionate about education, very passionate about the economic emancipation.
participation of his people, of people in the rural um, you know, areas, and that is uh, quite significant in that he had established the Itala Bank in uh, the 1950s, Francis. If I'll just step out of frame, and if Kwasi Manzi can actually show you the, um, some of the visuals that we are actually seeing here of, you'll see um, various family members uh, will be shortly making their way in um, here, and this, of course, is the final resting place of, you know, the Prime Minister of the Zulu Nation, Francis, the longest um, serving Prime Minister of uh, the Zulu Nation. You would remember that he had, um, you know, advised, um, you know, three kings, uh, that being uh, King Begi Zulu, um, Gasolomoni, and of course King Goodwill Zuelitini, and um, just lastly, uh, King Missy Zulu Francis, who was not at the funeral because according to Zulu customs and Zulu traditions, it is a bad omen for a king um, to actually attend a funeral. But of course, he has sent um, somewhat um, of a delegation, uh, Francis. Of course, um, we will continue to give you visuals of um you know the the funeral the final resting place of the late prince mangusutu butelezi what you're seeing right now are more family members um coming in um just to lay him to rest at his final uh, resting place francis a long life lived uh, Francis and um, this is a man like I said that was described as a peaceful man um, despite what some may call a controversial um, you know history Francis others say that he brought about peace and stability at a time that was tumultuous um, you know for the country we've seen um, this entire week various political parties um, leaders of political parties coming in and paying their respects to the family of the late prince and the underlying tone there was the message of reconciliation saying that his final wish was for the ANC his former political party his former political home and the IFP to actually reconcile and we heard the ANC uh, they're just also talking to them that they, it is time that they, uh, you know, spearhead this process of uh, reconciliation, Francis. All right, thank you, Natasha Piri. Stay with us. Uh, she is at the cemetery just outside the homestead in Kwapindangeni, and this is the final resting place, place uh, for Prince Mangusutu Butelezi. Thank you if you've been with us on SABC News. We continue our rolling coverage today and welcome to our new viewers. A warm welcome to our new viewers on SABC 3. The official uh, special funeral category one was held in the stadium named after Prince Mangosutu Butelezi in Alindi earlier. We have been following the procession uh, taking his body to the cemetery to his final resting place. Uh, 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 about 10 k's uh, the journey uh, was done it began with sandf pallbearers uh, carrying the hearst and as the colonel was explaining that will continue that formal ceremonial part will continue uh, we understand that the sandf members will carry the coffin into the cemetery but uh, natasha if you're still with me is it fair enough to say this is the most private uh, part in fact, we've lost Natasha, so let me bring in Professor Musa Olu, who's a cultural expert. And uh, Professor, it's very apt, I can pose this to you. Uh, is it fair enough to say that this is a, a private part of the proceedings today? Family members will be involved and uh, really we heard earlier that uh, some very private, uh, sacred rites will be performed. Professor Olu, can you hear me? All right, we'll see if we can get uh, the professor back and bring you some more insight into what we expect. As Natasha Piri said, it's pretty dark. Uh, the weather closed in earlier, in fact, shortly after the president's address. So many seeing that as uh, a good omen and, in fact, in line with his...
um, the Anglican Church will be present there by the grave as well as the family or as well as also the, um, uh, the chaplain uh, general from the SNDF. Um, it could be expected that because it's now a state funeral uh, and it has had that kind of program that it had, there will not be much different from many other funerals. It's not going to be buried in secrecy. Like, for example, it happened with King, um, the late King Zolitini some, some two years ago. So what will happen is that, unfortunately, it's getting dark now, but I'm sure they'll get light. They will go there by the, the, the cemetery and, and bury him um, uh, accordingly with the ritual scriptures and all of those. All right, and we'll stay on these live visuals at the cemetery tonight. Speaking of kings, uh, tell us a little bit about that, the, uh, the precedent whereby a king does not attend a funeral. So we did not see him today. Yeah, no, the king does not attend funerals because symbolically funerals are associated with dark spirits. And you can imagine what can happen to the nation if dark spirits uh, then come back with the king and that could very much um, weaken the kingdom. So kings stay away. He would, in many instances, be represented by a delegate or somebody he sends there to stand for him. But later, he may visit the Mutiles family um, after um, all the mourning has been uh, seen through, which, which could take even up to a year. We heard earlier family members saying they just felt lost, uh, but in terms of the Mutilesi clan, a leader has been pinpointed uh, is this, in a sense, the, the changing of the baton? Yeah, well, traditionally, what, what should happen with the Utelezi clan is that um, his son, Mangosoto Utelezi's son, Prince Mangosoto Utelezi's son, Prince Josefa, uh, should take over as the uh, ingoss the, uh, of the Utelezi clan. And then, of course, there, was, there has always been somebody uh, standing in for Prince Mangosoto because he was busy. He, he preferred to be in Parliament and all other places. So he would be having somebody um, acting for him on his behalf. But now there, is, there could be no need for that to continue because I think Prince Zuzifa, um is not as busy as his father was, politically speaking. Professor, we saw the weather change quite dramatically. It uh, closed in shortly after the eulogy presented by the president. How would people with a traditional mindset uh, view that? Well, they, they will look at it as um, indicative of the uh, social stature of Prince Mangosoto Tedes. Because um, usually, for example, when kings die or are buried uh, and important people. There's a belief system that the weather will react as such as the universe is acknowledging the state of such a person. So many people look at it and say, okay, the weather was fine the whole morning, but towards the end it changed. It means that uh, um, he's being accepted by the ancestors. And the, it's going to be a powerful ancestor. Mm -hmm. so, so a good omen indeed. It is, yes. It's a good, good omen. Looking at what has happened uh, earlier today, do you agree with one of your colleagues that we spoke to earlier, saying it was, uh, in all senses, uh, representative of the man himself, the traditional religious uh, stately aspects, and befitting a befitting send-off for a man of magnitude? No, it was. I, I'm beginning to think that we have not seen a funeral a state funeral so complex as we, the one that we saw today in South Africa. Um, maybe let me say ever since the dawn of democracy or even before. You must remember that Prince Mangosutu Teres was a deacon at the Anglican Church and had a very deep affinity with that church. So it was expected that the Anglican Church, uh, Christianly speaking, was going to play a major role in his funeral. And he had a personal 
good personal relationship with the Archbishop uh, Makoba. That is part one. The second part is, of course, Amabuto. Amabuto were expected uh, to be there because you will always remember that the pillars of the Zulu Kingdom, pillar A is that of traditional leaders who come to the kingdom and, and have Amabuto and have uh, uh, the chief organizers of Amabuto, etc. on the left. Then on the right, you have the royal family and his majesty at the center. So it was always expected that um, the, the, there was going to be diversity and involvement of Amabuto in it. And then, of course, the third element, as you rightly say, is the state. He has been part of the state, I must say, maybe since 1970, with the Wazulu homeland government, and uh, he has been part of that ever since until uh, because he died as a, as a member of parliament. He was a minister of some state. But it, interestingly, as I think uh, the speaker of parliament said, it was the first time that all facets, um, the state, the traditional Amabuto, and the Anglican Church, were able to blend together so well to create a unique a unique spectacle of uh, Ngozi Mangosuthu Tebes, and his, it reflects his legacy. Yeah, it it was interesting, and uh, each of the players giving space to the other players and the other leaders was that true also of. ANC leaders, uh, looking back, like the president talking about his relationships with early ANC leaders of stature, and then the IFP party as well, giving each other space and respect today. Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> the president spoke well, um, actually, uh, by citing true history of Mutelele's involvement and his uh, upbringing politically under the likes of Dr. J. L. Duba, Ingos Albert Tule, etc. So that, that's very correct. What may be a challenge going forward is how to restore the relations between the IFP and the ANC. But he insisted throughout his life that he was instructed by the ANC in exile to establish the IFP as a mass-based political organization operating inside the country and taking instructions from exile. At some stage, that also now went wrong. So um, the president was very good not to touch on those details because uh, there would have been lots of differences. Uh, on the other side, President Sabisa was uh, um, uh, insisting on that. And the fact that Prince Tutu was says, among, besides the issues of relationships with the, His Majesty the King, which were very sour. Um, uh, Putele wanted also to see the IST and ANC reconciling and learning to work together even more. And secondly, of course, at some stage I spoke to him, Putele, he, okay, he mentioned it to me that he would like the ANC to consider reinstating his status as an ANC member. So that has not happened, but they can still do it. Well, it was interesting what Minister Sisulu said, uh, that if you look at the, the show of unity today, uh, she said there was no need for the differences between us. Uh, looking back on an incredibly violent history, saying there was no need for that. Today, it almost seems like like an incredible show of unity, like I say. Was it just a show? Is there tension, real tension underneath, or the signs of a real reconciliation that will be lasting as per his wishes? Yeah, it's, 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 today was very interesting because, um, as you rightly say, uh, the unity in the country, we last saw something like this when President Nelson Mandela was buried in 2013. The dynamics were different because um, uh, there had not been any anim animosities, etc., between any of the, of the role players. But what we saw today, and in fact the whole of this week, uh, the kind of uh, tributes that have been given 
officially by the diversity of South Africa's population uh, to Tenezi and the praises and acknowledging his different um, um, facets in terms of how he worked and his honesty and uh, um, uh, from time to time he, 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 he tended to say things as they are, to tell things as they are. And people usually like people like that um, because then you know where you, where you stand with him. He's, he's not uh, ambiguous. So the unity today that we saw, we, only, we can only pray now. That is taken on and as we approach the elections, it doesn't turn into something else. Professor Ngolu, please allow us to come back to you. Uh, let's quickly look at what we're seeing here live. This is uh, just outside the homestead, Kwapedangeni, the royal palace, the cemetery outside where Prince Mangasutu Butelezi will be laid to rest. That's where we find Natasha Piri. Natasha, what's happening right now? This is where um, members of his family will pay their last respects as well as um, Amabuto as well as IFP supporters um, that have come out um, here to bid farewell um, to him. But uh, Francis, let's just listen in on what's happening uh, right now. Follow me from the back. Bella right. Pate! Slow! Sabatamabele, <laughs> 
Well, Francis, just a reminder to our viewers that um, this last part of the funeral service is in accordance to a special funeral that was afforded to him, Category 1. And of course, uh, you know that the state um, official, Francis, we've just been told to um, make room for the pool bearers, the military pool bearers. You would remember that this funeral will entail elements of military honors, Francis. And remember from um, earlier on on Tuesday, the president had directed that all flags should be flown at half mast until this evening in honor of the late Prince Mangosutu. This is the final resting place of the President Emeritus of the IFP who founded this party in 1975, Francis. Can you open up here, please? We just want to uh, open up here, please. Open up. And in his memory, Francis, uh, the current president of the IFP, Mr. Velenkosin Mthabisa, had promised that the party would grow. And a part of that promise is that the hope for the IFP come next year's elections is that they win the elections.
There will also be an 11 gun salute in honor of the late Prince Mangusutu Utelezi and The family will shortly be coming in.
Francis, we heard um, the singing of the national anthem and the 11 gun salute um, for the late Prince Mangosuthu Putelezi, who was also the oldest member of parliament. And earlier on this week, we saw various members of um, parliament, various parliamentarians in the visit uh, to his home, describing uh, the late Prince Mangosuthu Putelezi as a man who is very disciplined, um, a man who taught them tolerance and patience um, in parliament. I mean, I spoke to the spokesperson of Sinawo Tambo earlier on today and he had echoed those sentiments saying that I mean he was an elderly figure who taught them a lot as young parliamentarians and he he was quite vocal about what he didn't like um, in in parliament and sometimes I would point out the conduct of members in parliament you would remember but he had served as the Minister of Home Affairs from 1994 to 2004. And he was oftentimes, oftentimes um, you know, requested to act as an acting president when President Nelson Mandela and Tabo Mbeki were not in the country.
Francis, it's also quite interesting to note the drastic change of the weather. I mean, um, you saw as early as 6 o'clock in the morning, the sun was shining, the sun was out. And, you know, just right now, what we currently are experiencing is this homestead is covered in mist, Francis. There's drizzle here. Um, the weather has drastically changed. And, you know, in African customs and traditions, it is said that if the weather changes like this, um, when one is being laid to rest, it means that the, the stature, it, it speaks to the importance of the person that is buried in the Christian uh, faith. Some believe that this means that this rain is a sign of blessings. All other members of cabinet, parliament, waiting. Of course, this is the final resting place of the late Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, and of course, he will be laid to rest amongst his late wife, Princess Irene. And of course, some of his late children, as you know, that five of them had passed on, and only three are still alive. Prince Zuzifa Butelezi, Princess Pumzile Nogupiwa, and Princess Sibuyiselwa. To follow now is the chief of the South African National Defense Force. That is the minister the of police, Beitele, also paying his final respects. Francis, when the late um, Prince Mangosuchi Butelezi's wife was actually laid to rest um, in this very place, um, there was a quite an interesting poem that he had rendered to the wife. And I just want to read an extract from it. It, it, it reads, Where is home now? Now that she's gone, I will listen to our favorite music and close my eyes and imagine that she's still here. And I guess true to this poem, he's, he's laying next to his wife now. This is a man who really loved uh, Princess Irene. And, you know, I remember vividly when she was laid to rest, he, he was visibly shattered. And now that he is no more Francis, um, he can now join his, his late wife as well, alongside his children. Remember, this is a long life lived. And to the Zulu nation, uh, he has been described, and some have said that, uh, you know, a giant chi of the Zulu nation has fallen, one that fought for the emancipation of, uh, you know, his people. And one that played a very critical role, uh, Francis, especially as the traditional prime minister of, uh, you know, the Zulu nation. He, amongst his roles, Francis, um, was to empower um, and to call royal meetings, to mediate uh, disputes within the royal court or the royal family. He was also entrusted, Francis, with protecting the throne and providing wisdom to the kings that he advised on royal matters. And then we allow them the family to come and do their last lesson.
his head, uh, the kind of stature that is on the here, now all on his head. We apologize, uh, we, we, we but other people have left. Can we please request the commissioner uh, to come uh, to pay the respect? We apologize on that one. If there is also a help from the commissioner service, please come forward. is the police commissioner Fanny Masemola also coming to pay his respects to the late Prime Minister Just also describing his role as, um, you know, traditional prime minister, um, the late uh, Mangosutu Putelisi uh, was often hailed for his hand um, of leadership, you know, in dealing um, with sensitive matters that could have potentially resulted in bloodshed, you know. He was lauded for his stance and praised for his stance on Zulu nationalism and spearheading campaigns to protect the Zulu nation, the Zulu kingdom. And testament to this, Francis, is that when we spoke to the community, you know, in this area yesterday that said that, you know, there's been a lot of development in this area, in this town, because of him. There's a hospital because of him. People have jobs now, um, you know, because of him. People have services because of him. Um, you know, I, I earlier on when speaking to you, Francis, I mentioned um, Itala Bank, and you know, the formation of Itala Bank was uh, solely to economically empower those in the rural areas who had no access to commercial banks. And remember, he had established Itala Bank in the 1970s for the sole purpose of inculcating a culture amongst black people to actually save. And it's, it's, it's interesting how this bank has evolved over the years, over the decades, Francis, that it caters to people across the country, you know, in Gauteng, uh, not only here in KwaZulu-Natal, other provinces as well in the Eastern Cape. And of course, um, they have 30, over 39 branches and the hope is that this bank would actually grow more. Amen. Nessa Amen. 
Sia bon appétit, sia bon à la coulou. Si ça vous fait la gueule à ma poste, vous pouvez y aller, 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 vous pouvez y Francis, it's also quite interesting to note that as we draw, um, you know, closer um, to this final process of allaying him, uh, the late um, uh, Prince Mangosutu Putelezi to rest, that, uh, you know, the heavens are opening and, you know, it's actually starting to pour. Uh, there's more rain now. Um, as we draw fin well, finally closer um, to, you know, that process, uh, Francis. But just, you know, uh, going back to the various sentiments, um, you know, that were expressed um, not only by politicians that we've seen, um, you know, earlier on this week coming and paying their last respects to uh, the late Prince Mangosutu Butelezi's family, but just the regular people here of this community and in Ulundi. Francis, they have hailed him for the development of the people here, saying that if it were not for the late Prince Mangosutu Butelezi and what he has done for the Zulu nation, they wouldn't be where they are right now. Francis, we've been instructed right now to switch off our cameras. So, we will soon have to switch off the cameras after the family uh, pays their final respects. So, soon after this, after the family has to pay their final respects, unfortunately, our cameras have to go off and of course what you're yeah. hearing right now is Amuto.
All right, as the rain comes down, the body of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi has been lowered into the ground. He has been laid to rest. These are live visuals from the cemetery just outside uh, the Butelezi homestead. And we have been asked to turn off our cameras shortly. It will be a moment uh, for the family. Uh, now it'll be a family affair and members of the Butelezi clan there, of course. But the ceremonial part uh, involving high-ranking members of the SANDF uh, who gave the flag over to family representatives and then helped lower uh, the casket into the ground. That has ended. We saw the 11 gun salute and he has now been laid to rest. All right, let's uh, wrap this up with uh, Professor Musa Olu, who we were chatting to earlier, a cultural expert. Um, Professor Prince Mangosutu Butelezi today was remembered as a man of decorum. He appreciated decorum and he was recognized for his dignity over and over again. And I've heard so many people say what a dignified funeral, uh, even looking at this last part. And I guess it's a tribute to the more... My sister today the the most important thing of course no one was hacking for example uh, at anyone while speaking the audience was very quiet and listened to everyone with dignity and of course the issue of decorum um personally i i i met prince mongoso today for the first time in 1988 as, as i was waiting for my ethnomusicology master's degree at natal university and uh, I was only 27 years old, but he took me very seriously, introduced me to the king, uh, who then gave me the people who could give me the information that I needed about Zulu culture, traditions, heritage, and the kingdom. And, and, and so, I mean, usually people already at that time, he was a chief minister of the Wazulu homeland, so um, you could not expect such a high-ranking person to take a 27-year-old seriously. But they, they, they are correct. He was uh, such a person, very much full of respect. The quorum did not want um, to um, know, um, for example, when he went to, it comes to parliament, sometimes a certain political party uh, would be very enthusiastic, wanting to disrupt the proceedings. Uh, he simply was, was never going to be impressed with that. Um, and he respected people across the political spectrum. I know that a lot of other political leaders from other political parties, other than the IFP, went to him for guidance and everything, and he took all of them very seriously. And thank you for that beautiful anecdote. And the president today talking about his input into the Shaka Zulu uh, documentary and, and what's come out and sharing uh, that knowledge. It sounds like he took anyone seriously if they took Zulu tradition and history seriously. Uh, Professor, my final question to you, and then we do have to wrap up. Looking at the president's eulogy, the... Uh
A spectacle of power. This show of strength is in Lamo, a traditional warrior dance performed during auspicious occasions. Leading the mock battle that is central to Zulu cultural expression is King Zwelitin and Chief Mangosuts Butelezi, a traditional leader, veteran politician, and a family man. Butelezi, often referred to by his clan name Shenge, was born into Zulu royalty in 1928. His mother, Princess Makoko Kadinu Zulu, is the daughter of King Tetuayo Kadinu Zulu. As a young man, Butelezi's chores would have been no different than those of any other boy born at the village of Emahlabatini in Nongoma. We used to do two things. We used to attend school at the Royal Palace, but at the same time, we, this did not exempt us from our cause as, as, as boys in the locality had to perform. So therefore we also used to milk. In fact, as you'll see, I, I have some injuries here which I, I, I sustained when I, I held the milk pail for one of my cousins when I was young, who was milking one of, a, of, the, of the very wild cows and you know, it kicked and I was injured you know, and so on. I remember crying you know, running after that, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. Then, amongst other things, of course, we used to go out, especially during weekends, to look after cattle almost the whole morning and in the forenoon, bring the cattle back, milk the cattle, and then eat, and then in the afternoon again, take them out and then return the afternoon. Of course, we used to play all sorts of games which Zulu's, uh, Zulu children play in the, when they look after cattle. We also, of course, um, were taught how to fight with sticks. And very often the bigger boys, of course, used to have a lot of fun because this, was, this is not supposed to be a real fight, also a mock fight, but it could, in many, many cases, grow up to a, to, a, to a real, you know, fight because some of the bigger boys would stand behind us and would then wink to the other boy to hit you harder, you see. I remember, in fact, sustaining a very big gash in my head at that time. We used to have a very difficult time because on Fridays, it was a dipping day, so we used to take the cattle early in the morning for dipping. 
at the dip. Uh, and then, as a result, we used to be late in school. And this didn't exempt us from getting punishment from our teacher for being late, in spite of the fact that we were going to perform this task. And I always thought this was very unfair. He was a very good brother. Well, like only I mean, just a bit nutty, but he was very protective. And he, he, he did have these qualities of uh, leadership as a child. He's still a good father, he's still a homeman, he is still a good Christian, above all. That, that, was what, that is the upbringing that we had. He received a schooling foundation in the early 1930s, going on to matriculate from Adams College, the premier high school of the day for the African child. After Adams, but President Cyril Ramaphosa is enrolled at the renowned University of Forte in 1948. Here, he would join the newly established Youth League of the ANC. The funeral of the founder of the IFP and the traditional prime minister of the Amazulu nation, Ramaphosa described Butelezi as a unique leader who had contributed immensely to the liberation of South Africa. The president says the ANC and the IFP have to work together to fulfill the wishes of the late statesman. <laughs> final sent off, many traveled across the country to pay their last respect to the late Prince Mangusutu Butelezi. The elderly statesman passed away in the early hours of Saturday at the age of 95. The sun has set on an era and an, on a life that witnessed and had an impact on much of our country's modern history. Butelis is the founder of the fourth strongest party in the National Assembly, also the traditional Prime Minister of the Amasulu Nation, and that he carried the role to the last bit of his days, deemed as a voice of reason in the National Assembly when chaos ensued. Paying tribute, the President said his absence will be felt. We will miss his legendary eloquence, the care and diligence